can support us completed novel house in link below clip. Thank you for coming and love the sharing story chapter 841, an old classmate in trouble. From the morning until now, they had interviewed scores of examinees. It's already 12 p.m. We should stop here for the morning. Let's grab lunch. There'll be another session in the afternoon. The batch of examinees from this morning was middling. I only found examinee 026 to be quite acceptable. I feel that she can be groomed further, but we still have to ascertain that during the second round of exams. Examinee 051 was quite good too. Yeah, there's a special characteristic to his voice. Zhong Yi, Su Hongyang, and the rest of the examiners were chatting as they exited the examination venue. Elsewhere, the interviewers from the School of Directing, School of Acting, as well as the other schools, were also done with their morning sessions. They bumped into each other downstairs or in the hallways and gathered together to chat as they walked to the cafeteria. At this moment, eight or nine reporters ran toward them. Director Zhong. You're finally out. Please do an interview with us. We informed Media College earlier and the school agreed to let us interview you. From the looks of it, the reporters had been waiting downstairs for him all this time so that they could catch Zhong Yi the moment he stepped out. Zhong Yi stopped dead in his tracks. Su Hongyang turned around and looked at him. What's going on? You guys grab lunch first. Zhong Yi smiled and said, I'll head over there in a bit. Su Hongyang nodded and said, All righty then. Teacher Shui reminded him, We're going to the smaller cafeteria. The large dining hall isn't open today. All right, Zhong Yi said. After the other interviewers left, the reporters stuck their cameras and microphones into Zhong Yi's face and began to question him. A female reporter immediately asked, Teacher Zhong, what was the reason for Media College inviting you back to your alma mater as an examiner? What are your thoughts of being appointed as an examiner here for the first time? Zhong Yi smiled and replied, I'll definitely do a proper job and not overthink on other matters since my alma mater has put their trust in me by inviting me back for the entrance exam. A male reporter immediately spoke, we've just received news that Media College has offered you a position as associate professor. Teacher Zhong, is this true? Zhong Yi cleared his throat and said, all of you are really very well informed. I've only just heard about it myself, so I don't know whether it's a rumor or the truth. As such, I can't answer that. A reporter next to the other mentioned, if the news is real, then you'll become the youngest associate professor in the history of Media College. Zhong Yi phrased his words very carefully. I don't know about that. A female reporter blinked several times and said, Teacher Zhong, you're being quite cautious with your words today. Zhong Yi was amused. Is that so? The female reporter exclaimed, this isn't your usual style at all. A male reporter also said with his eyes lit up, you can just say it freely. It'll be fine. It'll be fine for you guys. Zhong Yi laughed. But if I say what I want freely, then I'll be in trouble. Do you really think that I'm not being cursed at enough? The female reporter also laughed and said, of course. It wouldn't affect us since we're just going to watch. Zhong Yi gave a pleasant smile and said, come now, it's almost the new year, so I better keep a low profile. After responding to a few more questions, Zhong Yi finally got away and went to the cafeteria for lunch. Sometimes, news traveled fast. He had just taken a few steps when the first of the reports were published. Online Entertainment Weekly magazine, Zhong Yi appointed as examiner for Media College's entrance exam. Daily News, shocking appearance by Zhong Yi on the first day of the Media College entrance examination. Everyday Entertainment, Zhong Yi rumored to be taking up the post of Associate Professor at Media College's School of Broadcasting. Online Entertainment News, Media College throws Zhong Yi an olive branch, offering him a high salary to teach. The netizens expressed their concerns. An Associate Professor of Media College? Teacher Zhong is super capable. He's great. Is the news true? Has it been confirmed? If it's confirmed, then it would be really awesome. The youngest associate professor of two institutions of higher learning, Peking University and Media College. If Zhong Yi really becomes an associate professor at Media College, then his status and hierarchy in the industry will be even higher. 
I have to say that Media College still has the foresight to approach Zhong Yi and get him to teach at their institution. He'll definitely be able to attract a lot of fresh recruits since he can teach in the School of Broadcasting, School of Directing, and even in School of Music and Recording Arts. With his abilities and talent, I'm quite optimistic for the future of Media College. I really hope that Zhong Yi can produce some entertainment celebrities just like himself. It's really rare to have someone like Zhong Yi in the entertainment industry. Supporting teacher Zhong. Of course, there would definitely be a lot of controversy too. There were also many netizens and people in the industry who were in doubt. Let's have a confirmation first of whether this news is true or not. I'm not optimistic about Zhong Yi's appointment. Has Media College gone crazy? They even dare to hire a person like him? Does Media College feel that they don't have enough trouble? Don't let Zhong Yi ruin the glorious reputation of Media College. What qualifications does Zhong Yi have to assume the position of associate professor in an arts institute like Media College? In the afternoon, some of the administrators of the School of Broadcasting came to find Zhong Yi. With the help of Su Hongyang, the matter of Zhong Yi assuming his new position was finalized very quickly. This was because the university had already held a meeting to discuss this and even drew up a detailed plan of the lesson schedule. As a result, the discussion was completed very quickly with the contract having already been prepared beforehand. After the salary was agreed upon, the matter was finally settled. Professor Zhong, welcome on board to Media College. After that, a few of the university's administrators shook hands with Zhong Yi one by one. Zhong Yi smiled and said, It's my honor. After he walked outside, his cell phone started ringing. Zhong Yi went off to the side to answer the call. Mom, what's the matter? His mother said delightedly, I saw on the news that Media College has invited you to teach there. It's just a temporary post. Zhong Yi laughed. His mother asked, As an associate professor? Zhong Yi acknowledged, Yes, as an associate professor. It's already been confirmed, and I just finished with the negotiations. Good. Very good. Then he heard his mother's voice from the other end, Old Zhong, the news is real. Our son has gained another associate professor title. And it's even one from his alma mater. He heard his father saying, invite our relatives over tonight to have dinner together. His mother immediately said, little Yi, come back earlier tonight. We'll invite all our family members over. Hi, that's not necessary, Zhong Yi said. His mother's eyes widened. Why is it not necessary? Being appointed as an associate professor is a big deal. We can't treat it like it's nothing. Zhong Yi laughed, all right then, I'll listen to the two of you. Perhaps to his parents, gaining the title of an associate professor was even more impressive than getting the highest honor of some prestigious TV show awards. In the mindset of their generation, becoming an associate professor was a big deal, so they were naturally very happy about it. A short while later, his friends also called him. Dong Shanshan laughed and said, Congratulations, Professor Zhong? Zhong Yi, thanks. When can I attend your lecture? Dong Shanshan asked. Zhong Yi said amused, Oh come on, it's just a temporary post. I should be the one attending your lecture instead. Dong Shanshan giggled. Oh right, Wang Yi is back. Zhong Yi was stunned. He's already arrived? Dong Shanshan acknowledged, he arrived in Beijing this morning and gave me a call. Why? Did he not call you? I already sent him your number. Zhong Yi laughed and said, it's not like you don't know how the two of us were always bickering back in our college days. It'd be a wonder if he gave me a call now that he's back in Beijing. Dong Shanshan laughed lightly, that's true. However, very few of our classmates are left in the industry and even most of them are struggling since our graduation. We should really keep in touch with one another as it's quite hard for everyone. I guess you've also heard that Wang He offended someone in the industry last year. He had no choice but to give up on hosting and return to his hometown. Now that he's back, he'll definitely need to start from scratch again. However, I'm afraid that his situation isn't that simple. It's still uncertain if he'll manage to resolve it or not. Hi, what a troublesome thing to have happened to him. Is it very troublesome? 
Zhong Yi had heard about it before, but he did not know the details. Who did Wang Yi offend back then? At that time, Zhong Yi had just started out at Beijing radio station and did not have many updates on everyone. Moreover, he also offended too many people back then and could hardly even look after himself. He only got in touch with Dong Shanshan again because he had to go to Shanghai for work and had coincidentally bumped into her on the plane. As for Wang Yi's situation, he really did not know much about it. Dong Shanshan acknowledged, it should be quite troublesome. Back then, teacher Su also tried to help him out, but it wasn't settled in the end, so you can imagine just how troublesome it is. Zhong Yi nodded and said, just let me know where I can help out. Ha ha, great. I was only waiting for you to say that. Dong Shanshan said, you should know how Wang he is, right? He definitely won't ask you for help even if he is in trouble. Back then, even though I kept asking him, he still did not tell me about the matter in detail. However, I'm thinking that since we've all been classmates for many years, even if he does not say it, we should not just leave him alone. If we can help him, then we must definitely help him, which is why I'm discussing this with you first. Zhong Yi replied, I understand. Actually it's just about having offended someone, right? Haven't I offended a lot of people in these recent years? But I'm still doing fine, no? Dong Shanshan smiled and said, that's why you're the odd one out. Exasperated, Zhong Yi said, can you be a little more particular with the terms you use? Dong Shanshan said flatly, no, because you're really an odd one. Zhong Yi said, whatever. Chapter 842, Zhong Yi enraged. 1 3rd, the next day. 9 a.m. Zhong Yi headed to Media College again for the second day of the entrance exam. Professor Zhong, you're here? Yes, teacher Shui. Professor Little Zhong, good morning. Professor Wang, good morning to you too. We're colleagues now. Yes, and I'll still be depending on everyone's care. When he arrived at the exam hall, the other examiners were all exchanging greetings with Zhong Yi. Yesterday, everyone still addressed him rather casually, with some calling him Little Zhong, while others addressed him as Teacher Little Zhong. But today, everyone seemingly added the title of Professor when they addressed him. Zhong Yi taking up the temporary position had been announced on Media College's official website. A spokesperson of the school authorities even gave a media interview about it, which was the main reason why everyone addressed him a little differently now. Of course, when Su Hongyang arrived, she still called him Little Zhong. Even if teacher Su tried to address him as Professor Zhong, he would not dare to be called that by her since she was his former teacher. The interview round started. They were kept busy all morning, a whole three hours. In the afternoon. They were finally done with the interviews. Su Hongyang did not say anything and just left the exam hall quietly. Zhong Yi was looking through his notes about the examinees and by the time he looked up, he could not see her anymore. He had intended to get lunch with teacher Su at first, but he didn't expect teacher Su to move so quickly. A. Hey, where did teacher Su go? A female teacher said, did she leave already? Another examiner replied, she seemed to have left after answering a call. Zhong Yi also stood up to leave. Curious, he looked around after he went downstairs and suddenly spotted Su Hongyang somewhere far away. There was another person with teacher Su, a rather young man who was around Zhong Yi's age. Although he couldn't make out his features, from what he could see, that person should be rather good looking. On top of that, he even seemed somewhat familiar. Is he? He instinctively walked over to them. From a distance away, he could hear teacher Su's conversation with that person. Teacher Su, sure, I'll help ask around. That person, thank you. I've troubled you again. Teacher Su, have you ever not given me any trouble? That person laughed dryly. Teacher Su, but I can't guarantee anything. Although it's been a year already, if the other party still wants to bite onto it, it'll still be very difficult for you to find work in this industry. That person voiced, I understand. I'll just take it as it comes. This is the most pressing matter that I want to settle now that I've come back. Teacher Su smiled and said, actually, that old classmate of yours has a bigger influence than me in the industry. You should have sought his help on this matter and exchanged some tips. After all, that kid has started bigger troubles than you and has offended much more people as well. 
In this aspect, he is definitely much more experienced than you. In the past two years, you could say that he's been the most reckless person of all. That person shook his head and replied, you must not tell him about this. Suddenly, Zhong Yi's laughter rang out. Don't tell who? Teacher Su and that person were startled. Zhong Yi looked at that person at the same time that person looked at Zhong Yi. They stared at each other for at least two seconds. Zhong Yi laughed. I was just thinking who this familiar person could be. If it isn't classmate Wang He. What's the matter? You came to Beijing but did not even bother to say hi to me? Not even a phone call? If it weren't for Shan Shan who told me, I wouldn't have known that you were already back. What's the meaning of this? Are you avoiding me? Wang He chuckled. Would I have to avoid you? Have we ever been on such good terms to warrant that? Zhong Yi thought about it and then nodded with a chuckle too. That's true, we're not really on good terms. Wang He glanced at him. You're still that same old you, totally unchanged. But you've changed, Zhong Yi said sarcastically. I heard that you offended someone and then ran back to your hometown after that. Wang his eyebrows twitched. He brushed it off with a sort of smile and said, that wasn't running away. What I did was beat a strategic retreat and reorganize my defenses. Zhong Yi seethed, oh all right, just stop bragging. If you ran away, then you ran away. What retreat and defense are you even talking about? You're just sugarcoating it. Wang He retorted, enough about me. Didn't you also get banned by the SARFT? You were the top artist on the SARFT's blacklist last year. Zhong Yi rolled his eyes. But they couldn't keep me down, could they? But what about you? Wang He glanced at him again. Am I not back now? The two of them said things one after another. After not seeing each other for two years, the first thing they did was to start with a fight. This scene seemingly brought them back to their days in university. At that time, these two also argued in such a way every day, bickering their days away. It was even a highlight of their classes. Su Hongyang had not forgotten this. When she heard them bickering, she felt like she was transported back several years. You too. She broke out into a laugh. Suddenly, Zhong Yi looked at Wang He and threw open his arms. Wang He also laughed. He spread his arms and walked over. The two of them gave each other a great bear hug. Zhong Yi lamented, We haven't seen each other in two years. I kinda missed you. Wang He laughed and said, Without you around, there was no one for me to argue with. How boring it got for me too. Zhong Yi declared, It's good that you're back now. Wang He replied, yes, I'm finally back. Su Hongyang smiled happily and said, are you both done reminiscing about the old days? Wang He laughed. Yes, we are. Let's go and find a restaurant where can we sit and catch up, Su Hongyang suggested. There was a small restaurant just outside the back gates of Media College. It was slightly run down and there weren't many customers either. The three of them sat down and randomly ordered some dishes before starting to discuss the serious issues. Zhong Yi sipped the hot tea and said, I overheard a little of what the two of you were talking about. Dong Shan Shan also briefly shared with me what happened. Wang He, just what kind of person did you offend? Wang He looked quite unwilling to share. Let's eat first. But Zhong Yi stated, if I didn't know about it in the first place, that would be fine. But since I already know about it, then there's no point in hiding it. Quickly tell me what happened. We can try to think of a solution together. Su Hongyang also urged, go on, little Wang. Wang He pondered for a moment before explaining, it was an incident that happened back when I just graduated. At that time, a lot of television stations and other hiring businesses were already headhunting us before we graduated. Among our batch of broadcasting majors, my results were considered to be quite good since I was first or second in our class, around equal to Dong Shan Shan. Therefore, both of us found jobs before we even got our diplomas. I ended up going to Hebei TV, but of course, it wasn't some high-flying department there. My results were good, but they weren't the best among our faculty. We did not have any connections either so to be able to just work in a television station as an host intern after graduating was already considered great. 
many of the other media college graduates could not even be a host in turn. They were mainly running errands for their employers and wouldn't get any screen time for at least a year or two, so I was rather cocky at that time. John Yi whined, get to the point and stop boasting. I was one of those graduates who you claim to have been running errands. Wang He said, fine. The main issue happened after I started working. I was interning at the Hebei TV headquarters for three months when my boss there felt that I had good overall potential, and transferred me to the production department that's located in Beijing. There were quite a few well-performing shows on Hebei TV that were produced over at the office in Beijing. Many television stations place their production departments and resources in Beijing since this location is convenient, and has more access to additional resources. Zhang Yi asked, who did you offend then? Wang He said, the head of Hebei TV's production department located in Beijing, their leader Guan Yunhai. He's also a station lead of Hebei TV, and is one rank lower than a deputy station head even though he's on the salary scale of a deputy station head. You could say that he's a leading figure in the television circle. John Yi frowned. Someone on a similar level to a deputy station head? Su Hongyang added, I met Guan Yunhai once before. He's a highly qualified veteran who has worked at Central TV and Anhui TV before. It was only later that he went to Hebei TV and was later made the head of the Beijing production department. You should know who he is if someone mentions him in the industry. Zhang Yi nodded at that. He seemed to have heard of that name before too. Su Hongyang said, I'd asked someone to put in a good word for Wang Yi back then, but before it could even happen, nothing was heard about the case anymore. Zhang Yi asked, so what really happened? Did you uncover his family's secret? The latter sentence was Beijing slang that roughly meant, did you steal his wife? Su Hongyang understood and rolled her eyes. You're already an associate professor. Watch what you say. Wang He smiled bitterly. You know what? It really has something to do with that, but it's not me. His mistress was my boss, the head of our department and a former host. Although she's already fallen out of the B-list rankings, she's still rather pretty. When I first joined the station, I did not know anything at all. I didn't know my way around to the people and only did what the lead ordered. After all, I was only an intern, so whatever the boss asked, I would just do it diligently. It was only after some time that she began trusting me. Once, when she attended a dinner function, she brought me along as well. I was just there to drive her around and whatnot, but when she had a drink too much, she gave me an address in her drunken state. It wasn't her home address but somewhere else, so I just sent her there. Afterwards, I gained even more of her trust and she got me to pick her up many more times to go to that address. She even specifically told me not to tell anyone, and it was only later on that I found out that that was not Guan Yunhai's place but the home of another lover of hers. Zhang Yi was left almost speechless at this. It's this complicated? Wang He said, you don't say. There was one time when everything just came together and we got caught by Guan Yunhai. Me, that woman, her lover, and Guan Yunhai just found ourselves together somewhere. There was even a fight there, and it was only then that I realized that Guan Yunhai was her lover too. Don't you think that I was really unlucky to have that happen to me? What has all this got to do with me? As a result, Guan Yunhai hated me because I was the one who always chauffeured my boss to her lover's house. Moreover, as it involved such a secretive issue, Guan Yunhai did not make a big fuss out of it and just straight up had me fired. He even released word in the industry that my character and work abilities were flawed, so that meant whoever hired me would be going against him. Su Hongyang shook her head. What a corrupt person. Wang He gave a helpless laugh. Teacher Su, you've always taught at Media College, and the culture here is definitely different. But for many other places, this is how it is. The industry is really messy and complicated. Zhang Yi said in a speechless manner, is that how you ended up in this situation now? Yes. Wang Yi threw up his hands in resignation. After that, I tried to apply for several more positions at other television stations, but without an exception, none of them got back to me. Su Hongyang said, television stations usually inquire with the previous employers of a host who makes a move from their previous jobs. They would then meet with a roadblock at Guan Yunhai's side and wouldn't risk hiring Wang He. 
Since he is not a famous host, there is no need for them to take this risk. After listening to all the details, the entire situation was quite clear to them. Zhong Yi remarked, you can't be a more innocent party when it comes to this affair. Right? Wang He furiously shook his head. But who can I go to for justice? Suddenly, a call came in. Wang He had a look at his phone and said, it's from Shan Shan. He answered it. Dong Shan Shan's voice could be heard saying, Wang He, I've already asked for you. Wang He said, thanks, how was it? Dong Shan Shan sighed. I've told Brother Hu and a department head over at Beijing Television about it. They were willing to give you a chance for an interview at the beginning, but then later they said to forget about it. They said that your resume is not good as Hebei TV has given you a bad review. Wang He kept quiet for a moment. All right, I understand. Thanks, Shan Shan. I'll buy you dinner some other day. Dong Shan Shan replied, there's no need for that. I wasn't of much help anyway. I'll still have to. Wang He said, I appreciate that you tried to help. Dong Shan Shan said, I feel that it's better if you tell Zhong Yi about this. He has a much bigger influence than me, perhaps he can help you think of a way. If you don't want to, I can help you speak with him. I briefly mentioned it to Zhong Yi over the phone yesterday, and he seemed quite worried about your situation as well, even though he might not say so. When Zhong Yi heard that, he laughed and said, Shan Shan, are you making things up about me again? Dong Shan Shan was a little startled, yo, you guys are together right now? Wang He laughed. I bumped into him at Media College. Dong Shan Shan laughed, all right, then I feel more relieved. You can ask him for help. I'll be hanging up now. They ended the call. Su Hongyang asked, Beijing Television said no? Wang He nodded. Shan Shan has already asked for me. They said no. It's already been a year. Why is he still not letting this go? Su Hongyang frowned. Wang He laughed very helplessly. He's trying to get rid of me once and for all. It's fine, I was already prepared for such a result anyway. Hearing this, Zhong Yi said, Okay, isn't this just a small issue? I'll help you handle it. Wang He looked at him. Are you sure you can do it? He, what's with that doubting tone? I've not having any of it. Just wait and see what I can do. Zhong Yi took out his cell phone and called Department 14's director Yang Qianfei. Do do, the call connected. Yang Qianfei, hello? Little Zhong, ha ha, I've just seen your news. How did it happen? You got appointed as an associate professor again. This time at Media College. Don't forget to treat us when you're back after the new year. For sure, Zhong Yi agreed. Yang Tianfei asked, what's the matter? Zhong Yi answered, it's about an old classmate of mine, also from Media College. He's been looking for a job as a host recently. Do you think you can make some recommendations for him? There's no doubt about his abilities, I can guarantee that. Yang Tianfei granted without hesitation, it's not a difficult request, so sure, just send me his information. Since our department does not have a hosting position, I'll help you ask around with the other departments of Central TV. Zhong Yi said, all right, thank you so much then. Zhong Yi also thought that this issue would be settled just like that, but the outcome was totally beyond his expectations. Chapter 843, Zhong Yi enraged. Two-thirds, later that afternoon. The interviews were finished. Some of the examinees left the campus full of confidence, while some female examinees could be seen walking away in tears. They clearly felt that they had not done well in their first round of the exam. Zhong Yi looked at his watch. The interviews today ended earlier than yesterday. It was only a little past 3 p.m., so he went to find a quiet spot with no one around and took out his phone to call Yang Qianfei. Director Yang. Your phone was off just now? Yes. I was interviewing the examinees just now. You've received Wang his information, right? I've received it and also helped you ask around. How was it? Did that classmate of yours offend someone? Yes, he offended the head of Hebei TV's production department located in Beijing, someone called Guan Yunhai. Yang Qianfei asked with some uncertainty, Guan Yunhai? 
the old Guan who has worked at Central TV before? I know him. No wonder, no wonder no one wants to hire your classmate. I've asked a few people I know and all of them turned me down. It sounded like when they all called up to check on Wang his past employment, there was someone from Hebei TV who specifically told them not to use this person and said many bad things about him. Looks like your classmate has gravely offended Guan Yunhai, but what on earth did he do? Zhang Yi frowned and said, it's a little complicated to explain. Yang Qianfei revealed, old Guan has a large influence within the circle and he's also a veteran, so he knows quite a lot of people. As long as he has released word, then your classmate's issue won't be easy to handle. Not even with your influence. Zhang Yi asked. Yang Qianfei said, my influence is not greater than his. The few people whom I've asked wouldn't want to offend Guan Yunhai for no reason. They feel that it isn't worth it to do so for a rookie, since after all, old Guan has worked at Central TV in the past and they all know each other as well. All right then, I understand, Director Yang. Sorry, I couldn't help. Hi, it's fine. I'll think of another way. If it's okay with him, why don't you get him to come work at Department 14 first? Maybe he can do some narration work for the documentaries for a start? Let's talk about it again, Director Yang. His specialty is not in this area and he probably wants to stay in the hosting field. Therefore, whether it's now or later, this matter still has to be resolved first. They hung up. Su Hongyang also came out of the exam hall. Little Zhong. Su Hongyang asked, is there news? Zhong Yi was getting quite enraged by this. I've asked my department's director about it, but it's still not working out. Those people are all unwilling to offend Guan Yunhai, so they've rejected our request. And it seems like Hebei TV is even releasing word on purpose against Wang He. If anyone hires Wang He, it means they're going against Guan Yunhai. What kind of person is this? Su Hongyang also appeared angry. Such a vengeful person? What has this got to do with being vengeful? Zhang Yi spieled, this doesn't have anything to do with Wang He in the first place. He went around having an affair, but when his lover ran off with another man, he's putting the blame on Wang He. What kind of fucking logic is this? A few examiners and teachers who were just passing by them all looked at Zhong Yi. Su Hongyang said in a speechless manner, keep it down. Don't keep cursing at others. You're an associate professor, so you should be more mindful of your behavior. Only then did Zhong Yi cool down a little. Where's Wang He? At my office. Su Hongyang turned around. Let's go to my office first then. At Su Hongyan's office. Zhong Yi related to Wang He what Yang Tianfei had told him. Wang He stated, All right, I won't trouble you guys any longer. I'll settle my own problem from here. How are you going to settle it? Zhong Yi asked him. Wang He kept quiet. Zhong Yi's temper had never been good and he would often get impulsive easily. About this issue today, from first hearing of it till now, it had made him somewhat mad. If it were Zhong Yi himself who had offended Guan Yunhai, he wouldn't have been bothered, since he had already offended too many people to begin with, so what was another one or two more? It wouldn't make a difference for Zhong Yi, but it was different for Wang He. Wang He couldn't even be considered as having debuted yet and was a total rookie in the industry, so that made the matter more difficult to handle. He couldn't possibly go and take this all on himself either. He had no problems with that, but Guan Yunhai would never allow it. That Guan fellow had already fully pinned this on Wang He and was determined to force him out of the industry. This was a form of an even harsher ban. It was basically shutting him out of the industry with no chance of getting in at all. At this moment, Su Hongyang spoke up, how about this? I've asked for Guan Yunhai's number from a friend just now. Let me give him a call. Wang He quickly said, Teacher Su, forget it. Su Hongyang declared firmly, No, I won't. You're such a promising young man. Why should we let you be held in check just because of what Guan Yunhai says? Who does he think he is? Is there still any justice here? Since it had come to this, Su Hongyang was also getting infuriated. Zhang Yi said, Right, call him. I would like to see what kinds of excuses he can come up with. They made the call over. Do do, the ringtone went for five or six times before being answered. 
Hello? It was the voice of a middle-aged man. Su Hongyang said, Hello, is this Director Guan? You are? Guan Yunhai asked. Thinking about Wang He, Su Hongyang did not show much emotions and said calmly, I am a teacher from Media College's School of Broadcasting. Wang He is my student. There was silence for a few seconds on the other end of the call. Oh, what is it? Su Hongyang said, my student worked at your station for a period of time. Back then, he had just graduated and was still inexperienced, so he might not have considered everything carefully before he did them and caused you trouble. As his teacher, I've already criticized him, so I hope that you would also let him off the hook since it's already been a year. The child is much more mature and understanding now. Besides, he's also one of the better students we teachers have identified, so about his work. Guan Yunhai cut her off and said impatiently, Wang He? I seem to have an impression of such a person, but hasn't he already left his position here? So please don't come to me with his work problems. Su Hongyang replied, but the reviews from your station about Wang He haven't been good, and a few other television stations are not willing to hire him because of this. He, then that has nothing to do with us, right, interrupted Guan Yunhai as he cut off Su Hongyang again. We also have our set of procedures to follow at our station, so what has it got to do with me what the other stations think about him? Su Hongyan's eyes narrowed. You're also a leading figure with a lot of influence in the industry, so why are you taking this up with a child so aggressively for? It's not easy for the child too. Pausing, she continued, how about this, Director Guan? Are you free today? I will bring Wang He over. Let's handle the issue after we talk about, you don't have to bother coming to discuss this with me. Guan Yunhai cut her off for the third time. I'm very busy right now. Do do do. He ended the call. Su Hongyan's expression turned into disappointment. He hung up. Zhong Yi was so angry that he was amused. You even got dissed by him? Wang He said, Teacher Su, I think it's better if I find a way to solve this on my own. Don't trouble yourself anymore. Seeing Teacher Su get disrespected because of his own issues made Wang He feel outraged and also made him feel like he owed her a lot. But Su Hongyang insisted, I will involve myself with this no matter what. Let's go, little Wang. I will bring you to their office. We must settle this today. I don't believe we can't do anything about it. Wang He immediately said, I will go there by myself. Su Hongyang voiced, I will go with you. I'll go too. Zhong Yi was already putting his jacket on. Su Hongyang looked at him and said, Why are you going? You just skedaddle back home. Zhong Yi gazed at her with his eyes wide open. How can I not go? I already said that I would help Wang Yi with this, so I must help out until it has been resolved. Isn't that Guan Yunhai an idiotic bastard? Then we should go together and talk it out with him. Su Hongyang glared at him. Give it a rest, will you? It's better if you don't go, because if you do, things will only get more difficult to handle. Just with that temper of yours, you would only give us more trouble over there. If you start getting into a shouting match with them, little Wang's case would never be settled and might even become unsolvable. Zhong Yi responded, don't you think I know how to behave myself? Am I someone who doesn't know my limits? If this were my own problem, I would have already cursed him out over the phone, but didn't I keep quiet just now? Don't give me that. Su Hongyang said, just go back to doing whatever you needed to do. Finally, Su Hongyang brought Wang He along with her and left. Zhong Yi was speechless. He went back to the office and paced around with his hands behind his back for some time. In the end, he still decided to head to the parking lot with a sunken expression. Since he knew about it, even if they didn't want him to go, he still must go. Half an hour later. Hebei Television's Beijing Production Department. After looking for the location for a long time, he finally found his way and drove to the place. However, before he could get out of his car, Zhong Yi saw something at the building lobby from his car window that left him furious. He did not even park his car properly, simply going right over the curb. Spinning the wheel, he left it there at the entrance of the building. Inside the lobby. There were two groups of people arguing. A staffer shouted, we asked you all to leave. 
Wang Yi held one of the security guards and said, Why did you push her? Unauthorized persons are prohibited to enter. Who allowed you two to come in here? That security guard pushed Wang his hand away. The other security guard captain rushed over with a baton, but did not use it on Wang He. Instead, he bumped chests as a challenge and stated, We've already said, Director Guan is in a meeting and has no time for you too. Why are you still trying to enter? Wang He roared, Why did you push my teacher down? More and more people from the television station gathered to watch. Su Hongyang tugged at Wang He. Little Wang. Let go. Don't fight anymore. Wang He might usually seem very polite and amiable, but when something really cropped up, he could get quite ferocious too. He grabbed the security guard with one hand and said, he can push me. But he can't push you. What are you doing? Let go. Su Hongyang was afraid things would get out of control and quickly tried to hold him back. Chief Chen, a supervisor at the station, said with a darkened expression, hurry up and chase them out. What are you still waiting for? Around eight security guards and a few male television station staff members came forward to surround them. At this moment, Zhong Yi rushed in with a murderous look. Su Hongyang was the first one to notice him. What are you doing here? Didn't I tell you to not come? Whatever. Hurry up and hold Wang Yi back. Don't let him start a fight. Wang Yi's one year of stifled anger had finally erupted today. However, Su Hongyang could not have expected that not only did Zhong Yi not hold Wang He back, he even threw his sunglasses down to the floor and shouted, Who fucking pushed my teacher just now? The lobby went quiet all of a sudden. Chief Chen was stunned. Several of the security guards were stunned. The other television station staff also froze in their spots. Zhong Yi? It's Zhong Yi? Damn. What is this jinx doing here? The several security guards who had surrounded Su Hongyang and Wang He to hold them back all took a step back unwittingly, after they saw and heard Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi looked at Wang He who was grabbing a security guard and walked over with long strides. Was it you? That security guard who was sweating bucket loads by now denied that it was him. Zhong Yi looked at another person. Or was it you? The other security guard was stunned and reflexively took a step back. Su Hongyang was seething with so much anger that she nearly died. These two students were really too worrisome to take care of, especially Zhong Yi. I was still hoping that you'd help me pull Wang Yi aside, but why are you even more rash than him? She quickly said, no one pushed me. Stop it. I only tripped on my heels just now. Zhong Yi said coldly, Wang Yi, which one of them did it? Wang Yi said with a dark face, I did not see it clearly either. Su Hongyang said angrily, I really tripped by myself. Didn't I already say so? Zhong Yi was having none of it. His entire body was emitting a murderous aura. With his martial arts, these security guards and the male staff would not be able to handle him even if they had help from the surrounding, but powerless white-collar staff. Zhong Yi could take all of them on with his eyes closed. That was why everyone was shocked with fear with just Zhong Yi standing there, as his entire aura was totally different from everyone else's. The key difference was Zhong Yi was already notorious for his behavior, having beaten up a leader, kicked a Korean celebrity, and also fought several plane hijackers before. All of those incidents added to his legendary status, so many of those security guards trembled at the sight of Zhong Yi. Their tough behavior earlier was only an act and also due to them having more people on their side. But when faced with Zhong Yi, they could not summon the same aggressiveness because they all knew that Zhong Yi really dared to fight for real. While they didn't seem like they could take him on at all, neither could they actually hit him. What was his status? This was a Peking University associate professor. He was someone who had just received the highest mathematics award given out in the country. He was Media College's newly recruited visiting associate professor. He was the entertainment circle's well-known hooligan. How could they fight him? There was no way to. Zhong Yi was no ordinary celebrity. This person could walk around in any of his capacities in the industry without fearing for his safety. They dared to take Wang Yi and Su Hongyang head-on. But they would never dare to mess with Zhong Yi. 
Everyone knew how ruthless this desperado could get if he could even pilot and force land a plane in a situation where there were no pilots at all. Chapter 844, Zhong Yi enraged. Three thirds, the atmosphere suddenly turned. Tense. Many of the surrounding staff whispered among themselves. Why is he here? He's too ruthless to deal with. Ayo, hurry up and inform the XX. Don't let the situation escalate into a real fight. Yeah, that Zhong Yi guy is always getting into fights. Is it because of Wang His incident? Don't tell me that he and Wang He are classmates. There might be this possibility too. Regarding the incident with Director Guan, hi, there's nothing we could say at all. Should we call the police? Don't let this get out of hand. Wang Yi had worked here for quite some time back then. Although everyone feigned ignorance about Guan Yunhai's affair, how could they do not know about that since it had been discussed so many times in private? However, no one expected Zhong Yi to actually get involved in this issue as well. If this was the office building of any other company, then there would be a possibility that those people would not have a clue about Zhong Yi's past deeds. But since Hebei television staff were also industry insiders themselves, how could they not know about what had happened in the past? How could they not know what sort of hooligan Zhong Yi was in the industry? Wang Yi also shouted, who pushed my teacher? Step forward and admit it. No one uttered a word. Chief Chen was the highest ranking person at the scene. When he heard that, his face also turned white from anger. Wang He, stop spouting nonsense. Who saw us pushing her? Ah? Su Hongyang pushed at Wang He. All right, that's enough. Chief Chen said, no one touched her in the first place. Zhong Yi stared at Chief Chen. Who can prove that you didn't push her? Chief Chen. Zhong Yi glared at them. Then you guys must have pushed her. The surrounding people. The security guards nearly cried. Aren't you being too unreasonable? Chief Chen pointed at them and said, it's office hours now and everyone is working. You guys are demanding to see Director Guan the moment you arrive and even want to go upstairs right away, but have you made an appointment to do so? Huh? Director Guan is upstairs, but do you know how busy he is? You think that you can just go up to see him as you like? You can see him whenever you want. Based on what? Whoever you want to see, go and make an appointment at the front desk first, then go wait in the corner for your turn. Su Hongyang looked at him and said, but did you even give us a chance to make an appointment? The moment we arrived, we were already chased off by all of you. Wang He said, and you even got a bunch of security guards to have us surrounded. What's the meaning of this? Are you shielding yourselves from thieves? Suddenly, there was a someone who looked like a client walking in from outside. After seeing a group of people in the lobby, he glanced at them frequently as he asked a staff member to point him to where the elevators were. That staff gave him directions and that person walked toward the elevator, turning back every now and then to look. No one even asked him who he was. Further, that person was clearly here for the first time too, just like Wang He, Su Hongyang, and Zhong Yi. Su Hongyang pointed to the elevator and said, then what about that person? Why isn't anyone stopping him? Without looking back, Chief Chen simply said, what person? Zhong Yi spoke, you're doing this on purpose, aren't you? Chief Chen looked at Zhong Yi. Will the three of you please leave? Zhong Yi sneered. I won't leave today no matter what. What can you do about that? Chief Chen was stunned as he did not expect Zhong Yi to be such a thug. If you three continue to interfere with our work, then don't blame us for calling the police. Who are you trying to scare? Zhong Yi took out his cell phone. Hurry up then, call the police. Or should I call for you instead? My teacher was beaten up by someone here. If I don't get a proper explanation today, no one is to leave. Got beaten up? Fuck, who beat up your teacher? She just fell over by herself. Besides, she did not even really fall. She just tripped and wobbled a little. Chief Chen initially thought that a famous celebrity like him would surely be afraid of getting negative publicity. As long as he mentioned the police, Zhong Yi would definitely have to reconsider his behavior. But after hearing Zhong Yi's response, Chief Chen nearly choked. 
Only then did he recall that this Zhong guy did not lack any negative publicity in the first place. Scolding people, beating up people, suing his own employer, what kinds of things did he not do before? Every now and then, plenty of negative news about him would surface, but look at him. Didn't he still eat and sleep like usual every day? He basically did not care at all. Besides, the media had also seemingly gotten used to it. Hence, getting portrayed in a negative light might be a devastating blow to other celebrities, but to Zhong Yi, it didn't hurt him one bit since it was already routine for him. Zhong Yi pointed upstairs and declared, cut the crap. Get Guan Yun Hai to come down. Chief Chen replied, Director Guan is currently in a meeting. Then we will go up and find him. Zhong Yi led Su Hongyang and Wang He to the elevator. Encountering such a person who didn't care about anything, Chief Chen had a headache dealing with it. He quickly called out, Guards. Guards, what are you still waiting for? Stop them. Let me see who's brave enough to let them enter. Zhong Yi exclaimed, Who the hell do you think you are? This is our station. Chief Chen shouted. When Su Hongyang saw that Zhong Yi was furious, she quickly held his arm back and said, Little Zhong. Upstairs. Guan Yun Hai's office. The secretary rushed in and said while panting, Director Guan. What's the matter? Guan Yun Hai was surfing the internet in his office. He was a slightly tanned middle aged man with a square face, but his eyebrows were very thin. From his looks alone, you would know that he wasn't really someone you could easily talk with. Something has happened downstairs. The secretary anxiously explained, I don't know why, but Zhong Yi is here. They're causing a commotion in the lobby downstairs. Chief Chen and the others won't be able to hold them back much longer. Guan Yun Hai asked with a dark expression, which Zhong Yi? It's that Zhong Yi, answered the secretary. Guan Yun Hai said, why is he here? What has it got to do with him? The secretary guessed, I think he is Wang His, university classmate. Guan Yun Hai said coldly, he's just an entertainer. Why is it so difficult to stop him? Get the security guards to chase them out. Why are they causing a ruckus here? Don't they know what kind of place this is? Does he think that this is his house? The secretary wiped his sweat away and said, but, but Zhong Yi is no ordinary entertainer. He's also an associate professor at both Peking University and Media College. If he insists on barging in here, Chief Chen and the others would not. I'll say it again. Chase them out. Guan Yun Hai sneered, I don't care whether he is a professor or not. If they want to see me, get them to make an appointment. And wait till I'm free. The secretary snuck a glance and knew that Guan Yun Hai was clearly very free now but he obviously just did not want to see Zhong Yi and the others. He did not give them any face at all. Moreover, even if Zhong Yi had made an appointment, Guan Yun Hai would still not care about him. Regarding Wang He, no matter who came, it would still be useless. The secretary nodded and said, I understand, Director Guan. Guan Yun Hai said, if nothing works, just report it the police or call Superintendent Liu. I'm not free to see them. He shook his head and proclaimed, who the hell do they think they are? Understood. The secretary obeyed his order. Downstairs. In the lobby. The secretary came down via the elevator. Zhong Yi was still arguing impatiently with Chief Chen and his group of people while Su Hongyang kept tugging at Zhong Yi beside him. One moment, she was arguing with Chief Chen and the others, the next moment she was restraining Zhong Yi, for fear that he could not maintain his calm. Secretary Liu. Secretary Liu is here. Someone shouted from the crowd. When Chief Chen heard that, he also looked over and hurriedly called out, Secretary Liu. Everyone knew that Secretary Liu had definitely come down on Director Guan's instructions. Guan Yunhai's secretary nodded at them, and then glanced at the trio of Zhong Yi, Wang He, and Su Hongyang. Director Guan is not free at the moment, so would you all please leave? If you want to see Director Guan, I'll help you guys make an appointment, but I don't know when Director Guan will have free time. When the time comes, I'll contact you all again. His words did not sound wrong, but he delivered it icily. Chief Chen understood what the director's intention was. He knew that they would not have to give any face to Zhong Yi too, so he said to Wang He, did you hear that? Please go back. 
Zhong Yi said, with such a big commotion going on, Guan Yunhai still does not intend to show himself, right? Chief Chen said, the director has his own things to handle. Do you think he has to come out just because of some shouting by you guys? Zhong Yi laughed, ha. Su Hongyang took a deep breath and said, we're here to communicate properly with him. No one intended to come here to cause trouble. Besides, if it were anyone causing trouble, then it was you all who started it first. You're Director Guan's secretary, right? Can you arrange for me to meet with Director Guan one-on-one? -on -one? I would like to speak to him face to face. Secretary Liu shook his head and replied, Director Guan is not free. For the sake of her student, Su Hongyang stifled her anger and said, then is it fine for us to wait in the lobby? We'll wait for Director Guan to come down. Chief Chen was getting impatient. Didn't I make myself clear? How many times have I said it? Do you really not understand or are you pretending not to understand? Secretary Liu added, it's useless even if you wait here. Besides, our colleagues still have to work and with your presence here, it will affect us. If you really want to wait, please go out to the main entrance. You can wait anywhere you want outside of our premises. We won't care about that. Zhong Yi was so angry that he started laughing. We don't even have the right to wait in the lobby. Chief Chen pleaded, please leave. The security guards also braced themselves and came up to surround them. Wang Yi clenched his fists as he took a deep breath while looking at Zhong Yi. Su Hongyang could no longer hold back her anger and shouted, who does Guan Yunhai think he is? Zhong Yi and I came to see him, but we can't even get a meeting with him. Su Hongyang was a veteran lecturer of Media College, while Zhong Yi was an associate professor at Peking University and also an illustrious person of the entertainment industry. If Zhong Yi really went to Hebei to meet your station head, even he wouldn't try to avoid and not show his face to Zhong Yi, not to mention you are just the head of Hebei TV's famed production department. No matter what, as a Peking University professor, a winner of the highest award for a host, and a big shot B-list celebrity, he should still have some importance to speak of. But you? You can't even be bothered with us. Do you really think that highly of yourself? Honestly, if it wasn't for Wang his issue this time, with just Su Hongyan's status as a teacher, she couldn't possibly come looking for Guan Yunhai by herself. Chief Chen said, guards. But Zhong Yi did not move. You don't want to let us in, right? Chief Chen repeated firmly, I'll repeat, please leave. Zhong Yi looked at them. Are you sure? Sorry, but we are very sure, Secretary Liu asserted, getting rather annoyed. Then I'm sorry too. Zhong Yi bluntly said, I must get this resolved today. Su Hongyang asked in a low voice, what will you do? Let me make a call first. Saying that, he turned around and walked a few steps away. Then he sat down on the sofa in the lobby waiting area. Everyone was dumbfounded. Chief Chen frowned. What's wrong with you? Zhong Yi did not even pay any attention to him as he took out his cell phone to make a call. You're not coming out, right? Chasing us away, right? All right. Do, do, after six or seven rings, the call connected. It was a woman's voice at the other end. Hello. Zhong Yi inquired, Old Wu, are you busy? Chapter 845, let's see which door I'm not allowed to enter. The phone call was to Wu Ziqing. I'm in a meeting. I need to say something first even if you're in a meeting. Okay, I left the conference room. Tell me, who has annoyed you again? Hebei TV's Guan Yunhai. Do you know him? No, never heard of him. He's the head of Hebei TV's production department located in Beijing. I heard that his rank is similar to that of a deputy station head. Maybe I saw him before when I went on inspection, but I have no impression of who he is. Even if it were the deputy station heads of Central TV or Beijing Television, Wu Ziqing might not know all of them. Moreover, for someone who was only in charge of a production department at Hebei Television, even if his position was similar to that of a deputy station head, he was still not a ranking deputy station head. Zhong Yi explained to Wu Ziqing in a simple fashion the situation regarding Wang He. At the end of his explanation, Wu Ziqing said lightly, it's just this small thing. All right, I got it. You're over there right now, yes? 
hand the phone to Guan Yun Hai. I'll speak to him. Zhong Yi said with a grimace, I can't hand the phone to him. They aren't even letting us into the building. Old Wu said, you aren't even allowed to go in. They're not allowing us. There are like eight security guards chasing us away. My teacher was nearly pushed to the floor by them too. I was pl planning on sitting here in their lobby for a while, but looks like there's someone already coming over to shoo me away. Zhong Yi smiled as he looked at Chief Chen and the few security guards who were walking over. Wu Zeqing acknowledged, All right, I understand. I'll send my secretary over to look for you three. Zhong Yi replied, All right. The call ended. Zhong Yi called out, Teacher Su, Wang He, come over here and sit. Su Hongyang blinked several times, then walked over and took a seat beside him. Seeing that, Wang He also followed and sat down. This made the people from the television station even more infuriated. Chief Chen gravely asked, Wang He, are you bent on making trouble here and embarrassing everyone? It's you guys who are making us resort to this. Since they didn't give them any face, then Su Hongyang was not going to be nice either. Zhong Yi told him, you better not fucking talk to us in that tone. I will make sure we get to see who the embarrassed ones are today. Secretary Liu was already calling Guan Yun Hai. Director Guan. Has the issue been handled? Zhong Yi and Wang He are still refusing to leave. Just chase them away. Surely we can't resort to manhandling them, right? They're just sitting on the sofa in the lobby. Do you think we should call the police or something? Then ignore them and just go about with your work. They're at our television station. Can they still stir up trouble on our territory? All right, Director Guan. You can't even handle such a simple issue. Do you have to report to me about everything? I'm sorry, Director. Secretary Liu hung up and then ordered, Old Chen, just ignore them. Chief Chen reacted by calling the security guards off and deployed a few of them to guard the elevators, with the others assigned to the stairways and other entrances. They were clearly afraid that Zhong Yi and company would sneak upstairs. Seeing this, the surrounding staff who were watching dispersed. Only Zhong Yi, Su Hongyang, and Wang He were left at the waiting area in the lobby. Su Hongyang whispered, Who did you call? A friend. Zhong Yi did not clarify. Su Hongyang asked, Then what do we do now? Wang He also asked Zhong Yi, Are we just going to sit here and wait? We're waiting for someone. Zhong Yi pulled up his sleeve to check his watch. It's not far from my friend's office, so it shouldn't take long. When she gets here, it'll be easier to handle the situation. As it wasn't Zhong Yi's personal issue today and it also involved the future of Wang His work prospects, there were a lot of limitations to how Zhong Yi could handle this. Otherwise, if it were the old him, he would have already barged his way in. Right now, he could only wait for someone who could conveniently handle this matter. Su Hongyang said with some doubt in her voice, then when your friend is here, can she really handle the problem? It feels like this television station is rather arrogant and that Guan Yun Hai will not give face to anyone, whoever it is. Zhong Yi chuckled, if he doesn't give face to my friend, then I'll give in to him. Su Hongyang said, if she can really speak directly to Guan Yun Hai, then get your friend to speak to him properly. The conflict earlier is not a problem. We should settle Wang his work issue first. That's the priority. Zhong Yi replied, let's just wait for her to get here first. In the end, it didn't take long at all. They didn't even talk about much yet when a woman in her thirties, dressed in a business suit, strode quickly in. Her looks were average and she wore a pair of glasses. She wasn't pretty but she wasn't ugly. Her demeanor wasn't too outstanding either. She was someone who would blend in with the crowd very well. That woman looked around the lobby. When she spotted Zhong Yi in the waiting area, her eyes were fully focused on him as she immediately walked over to them. Seeing this, Zhong Yi also stood up to greet her. Teacher Zhong, I've arrived. Bai Li outstretched her hand while still a distance away. Zhong Yi did not dare act high and mighty, so he also stretched out his hand and shook her hand. Hello. My name is Bai Li. Sister Bai. You don't have to be so polite. Just call me by my name. You don't have to be too polite with me either. Just call me John Yi. The two of them exchanged pleasantries. 
Zhong Yi could see that Bai Li took him very seriously and was also very polite about things. From the look in her eyes, she still seemed to be having doubt, possibly because she couldn't pinpoint the relationship between Chief Wu and Zhong Yi. At this moment, Su Hongyang and Wang Yi who were close by came up to them as well. They were also sizing up who this person Zhong Yi had called over was. They found nothing special about her since she looked and seemed too normal. It was as though she were a white-collar worker of some small company. It even felt like she was one of those ostracized staff in the company. Who is she? Is she capable? The two of them had their doubts, but it did not show on their faces. Su Hongyang shook hands with her. Hello, how should I address you? Bai Li smiled. My name is Bai Li. Zhong Yi introduced, this is my university teacher, Su Hongyang. Hello, teacher Su, Bai Li greeted. Zhong Yi presented, this is Wang He, my classmate. Bai Li gently smiled. Hello. While shaking hands with Bai Li, Wang He took the initiative and explained his situation. After all, this was all because of him. Sorry for troubling you this time. To explain things, I had a misunderstanding with one of the Hebei TV leads here. If you know him, perhaps you could help me explain. I've already heard about it. Bai Li gently nodded. Wang He could not grasp what she was planning. Then what is your view of this matter? Bai Li said calmly, follow me. I'll lead you upstairs. She patted Wang His shoulder. Wang He turned around to look at Zhong Yi and cast him a doubtful eye before following Bai Li. Zhong Yi also did not know how Bai Li would handle this, so he and Su Hongyang followed behind them. Actually, this was the first time that Zhong Yi had requested for help from someone. In the past, he had always handled all of his problems by himself. Outside the elevators, several of the security guards were alerted. Zhong Yi is here. Why is there another person with them now? They're coming over. Hurry. Quickly notify the chief. One of the younger security guards immediately used his walkie-talkie to call for his other colleagues. A lot of the other Hebei television staff who were in the lobby or passing by also looked over suddenly. The atmosphere over here had once again become tense. Who is she? A woman came and joined them. Why are they still trying to go upstairs? The people began whispering and pointing fingers. In the end, Bai Li brought Wang He with her and walked right up to the elevator. Several of the security guards hurriedly rushed over to the elevator door and said dutifully, please arrange for an appointment at the front desk before, but unexpectedly, Bai Li seemingly changed into another person at that moment. Her tone became sharper immediately. Where is Guan Yun Hai? The security guards were startled. Bai Li continued to say, where's Zhu Gang? Get him to come out here. Everyone was stunned. Zhu Gang? That was their second in command. She was calling him directly by his name. The security guards did not know how to respond as they looked at each other. Bai Li shouted, are they not going to come down here? They want to continue avoiding? Sure. I'll go upstairs to look for them. Turning to look at Wang He, she said, little brother, follow me. I'll see who dares stop me today. As she said that, Bai Li pressed the button for the elevator. Ding. The elevator door opened and she pulled Wang He inside and grandly stepped into it. Su Hongyang was quite startled as she quickly followed in as well. The several security guards were left stunned by Bai Li's imposing manner and did not stop them. When they returned to their senses, the elevator had already gone up. They all looked at one another before quickly informing their chief as they rushed to head upstairs via the stairways. When the other television station staff saw this, they also ran up, hoping to witness the commotion. On the second floor, the elevator stopped and the door opened. When they came out of the elevator, there were already a few television station staff members waiting for them outside. Quite a number of security guards also ran up here from the stairs. This floor was the office area. All of you, just as some of those staff were about to say something, they were shocked into silence by Bai Li's shouting. Bai Li aggressively yelled, who was it that didn't allow my little brother to enter the building just now? Ah? I would like to see which door we aren't allowed to enter. Is it this one? Bai Li went up to the door of an office and pushed it open. 
she did not bother to be polite and just entered when the door was opened. There was someone in there who was typing something on the computer. That person was dumbfounded and did not understand what was going on. By Lee T. Earned around and followed up by opening another door to the second office. Or is this where I can't enter? Inside, the employees who were working also stopped to look when they heard the commotion. The security guards were dumbfounded. Su Hongyang and Wang He were also dumbfounded. Damn. Who the hell is she? After going in a circle around the office as though there were no one there, she went out and pushed open a third door. Which door can I not enter? Is this the one? When the door opened, the voices of a Hebei television director discussing some matters with two other assistant directors came out. They were shocked. The doors on this floor were pushed open by Bai Li one after another. After she entered and circled around in each room, she would head to the next door. Finally, Bai Li pulled Wang He along and said, let's go. To the next floor. No one dared to stop her. No one dared to utter a word. This was the way of a person acting completely unreasonable. It was too shocking. Wasn't this just too fucking cool? Zhong Yi was also amused by this. Bai Li's style was very much to his liking. He immediately took a much greater liking to her. He did not sense this at first, but this person was obviously the same type as he was. Chapter 846, What's that bitchy dowager doing here? Third floor. Bai Li pulled Wang He along and led the others up as well. Wang He was furiously wiping away his sweat. Su Hongyang looked at Zhong Yi with her mouth agape and asked, what kinds of connections does your friend have? Zhong Yi smiled and replied, solid connections. Su Hongyang said in a speechless manner, does everyone you know have a temper like this? They followed close behind Bai Li and proceeded up to the third floor. By now, more and more people were gradually gathering to watch. The directors and hosts of the television station, the program team staff who were working, the security guards who followed behind, all of them were shocked by this scene and watched the commotion from a distance away. Some of the staff who currently working in their offices were also interrupted by Bai Li's forced entrance, and turned around to see what was going on with stunned faces and looks of confusion. After leaving the second floor, Bai Li started barging into the offices on the third floor. She went up to the door that was closest to her. Is this a door I can't enter? Let me have a look at what's inside. I want to know if there's something in there that should not be seen. The door opened. Three or four staff members working in the office stared with their mouths agape. Bai Li walked in brazenly while pulling Wang He along. Then they walked out very quickly and opened the next door. This was the door to a conference room which was soundproof and sealed off from the outside when the doors were closed. The people inside the room did not hear the commotion outside, so when they heard the sound of the door opening up, it shocked those who were holding a meeting inside. Before they could react, Bai Li had already casually walked in without a care dragging along Wang He. She shouted, which other doors are we not allowed to enter? No one answered her. No one dared to answer her. One door. Five doors. Ten doors. One by one, the doors were pushed open by Bai Li. On the fourth floor. In an office. A staff had rushed into the large office area to report about something. Chief Chen. Chief Chen, that person yelled in panic. Chief Chen was handling a contract discussion with someone when he heard that. He asked, what's the matter? Can't you see that I'm busy now? If there's anything, talk to me about it later. With so many things going on today. He had not had the time to do his work yet since he spent most of it just now dealing with those unimportant matters downstairs. But that person said, something has happened. Chief Chen asked impatiently, what happened this time? That person said, Wang He, Zhong Yi, and the others are making their way up. What? Chief Chen was furious. Didn't I instruct you people to hold them off? How could they have come upstairs then? That person quickly said, there was an unknown woman who arrived afterwards and acted extremely unreasonable. She addressed Director Guan and Director Ju directly by their names and made her way to the upper floors, entering every office she saw. Chief Chen said angrily, why isn't anyone stopping them? Don't they know that this is Director Guan's order? 
They can't be stopped. That person said, actually, no one has the courage to stop them. Sometimes, a person's bearing could really intimidate others. Like earlier when they were involved in a tussle with Su Hongyang and Wang He to chase them off, the moment Zhong Yi arrived and threw his sunglasses onto the ground angrily, everyone in the lobby completely fell silent. Similarly, Bai Li had such an imposing manner as well. Chief Chen said angrily, which floor are they on now? They're already on the third floor, that person answered. Let's go. Bring me to them. Chief Chen immediately gathered some staff from the office and headed downstairs angrily. Everyone, come with me. I want to see just what kind of a wave Wang he can make today. At the end of the corridor on the fourth floor. In an office. Guan Yunhai's secretary received a call. Secretary Lu. Little Chu, what's the matter? Something troublesome is happening downstairs. What's happening again now? A woman led Wang He along with the others and barged up. They pushed open all the office doors on the second and third floor one by one. The entire television station is in disarray. What did you say? Please come down quickly and have a look. On the third floor. The television station staff spectators had already exceeded 50 people. What's the situation? Who's that woman? Where are the heads? Quickly call the heads here. They've already been informed. That person is being too insolent. What exactly is going on? Don't you know? Wang He has returned. It's that host in turn from back then. I heard that they got into an argument downstairs and had a clash with our security. Secretary Liu and Chief Chen both had to go downstairs to stop them from entering while Zhong Yi arrived later. After that, the entire situation unraveled into what you're seeing now. To have someone barging in and causing such a great commotion, everyone looked quite mad. Let's call the police. What the hell is going on? I've never seen such unruly behavior before. Why didn't anyone stop them? They're stepping all over our heads. Amid the controversy, Bai Li still went about doing whatever she liked as she led Wang He to cause a ruckus in the television station. She did not give face to anyone as she continued pushing open every door that she came across. At this moment, some shouts could be heard coming from the crowd of onlookers. Chief Chen is here. Chief Chen. Great, the chief has arrived. Chief Chen, you're finally here. With one of the station's backbones arriving, everyone's spirit was lifted. After Chief Chen came down through the stairway, he immediately shouted, behaving atrociously at our station? Don't you know what place this is? What are you all trying to do? Are you trying to cause trouble? He went toward them with his group of people. Zhong Yi turned around and glanced at them. Su Hongyang also noticed them coming. Where are they? Where? Chief Chen yelled. A male staff member pointed and said, they're right at the front, Chief Chen. Bai Li heard the shouting coming from behind her. She turned around slowly to take a look. When the seething Chief Chen saw her, he was greatly shocked. He stopped dead in his tracks, and beads of sweat formed on his forehead. Bai Li looked at him and asked, who was the one who shouted just now? Chief Chen was sweating more and more profusely. Bai Li answered, it's me who is behaving atrociously here. What are you going to do about it? Chief Chen wiped the sweat off his forehead with his sleeve and immediately toned down his voice. Secretary, Secretary Bai. Why are you here? Everyone was dumbfounded. What was the matter with Chief Chen? Why did he suddenly wane like that? Secretary Bai? What Secretary Bai? Wang He was dumbfounded. Su Hongyang also looked stunned. No one could understand what was going on. Bai Li stared at Chief Chen and told him, don't worry about why I'm here. I'm asking you this now. It was me behaving atrociously in your station. What are you going to do about it? Chief Chen did not dare say a thing. He was nearly in tears now. Fuck, what else can I do about it? Suddenly, Guan Yunhai's secretary also arrived. Secretary Liu angrily led two security guards and rushed to the scene. It was a very serious matter that someone had come to the television station to make trouble, and even managed to find their way to the upper floors. 
he was about to report this to the police for them to deal with. Where are they? Who is, he saw by Lee and was stunned on the spot. Secretary, Secretary Bai? Secretary Liu was stunned. The curse words he was about to utter were forcefully swallowed back down. Then, his face turned pale and he started to sweat too. Holy shit. Why is it her? What's that bitchy dowager doing here? Chapter 847, The SARFT Search Warrant Everyone fell silent. The department heads were shocked. The director's secretary was shocked. Naturally, all the other staff of the television station did not dare make a sound either. It was clear that these two leaders knew who the woman was. Moreover, even an idiot could tell that this woman was no ordinary person. Otherwise, Chief Chen and Secretary Liu could not possibly just keep quiet like this after she had caused such a ruckus in the television station. Who on earth was she? What sort of background does she have? Bai Li looked at Secretary Liu and said, were you yelling at me just now? Secretary Liu panicked and replied, no, no. Bai Li stared at him for a while and said, you look a little familiar. Secretary Liu explained nervously, during the meeting at SARFT headquarters last month, I, went along with Director Guan. And back when I was stationed at Hebei, I, I also had the honor of meeting you. Secretary Liu was also a secretary. But when comparing his status as a secretary to her status as a secretary, they were on a completely different level. Besides, as veterans of Hebei Television who had worked here for many years, they often came into contact with those from the higher management and would therefore know of this bitchy dowager's other identity. A program director of Hebei Television who was in the crowd also recognized by Lee. He did not say anything as he knew that he shouldn't be making himself stand out in such a situation. It was better for him to keep as far away as possible for now. Bai Li was someone most people would probably not know about. Even for most of the hosts, directors, or people working in the television industry, they were unlikely to know her due to the difference in their statuses. But for anyone who had ever come into contact with the higher management of the industry, they would definitely know who Bai Li was. She was the secretary of Chief Wu from the SARFT. More importantly, Bai Li was the niece of the head of Hebei Television, the daughter of their station head's elder brother. Back then, when Bai Li was situated in Hebei, she could do whatever she wanted at Hebei Television. As long as it were those veterans who had worked for more than 10 years at Hebei Television headquarters, they should all have a deep impression of this bitchy dowager. Bai Li glanced at the two of them but did not say any more. Then she held out her hand to pull the stunned Wang He along with her. Let's go to the next floor. Chief Chen did not dare speak. Crying inside, Secretary Liu bolstered himself and said, Secretary Bai. But Bai Li did not even bother with him and just headed upstairs. The television station's building had four levels. On this level were the offices of the department heads and conference rooms. However, Bai Li did not care about this as she continued to push open the doors. Let's see, which door am I not allowed to enter? Is it this one? She opened another door. This one? She opened the third door. Or this one? She barged into the fourth door. How about this one? Then, Bai Li stood still in the hallway. After looking around for a little while, she shouted, My little brother came here to settle his issues. Teacher Zhong Yi is also here today. But they can't even enter the building? You're not even giving any face to our teacher Zhong? What bullshit is this? It was only when everyone had heard this that they realized that from the very start, even though this woman kept calling Wang He, little brother, it was just a polite form of address. In actual fact, she was here for Zhong Yi. Secretary Liu quickly said, Secretary Bai, no, that's not true at all. Bai Li stared at him and questioned, then tell me, how is it not true? Secretary Liu was at a loss for words. Chief Chen tried to say, please calm down, Secretary Bai. This might just be a misunderstanding. Secretary Liu repeated, yes, yes, it's just a misunderstanding. A misunderstanding? Bai Li shook her head and replied, I don't think this is a misunderstanding. Where is your director Guan? Director Guan. Chief Chen was about to answer but stopped short of saying anything. We're not sure either. Secretary Liu immediately answered, also, I haven't seen Director Guan today. 
Zhong Yi looked at him and remarked, didn't you just say that Guan Yunhai was busy working upstairs? Didn't you say that he was not free to see us? Why did it change to his not here now? Secretary Lu. Bai Li looked at her watch and said to them, I still have a meeting to attend at SARFT, so I will wait for 10 minutes. Saying that, she opened an office door and said, Teacher Zhong, Teacher Su, let's go in and sit down while we wait. She seemed to be treating this place like her own home, although it was indeed almost no different from her own home anyway since her uncle was the station head. If Bai Li could do whatever she wanted at Hebei Television headquarters, would it matter at a branch located in Beijing? Su Hongyang and Wang He hesitated. But Zhong Yi did not worry about courtesy since he was a troublemaker to begin with. He walked in grandly and took a seat for himself. Teacher Zhong, how many more episodes of A Bite of China will there be? Bai Li smiled. Zhong Yi happily said, around 10 more episodes. It should be scheduled to finish broadcasting before the Chinese New Year. Bai Li mentioned, oh right, we don't have each other's numbers yet, right? Zhong Yi nodded. That's right. Let's exchange numbers. Bai Li said, here, this is my number. Okay, I've saved it. If something like this happens again, you can immediately call me up. The two of them started to chat as though no one else was around. Elsewhere. Someone was currently on the phone. Director Guan. Something bad has happened. Bai Li is here. She led Wang He and Zhong Yi upstairs and pushed open all the doors of the offices and conference rooms as well. Bai Li? That Bai Li? Yes, it's station head Bai's niece. What? Why is she here? She, she seems to have been called over by Zhong Yi. Why would Zhong Yi know her? I don't know either. They're on the fourth floor now and Secretary Bai is demanding to see you. Secretary Liu did not know what to do, so he quickly got me to call and inform you. What do you think we should do now? Where did you say I was? Secretary Liu said that he didn't know whether you were in the office or not. MHM, that's fine then. I understanding what's happening now. After Guan Yunhai hung up, his expression changed several times. He never expected for this matter to actually put Bai Li on alert. The others were mainly shocked by Bai Li because she was the station head's niece, but Guan Yunhai was not concerned about that as his relationship with station head Bai was rather good. They were not extremely close, but were still able to talk to each other fairly well. He believed that station head Bai would not touch him without any valid reason just because his niece had said something. But what left Guan Yunhai so fearful was her other identity. She was the secretary of that chief Wu. This was the most crucial factor. Just why did Bai Li come here? Just how close was her relationship with Zhong Yi? Just how much authority could she support Zhong Yi with? Guan Yunhai was not sure about the answers to these questions. He kept smoking while he thought over the entire situation at a very fast pace. Eventually, he made a decision. As he stubbed out his cigarette, he decided that he would not show himself and acted as if he did not know anything at all. If Bai Li was going to cause trouble, then let her cause trouble. He would just not show himself. If I don't show myself, what can you do about it? Are you going to come here every day and make trouble? However, Guan Yunhai could not have expected that this decision of his was going to be a fatal one. On the fourth floor. Ten minutes has passed. Everyone was accompanying Bai Li and waiting for Guan Yunhai. They all looked incredibly uneasy, especially Chief Chen and Secretary Liu. No matter what, the two of them couldn't escape from here and had to sit around and wait. At this moment, Bai Li spoke, it's been ten minutes. Secretary Liu hastily said, Secretary Bai, Director Guan is, there's no need to say anything. I fully understand. Bai Li's face sank as she walked to a corner while taking out her cell phone and making a call. Nobody knew who she was calling. Secretary Liu, Chief Chen, and the others all looked at one another. Where's Director Guan? I guess he's prepared to not show himself. Then what should we do? Let's just hang around for a little while. What else can we do? They were talking in the softest voices possible as they did not dare to speak loudly. However, just a few minutes later, a statement suddenly arrived that caught everyone off guard.
and even made everyone break out into cold sweat. SARFT Disciplinary Notice The SARFT Party Committee and the Commission for Discipline Inspection have received a report regarding Hebei Television's Guan Yun Hai for suspected misbehavior that has seriously violated the organization's disciplinary code. The Hebei Television Production Department Party Committee branch will be dealt with severely according to the relevant provisions. Chief Chen was dumbfounded. Secretary Liu was dumbfounded. Even Wang He and Su Hongyang were dumbfounded as well. Commission for Discipline Inspection? And the order was even issued directly by the SARFT? Su Hongyang and many of those watching basically had no idea about the status of Bai Li. Therefore, when they heard about this news, they couldn't react for a while. Who was this woman? Why does she wield such great power? Meanwhile, Guan Yun Hai who was hiding somewhere in the station was also stunned. Why? How is that possible? The SARFT and Commission for Discipline Inspection are going to investigate me? Back then, everyone at the television station branch knew about the affair between Guan Yun Hai and his lover. After all, it was such a big case that some people had leaked the news as well. But he had never thought that someone would risk reporting him to the authorities. Even if it were reported, it should have been reported a year ago. Why would they wait until now to do it? Immediately, Guan Yun Hai understood where the crux of the problem lay. He knew that he had committed a mistake, a very grave mistake. Bai Li's relationship with Zhong Yi was even closer than what he had thought. Bai Li was not using her uncle's title as her backing this time. She was handling the matter on behalf of the SARFT. She was working for Chief Wu. Guan Yun Hai turned pale and felt his legs turn to rubber. He had completely misunderstood Bai Li's status today. He thought it would be fine if he just avoided her for a while. He thought that it would be good enough if Bai Li just helped her friends vent their anger today. But it turned out to be more complicated than he had believed. Bai Li was here today in her capacity as Chief Wu's secretary. Shit. Chapter 848, The Dust Settles. When the news got out, the entire station was in disarray. Is, is that real? Director Guan is going to be investigated? It's over. Something big is going to happen. Something really big is going to happen. What do you mean by is going to? It's already happened. Isn't that too soon? They're really taking action immediately after they said that they would? Just who has Director Guan offended? And who is that person Wang he brought with him? Someone staging a comeback. Why would all this happen if it was just about Wang his work profile? Yes. It was exactly this small thing in which Guan Yun Hai had shut out Wang He from getting any television station work, that had turned into something much bigger and something no one could have expected. For Guan Yun Hai and many others, this was just a matter of no importance. With Guan Yun Hai's status in the industry, whatever he said was the final word. What waves could a lowly Wang He make to trouble him? If Guan Yun Hai wanted to quash him, then he would be quashed, if he wanted him out of his sight, then he wouldn't be able to appear anymore. All of that power and authority were in Guan Yun Hai's hands. However, now that someone with an even greater authority than Guan Yun Hai had appeared, the situation was suddenly reversed. It also went without saying that the same methods that Guan Yun Hai employed against Wang He could be used on him. If you used your authority to silence others, then you better be prepared that you'll be quashed in the same way someday. If you play the game, you have to be prepared to be played too. A few minutes later, Guan Yun Hai who had been missing all this while magically appeared on the fourth floor and stood in front of Bai Li, Zhong Yi, and the others. He was truly panicking this time. Director Guan. Director Guan. Secretary Liu and Chief Chen did not know what to do. The two of them could only feel a sense of anxiety at this moment. If Director Guan were investigated, it might even drag them down along with him. For example, money problems? Secretary Liu and Chief Chen likely would not be able to clear themselves from any of it. It would be a domino effect, so if Director Guan fell, it would surely be the end of them as well. Guan Yun Hai didn't bother with them and just walked straight up to Bai Li, Lily, what's going on here? When did you arrive? Why didn't you give Uncle Guan a call since you were coming here? 
you could have let me know in advance so that I could reserve a table at a good restaurant and have a nice chat with you. When Bai Li was younger, she had met Guan Yun Hai several times, so they actually did know each other personally. Bai Li looked at him and said very calmly, I was here since a long time ago. Guan Yun Hai played dumb and stated, I was out on an errand just now and no one informed me of your visit. Bai Li said, I don't know about that then. Guan Yun Hai replied, I've just received the message. Why is there going to be people coming from the Commission for Discipline Inspection? WH what is going on? Lily, is there a misunderstanding somewhere? Bai Li shrugged. I was looking for you earlier, but you weren't around. Therefore, from now on, this problem will no longer be under my jurisdiction. It doesn't matter what you tell me anymore. She looked at Zhong Yi and said, Teacher Zhong, let's go then? Sure. Zhong Yi stood up. Bai Li said politely, You first. Please, you first, Zhong Yi also spoke politely. Guan Yun Hai was getting nervous. Lily, Lily. Bai Li did not turn around. Guan Yun Hai desperately said, Wang He, little Wang. Wang He looked at him, not knowing how to react. Guan Yun Hai quickly said, We might have had some misunderstandings between us back then, so why don't we? Bai Li interjected, Let's go, little brother. Wang He nodded and followed. Guan Yun Hai was dumbfounded then and there, drenched in cold sweat. He knew it was over for him. If the Commission for Discipline Inspection were to investigate him, he would not be able to get away. Why did it become like this? Just why did it become like this? Guan Yun Hai was deeply regretful. If he had not taken out his anger on Wang He back then, if he had allowed Wang He and the others to come into the building today, or even made an appearance when Bai Li arrived and asked for him, then he might still have a chance at making things right. However, he had missed all those chances, so there were no more IFS, ands, or buts about it. At the main entrance of the television station, Bai Li and the others were just leaving when staff from the Commission for Discipline Inspection arrived. Bai Li had already fulfilled her role in this issue. She had given a chance to Guan Yun Hai by causing a ruckus here, but Guan Yun Hai insisted on not coming out to meet them, so there was nothing more she could do. Even if it weren't Chief Wu's instructions, Guan Yun Hai was in the wrong to begin with. If you were at fault by having an affair first and then creating such a big mess out of it, even venting your anger on Wang He as a result, then when Zhong Yi led his people here to talk it out, you shouldn't have not given him face or blocked him from entering. What did you say to them? Unauthorized persons are prohibited to enter? Outsiders are not allowed into the premises? All right then, since you want to conduct everything so officially, then I can only handle this matter as business on my side. If you want to fool around and have affairs, then what else can you say now that you've been exposed? Downstairs. Bai Li said, the problem is resolved, so I think it's time for me to get back as well. Wang He shook Bai Li's hand and said, thank you. I've really troubled you today. You came all the way to specially handle this matter for me. Can I buy you lunch or something? Bai Li shook her head and smiled. Don't worry about it. Perhaps another time. You're little Wang, right? This is just a small issue, so you don't have to thank me. Guan Yun Hai will have a taste of his own medicine from today on. He won't be able to find trouble with you anymore, so you can just go and look for a job without worries. If that's still a problem, just look for Teacher Zhong and get him to contact me. I'll arrange something for you. You may choose from any television stations across the country, just let me know where you're interested in working at and it'll be arranged. Even if you still prefer to stay at Hebei Television for work, that's fine too. I can't speak for other television stations, but if you just mention my name here at Hebei TV, I'm very sure no one would dare to find trouble with you. Those were very strong words. But Bai Li was really qualified to claim so. Wang He felt sincerely grateful and thanked her, thank you, Sister Bai. I'll settle the issues of my work by myself. As long as Guan Yun Hai is not blocking me, I'm confident of my own abilities. That's good then. Bai Li laughed and said, I think you'd do well too. Zhong Yi also laughed, Sister Bai, thank you for today. When Bai Li spoke to Zhong Yi, she did so with a sense of politeness. Teacher Zhong, please don't say that. I'm just doing what I should. 
This is just a small problem. There's no need to thank me for it. There's still a meeting at the office and the head is waiting for me. I won't be staying around any longer then. John Yi smiled and mentioned, Sure, let's have dinner together someday. Sure, that won't be a problem. By Lee reminded, I'll say again, if something like this happens again in the future, just contact me directly. I'll resolve it for you. Today's case was a bit of an exception since it wasn't a problem that John Yi could have handled directly. It was only because of this that he had to look for old Wu. He also did not wish to trouble secretary by this way again, even though she said it was fine. So Zhong Yi simply agreed, okay. Then let me see you off. Did you drive here? Don't bother. My car is parked just beside the road. Bai Li said goodbye to Su Hongyang then immediately got into her car and drove off. The moment secretary Bai left, the three of them spoke much more freely. Wang He looked at Zhong Yi. Zhong -er, I won't say too much, but I owe you one this time. Ha, come on. Zhong Yi said amused, what do you mean you owe me? When have you ever been so polite with me even when we were in university? Wang He also laughed. You've really helped me big time, so I have to be a little polite no matter what. Besides, this issue of mine must have made you owe others a big favor as well, right? Zhong Yi shook his head and replied, not really. Old Wu was his girlfriend, so there wasn't any owing of favors there. Since Bai Li was Old Wu's secretary, then coming here to help Old Wu resolve some problems was within the scope of her job. Zhong Yi definitely had Bai Li to thank, but he didn't owe her that big of a favor. Wang Yi said as he looked at the tail lights of secretary Bai's car, your friend's connections are really damn solid. Zhong Yi vaguely responded, I guess so. Wang Yi didn't know whether to laugh or cry. I've never seen such a show of force like today's before. Sister Bai didn't seem like much when she just got here, because she was just like any other normal person who didn't look or feel prominent. But who could have guessed she'd end up being such a powerful person, able to stun everyone into submission with just her shouting. No one dared to stop her and just let her push open the doors one by one. I felt as though all of my anger has been vented. She was basically causing a ruckus as she liked. Su Hongyang glanced at Zhong Yi and said, What does that secretary Bai do? Zhong Yi said, Something along the lines of being their overseeing authority. From the SARFT? Su Hongyang asked. Zhong Yi affirmed tersely. Su Hongyang continued asking, From the way she spoke, it seems like secretary Bai is also related to the head of her Bay TV. It even sounds like they're very close relatives. Zhong Yi shrugged. That I don't know about. Su Hongyang looked Zhong Yi up and down, then said, You're surviving well in this industry now, eh? Seems like you know quite a lot people as well. If I meet with any trouble in the future, I'll definitely come and look for you. Zhong Yi heartily said, For sure. Anything that concerns you concerns me. Wang Yi beckoned with a hand, Come on, let's go. It's my treat today. Let's have something to drink. What, were you expecting me to treat? Let's go. Zhong Yi laughed. Wang Yi smirked. Do you have to find fault with everything that I say? Zhong Yi said, of course. Wang Yi. Su Hongyang laughed, you too. When he got home at night. It was only when Zhong Yi called Wu Zuching that he found out about Bai Li's other status. She actually turned out to be the niece of the head of Hebei Television. It was no wonder she could behave as she wanted on their premises. Secretary Bai has a good temperament, Zhong Yi praised. Old Wu laughed. She's quite similar to you, right? Zhong Yi acknowledged, quite. Old Wu said, but she's not as hot-headed as you. At least within the organization, she still behaves as she should, unlike you who keeps lighting fires everywhere you go. It's as though you feel there's a lack of people getting offended by you. If I did not send Little Bai over today, I was afraid that you would have gotten physical with them, ha ha. It was a little cold outside. Zhong Yi sniffed and said, you're thinking too much about what I might do. Old Wu said, it's cold out. Put on more clothes. I know. Are you still wearing just that jacket of yours again? How did you know? Don't be smug. You might catch a cold and fall sick. It's not as if you're an idol, so why are you so worried about letting others see you wear that? 
Put on a down jacket when you get back. I will. Chapter 849, John Yee's talk at Media College. The next day. There were rumors on the internet. Weibo gossip number 5, John Yee makes a huge commotion at Hebei Television. Someone has exposed that John Yee brought some people with him to Hebei Television's Beijing production department yesterday, and made a commotion there. It sent their entire workplace into chaos with many involved in the conflict and even leading to an investigation on a head of a department. The trigger for this case is still unknown, with questions posed to those working at the facility not being answered as they stay tight-lipped on the matter. This piece of news did not attract too much attention. First off, compared to Zhang Yi's previous incidents, this was just a small thing that would not register a blip on most people's radar. It was not a headline that was as attractive as a documentary helmed by him that had swept the entire country's viewership ratings. Secondly, this news was also unconfirmed and served more as a rumor. Even the mainstream media did not report on this news, with only that Weibo account's revelations the source of it. Therefore, the veracity of this news was taken with a pinch of salt. However, there were still some people who paid attention to it. Teacher Zhang has stirred up trouble again? I wonder if it is real or not. I think it should be real. A guy like Zhang Yi is really capable of doing such a thing. I guess it must be someone who has provoked him again. Don't we all know what Zhang Yi is like by now? He has always done things according to his own set of rules. It's impossible that he would go and cause a commotion at another television station for no reason. I also trust teacher Zhang's character. I like him so much. Previous poster, does Zhang Yi have any character at all? Suddenly, a few industry insiders also voiced their opinions. For some reason, an old host who had already retired suddenly made a comment. It seems like there's no bottom line for young people these days. How can there be so many people supporting someone like Zhang Yi? He can even be proclaimed as an artist by his bunch of braindead fans. Since when has the title of artist gone for so cheap? Since when did the Golden Microphone Awards give out their trophies so casually? A person like that can get the highest honor in the television hosting industry? He can get the highest honor in the academic awards too. And even win two of the highest awards for two television shows? What a joke! Are the judges these days treating awards like a child's game? Are the common folk all idiots these days? Some of the netizens were having none of it. Fuck, what the heck are you saying? Who's the brain dead one? Does that mean only you can be an artist? What kind of works have you produced in the first place? I've watched the shows you hosted. It was all just lousy entertainment to satisfy yourself. Who the hell would bother watching it? If you think someone is good, you say that he is an artist, but if you don't like them, they're not an artist. What kind of logic is that? Based on what do you think you can control what us commoners like? I just fucking want to like John Yi. I just fucking think that John Yi is an artist. Can you do anything about me? When this old host gave his criticism, a lot of people jumped out to critique John Yi as well. Crosstalk comedian Tang Da Zhang's Weibo, I will never ever admit that a person like John Yi is an artist. He's too vulgar and undisciplined. Someone from a television station, I've been wanting to say this for a long time, but I also think that it's just the common folk who are supporting him and find him to be good. But if you were to ask any industry insider, which one of them would admit that he's an artist? He can fool the people, but the true measure of an artist is still set by the industry insiders. Only an industry peer would know whether a person is truly qualified to be called an artist or not, so what would a layman know? The attacks on Zhang Yi were trickling in. Later that morning, Zhang Yi also saw those comments, but did not even bother with them. He was already used to having peers scold him every other day. It might even get uncomfortable if there wasn't any criticism. After he finished breakfast, he put on a down jacket and sent Chen Chen to school before heading to Media College. At the university, the moment he arrived, Su Hongyang found him. Little Zhang. Ari, teacher Su. There will be a broadcasting lecture later. Since you've just been employed by the school, I think it's appropriate for you to make an appearance. The school has already discussed it. They won't wait for next year to present you to everyone, so it'll be done today instead. It'll be a chance for you to greet everyone and officially meet them for the first time. 
Are you fine with that? Yep. Great. What time? 9 a.m.? We'll set aside 10 minutes for you to give a talk. Sure. When teacher Shui who was right next to them heard this, she came up to them smiling. It's the first talk by Professor Zhong. I should go and listen in too, Su Hongyang chuckled, whoever's free, let's all go together. It's also a show of support for little Zhong. A female teacher agreed, sure. An associate professor also agreed, count me in. There was also a broadcasting teacher who said, I heard that when teacher Zhong gave his lectures at Peking University, no one ever skipped a class of his. In fact, in every class he gave, there weren't even enough seats since students from other faculties would come and crash the class. It's obvious that teacher Zhong is very good at teaching, so I'm really looking forward to it. Zhong Yi replied humbly, it's only a meeting session with the students. Please don't flatter me like that. Very quickly, news of the talk spread to everyone. Teacher Zhong is giving a talk today. It's at the lecture hall, do you want to go? Of course we have to go. I'm a braindead fan of his. I'm going too. It's such a rare opportunity. Why are you guys still talking about it? Hurry up and go to the lecture hall to reserve your seats. But I doubt there are any seats left anyways. The students from the School of Directing and School of Acting are going too. Ah? Then we better hurry up. The students quickly ran over upon hearing the news. From freshmen to sophomores, even the upperclassmen. All of them went to attend the talk. Media College. Lecture Hall 1. When Zhong Yi, Su Hongyang, Teacher Shui, and the rest of the others arrived, they were all startled by what they saw. The first thing they felt when they reached the hall was that it was way too active here. There were crowds of people gathered at the lecture hall in trance as they formed lines and tried to get in. Stop pushing. Damn it, is there no more space? School of Acting Majors. What are you guys doing here? Teacher Zhong has acted in movies before. Can't we come and get some pointers? Wow. John Yi is here. It's John Yi. Look, quick. Ayo, I finally got to see him in real life. How handsome. Some of Media College's female students even screamed due to their excitement. For a B-list celebrity to have this sort of charm was no surprise at all. When a number of teachers saw this, they knew that the talk would be cancelled if it went on like this so they quickly went up to maintain the order. After 10 minutes, they managed to control the situation and got everyone settled inside the lecture hall. At this moment, the entire lecture hall was filled with people, in the aisles and even in the hallways outside it. Su Hongyang, teacher Shui, and a few other staff members from the School of Broadcasting did not want to take the seats from the students, so they just stood around near the doors. The head of Media College's academic affairs was here. The Dean of the School of Broadcasting was here. Finally, a Vice President of Media College also entered the lecture hall with a smile. Clearly, the school's authority had placed a significant importance on this first talk that Zhong Yi was going to give after his appointment. The most important reason they had for inviting Zhong Yi to join was exactly because they knew he had the capability and charisma to attract people. Staff from the school's Office of Public Affairs also came along, carrying their camcorders into the hall. At this moment, Su Hongyang went up on stage and held a microphone to announce, Students, please quiet down. Let us now invite Associate Professor Zhong Yi up on stage. Zhong Yi walked onto the stage and took the microphone from her. Thank you, Teacher Su. Su Hongyang smiled and went back down. Although Zhong Yi's talk was arranged on short notice, she never worried that Zhong Yi would not be able to do well. Clearing his throat, Zhong Yi smiled and said, Hello, students. This was immediately followed by a round of enthusiastic applause. Zhong Yi said, I'm very honored to be standing here today and even more honored to be here as a teacher of Media College. Everyone should know that I was also a student of Media College a few years back. Therefore, being able to take an appointment here, or to say it better, being able to come back here, feels like a homecoming. Even though I've been working for the past two years, I feel as though I have never really left this place. This is where I belong and I will never be able to leave it in my entire lifetime. The students applauded again. 
When Su Hongyang and some of the other teachers and administrators heard this, they also nodded and clapped. Zhang Yi continued, I only came here to have an official face-to-face -face meeting with everyone, but I did not expect it to be so grand. I feel really flattered by this. I believe everyone already knows that I will be a teacher at the School of Broadcasting starting today. You may address me as Teacher Zhang, Zhang Yi, or even Senior Zhang. We're all family, so there's no need to be overly courteous with me. I'm not rigid about things like that. In the audience. A student heckler shouted, can we call you old Zhong then? Zhong Yi replied, sure you can. Everyone laughed. Zhong Yi looked at his watch and said, we have six, seven minutes left, and I've said all that I needed to. Why don't we have a Q&A session for the rest of the time? What does everyone want to know about? You may ask anything about the classes or even the arts. Since it's our first meeting today, I'll be more casual about it. When they heard that, more than a dozen people immediately raised their hands. There was even someone who stood up to raise their hand while jumping up and down. Zhong Yi just randomly pointed to the person who raised their hand the highest. That student in the tenth row, furthest to the left. Yes, you. That person said excitedly, hello, senior. What classes will you be teaching us in the future? Will you be around every day? Can we look for you at any time if we have problems? Zhong Yi smiled and said, I've been brooding over it every day, but the classes will definitely be related to broadcasting. If there's a chance, I'll give my email address to everyone to submit their questions to. I'll try to reply to them one by one if I have the time to do so. Countless hands shot up again after that. Zhong Yi picked another person. You, please. It was a third year student. Professor Zhong, I'm from the School of Directing. Will you only be teaching at the School of Broadcasting? Will you be teaching any directing courses? Almost every one of us have watched The Voice and A Bite of China and we would really like to learn from you, so I'd like to know if there'll be a chance to do that. Zhong Yi looked into the audience. This would have to depend on the administrator's approval. I haven't received any news about this yet, but if there's a chance to do so, I would love to share my experiences with everyone. One by one, they asked questions. The atmosphere was really good, but time was almost up. So Zhong Yi said, let's have the last question then. Let me see, okay, how about this student here? He pointed at a girl. That girl pushed up her glasses and hurriedly asked, Teacher Zhong, I saw on Weibo this morning that quite a few industry veterans were criticizing you. They claim that you were not qualified to be called an artist and that you've strayed off the artistic path. I'd like to know, what do you think being an artist should be about? If someone with your sorts of results and contributions still doesn't make you an artist, then what would? When we all graduate, which path should we take? And how should we proceed? What if we keep getting ignored by the industry insiders, then what? John Yi looked at her. That's a rather deep question. Everyone perked up their ears to listen. They also wanted to know how John Yi would answer this sensitive question. Thinking for a bit, Zhong Yi suddenly remembered those words that Guo Di Gang from his previous world had said. He laughed as he recited, then I'll use the simplest of ways to answer you. Actually, what is an artist? Whoever lives the longest is an artist. In a group of 100 peers, if they all scold and curse at you, then all you have to do is to outlive the 99 of them and you will be the artist. When Tomb Sweeping Day comes around, you can stand at their graves and sing them a song of Sayonara. This explanation of being an artist by Zhong Yi dumbfounded the hundreds of students in the audience. Scolding and cursing? Whoever lives the longest. Outlive the 99 of them? Stand at their graves during tomb sweeping day? And sing a song of Sayonara? Pfft! One of the students started to burst out laughing. Then followed by a second, a third, and a tenth. Ha 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 ha! Ayo, teacher Zhong is so sarcastic. One of the teachers nearly fainted on the spot. Su Hongyang face palmed. Teacher Shui. Media College's head of academic affairs. Media College's vice president. These words sounded really powerful, yet simultaneously also felt very wicked. Weren't you just speaking seriously a while ago? Why did it take just a few lines for you show your true colors? 
Many of the media college teachers and administrators didn't know whether to laugh or cry when they heard this. They suddenly started worrying if inviting this guy here to be a teacher was really going to be fine. Just how many people would he offend on behalf of media college? Chapter 850, Invitation to the Spring Festival Gala? On the same day, John Yee's talk at Media College was uploaded. The official website of Media College also posted a video clip of the talk. It was a way of promotion for the school, especially in this time when the entrance exam was being held. It was a big boost to them that Zhong Yi had chosen to join their institution, but of course, the last question that Zhong Yi had answered was edited out by the Office of Public Affairs as it should not be made public at all. But with so many students and teachers attending the talk earlier, there would surely be someone who recorded it with their phones. This incident was definitely not something that could be covered up. Captioned version. Full version. Graphical presentation version. They all appeared like mushrooms sprouting after the rain. Then I will use the simplest of ways to answer you. Actually, what is an artist? Whoever lives the longest is an artist. In a group of 100 peers, if they all scold and curse at you, then all you have to do is to outlive the 99 of them and you would be the artist. When tomb sweeping day comes around, you can stand at their graves and sing them a song of sayonara. The views on these videos were exponentially rising. A lot of netizens were having such a good laugh at it. No wonder he's in crawlstalk. Yeah, John Yi's mouth is hilariously sarcastic. Sayonara? Ayo, hey I died from laughter. This sort of scolding has totally moved to a new level. That line will become a classic. It's something that only Zhong Yi could come up with. This interpretation of what makes an artist is super cool. Ha 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 ha. This terrible nature of Zhong Yi is what I like most about him. Answering to the verbal criticism of him by a bunch of older veteran industry insiders and peers, Zhong Yi had come up with this response to them. You guys said that he would never, ever be qualified enough to be an artist. But being young, he would almost definitely outlive all of you. When you're all dead and unmoving, none of you will be able to criticize him anymore. At that time, wouldn't he then become an artist? Who could still doubt and criticize him then? At that time, he could just sing whatever he liked in front of any one of your graves. You can bully the old, but not the young. John Yi used the most wicked of ways to beautifully epitomize those words. To a lot of John Yi's own fans, this was a justifiable retort and a reasonable counterattack. But to those who had criticized him earlier, this was undoubtedly a provocation and disrespect for the veterans. All of a sudden, another large wave of scolding battles started again. All at once, the industry voices were calling out and denouncing Zhong Yi one after another. Insolence. How extremely insolent. Strip him of his golden microphone award. He's totally disrespecting all of the industry veterans. In the blink of an eye. It was already New Year's Day. The new year had begun with a wave of scolding aimed at Zhong Yi, but on this same day, Zhong Yi had advanced yet another spot in the B-list celebrity rankings. His position had risen again. After winning a few of the highest awards, and with a bite of China's continued popularity in the broadcasts, Zhong Yi's award acceptance speeches and his talk at Media College both helped to push his popularity higher. This was a period of time where Zhong Yi was experiencing a major rise in his popularity with the continuous coverage of him and his news through shows, TV, the news, internet, and many other outlets, all of which contributed to a stacking effect toward his popularity score. At this moment in time, nobody and no criticisms could stop the continued rise of Zhong Yi's popularity. Even if he did not do anything else and just laid around at home, his popularity would still continue to increase by the day. From morning, Zhong Yi was kept busy with answering calls. From an old colleague, Teacher Zhong, Happy New Year. Thank you. It's been a while. We should catch up over lunch someday. Sure, let's contact each other again about this. We can either eat at home or out, anything's fine. Then, a call from Ha Chichi. Director Zhong, have a wonderful new year. Happy New Year to you, Sister Ha. What are you busy with? Hi, I'm just sitting at home. I haven't been up to anything for the past two days except for going online and scolding people. You're still arguing with them? 
wasn't that incident from a few days ago? They keep pestering me with their scolding, but since I'm bored with nothing to do at home, why should I just do nothing about it? So I scolded them back. It's good practice, anyway, for a better year at work. Damn, I really give it to you. You're such a warrior. Ah? Am I? Of course. You always get spirited whenever it comes to scolding people. Next was a call from his other assistant director, Zhang Zui. Director Zhang, happy new year to you and your family. And the same to you. What are you doing? Are at home making your dinner meal? Of course not, I'm at the office clocking overtime today. Oh. Didn't I give everyone a break? And it's January 1st today too, so there shouldn't be any overtime? It's because there isn't enough manpower for the Spring Festival Gala, so a lot of departments sent their people over to help out. It was actually Old Ha who was supposed to go, but I saw that she was a little tired lately, so I volunteered in her stead. There's still over a month to go, but the rehearsals for the Spring Festival Gala has already started. There's so many things going on around, so it's kinda busy here. Who's the director this year? The director is Xiao Hu, same as last year. What about Central TV Department 1 Shu Yipeng? Didn't they say that he had a high chance of becoming the director for this year's gala? He's still the assistant director but his is a hopeless case now. Don't you know yet? Rise to the Dance's recent viewership ratings have dropped below 1%. The show's popularity keeps falling and it's proven that even if Central TV tries to push him up, he still doesn't have your ability. Oh yeah, Chen Yi is still the Spring Festival Gala host this year. The host positions have now maintained status quo for the past three gala events already and still have not been refreshed. But there's been a change to the director for the language performances segment. I guess they're looking to make some changes to the show's presentation, since I've heard the new director was asking around to see if he could invite you and teacher Yao Jinsai to perform a crosstalk. But his suggestion was immediately shot down by someone in the management when he suggested that. The rumors are that if it were only Yao Jinsai, it would be fine, but anything that was broadcast live must not have you in it. HMPH, no wonder the Spring Festival Gala is getting worse and worse by the year. If they continue on this way, there won't be any viewers left at all. Listening to Zhongs were ramble on for the longest time, Zhong Yi finally got a much better understanding about the situation concerning this year's Central TV Spring Festival Gala. Actually, he already knew that he had no chance of appearing on this year's Spring Festival Gala. Since he had taken Central TV to court and fell out with Central TV Department 1, what chances would he still have? He was long since prepared for this, so he did not concern himself much with the ongoings for the event. Now that he heard the update from Zhong Zui, it seemed like this year's Spring Festival Gala would be rather vibrant too. After hanging up, Zhong Yi also made a few calls himself. He gave a call to Hu Fei. He gave a call to Yang Qianfei. He also made some calls to his old bosses to offer them his New Year greetings. Later in the afternoon, his relatives started arriving. Zhong Yi went out to welcome them. Yo, first uncle, first aunt, second uncle, third uncle, third aunt. His first uncle laughed and said, Little Yi, whoa, you became even more handsome. Zhong Yi said with a laugh, not bad, right? Brother. His three sisters rushed into the house altogether. They had all rented a car together and were helping their grandma and grandpa over. Zhong Yi waved at them. Everyone has arrived? Then he quickly went forward to greet his grandparents. Grandma, Grandpa. Their family's youngest generation only had one boy, and now that he had grown up to become such a superstar, Zhong Yi's maternal grandma was very happy to see him. Ari, little Yi, come quickly and let Grandma have a look at you. Zhong Yi smiled and said, Look all you like, Grandma. His grandma held on to Zhong Yi and did not let him go as she kept talking to him. His mother said, we already said that we would go over to your place instead since it's so inconvenient for you two to come so far. Isn't it troublesome? His grandpa chuckled and replied, that wouldn't do. Who doesn't know that there's a celebrity in our family now? All of our neighbors and the children there know who little Yi is and would definitely come over to our place to have a look if they knew he was there. If that happened, could we still eat in peace? It's better to come here instead. 
his third sister was already asking for someone the moment she got here. Where's Chen Chen? Where's Chen Chen? Zhang Yi pointed to the bedroom. She's in there playing games. His third sister called out excitedly, Chen Chen, auntie is here. Come out quickly and greet everyone. She was even referring to herself as auntie now, but it wasn't actually wrong since she and Zhang Yi were in the same generation of the family. Ha ha. Before the door was even open, Chen Chen's humorless laughter could already be heard. His third sister pulled his second sister with her and ran into the bedroom to play with Chen Chen. At times, a sudden loud chatter could be heard coming from inside there. The eldest sister was considerably more mature among the young ones, so she came over to Zhong Yi and said with a laugh, Brother, I saw that you've been scolding people again on the internet for the past few days. Zhong Yi snickered. Did you back your bro up then? The eldest sister smiled and replied, Of course. I joined in and scolded them too. You're a good one. Zhong Yi declared, satisfied. His first aunt laughed and said, other than scolding people, Dandan has not learned anything from you. Of course she has to learn that. Zhong Yi said unashamedly. As people, we always have to ensure that we have a skill or two. It's good that she's learned that, otherwise she might get bullied when she enters society. His mother seethed, all right, you. Don't go around teaching them the wrong things. His grandma glanced at her daughter and remarked, What do you mean by teaching them the wrong things? If my grandson says that it's good, then it's good. His mother. Everyone laughed. During lunch, everyone started to chat about the upcoming spring festival gala. His second uncle asked, Little Yi, are you taking part in this year's spring festival gala? Zhong Yi chuckled, Of course not. The host positions have long since been decided on and the program plans have also been finalized. I won't be involved, and neither would they possibly invite me to attend it. His third aunt asked, how about the other stations? Other stations? Zhong Yi was slightly taken aback. I don't know about that. His third aunt said, you're too controversial and have sued Central TV before, and coupled with the strict criteria that they have in their organization you definitely won't be able to appear on Central TV's Spring Festival Gala. But what about the other television stations' Spring Festival Galas? Based on your popularity, you're definitely qualified enough to appear on them. Some of the more popular television networks these days also have very good viewership ratings for their Spring Festival Galas. They're at least twice as watched as you're a bite of China, since no television show should ever be able to outdo a Spring Festival Gala's viewership rating. Zhong Yi said, a provincial station's spring festival gala viewership rating might be high, but they do not necessarily want to invite me to appear on it. You say that my popularity is good and that I have the achievements to back me up, but my reputation is awful. These days, the provincial stations all broadcast their spring festival gala live, so even though it may seem that they are very active in the scene, none of them would actually risk inviting me to appear on the show. Moreover, I'm still a staff member of Central TV. Just as he was talking about this, a call suddenly came in. It was from Dong Shan Shan. Have you eaten? Zhong Yi stood up and walked toward his bedroom. Yes, I'm having lunch at the moment. I want to ask you something. Dong Shan Shan said with a laugh, do you have any conflicts during the spring festival? Zhong Yi was a little stunned. Spring festival? I'm on leave during that time. Dong Shan Shan snapped her fingers at that. It's good as long as you have nothing scheduled. Is your contract with Central TV a hosting and program-based contract? You can't work for other television stations in the capacity of a host and program director or planner, but that doesn't mean that you can't appear in your other capacities, like, as a crosstalk actor. Zhong Yi said surprised, what are you planning? Dong Shan Shan laughed and said, Beijing Television has just decided that they wanted to invite you and teacher Yao Jiansai to join us for this year's Beijing Television. Spring Festival Gala. They got me to check with you and see what you think about it, but mainly wanted to know about your specific contract terms with Central TV to see if they could find a loophole. So then, are you interested? Zhong Yi blinked. Who decided on this? Someone from management. Are you sure? Are you serious about letting me appear on a live broadcast? Of course we're sure. The station head has already given her approval. 
Beijing television station head? That friendly looking old lady? Chapter 851, A Class Reunion on the Morning of January 2nd. Media College's Class Reunion. Location, Suburbs of Beijing, Yizhuang. This was Dong Shanshan's new place, a small two-story terraced villa. Located near a park, the surroundings here was very quiet and secluded. There were few people seen around here in the neighborhood. Zhong Yi pressed the doorbell. The door opened, revealing Dong Shanshan's incredibly beautiful face. When Zhong Yi saw the way she dressed, he remarked, You're still wearing a skirt in the middle of winter. Dong Shanshan, who was dressed rather sexily, just smiled and said, It's been a long time since we've had a class reunion, so I must make an effort to dress well. Come on in, it's warmer inside. Zhong Yi asked, How many of them have arrived? We're just short of you. Dong Shanshan said, The others are already here. Upon passing through the doorway, he came into the living room. Although the area could not be compared with those luxurious villas, it wasn't bad either. The floor space of this villa was not big, but at least it had all the basic facilities that a villa should have. At the front was a small garden that was very eye-catching and would definitely look more attractive when the flowers and plants bloomed in spring. After walking in through the front door, a few figures appeared in front of him. They were watching television at the moment. Wang He smiled and stood up. Yo, look who's here? Zhong Yi smiled and returned, who do you think is here? Beside Wang He, Ma Xufei laughed and slapped the sofa's arm, then came forward in welcome. Zhong Yi! Zhong Yi saw him and said happily, old Ma, you're here too. I've always been in Beijing since our graduation, so why wouldn't I be here? Ma Xufei went over and gave Zhong Yi a bear hug and then said, we haven't seen each other in two years already. Zhong Yi asked, so you've been in Beijing all this while? I thought you'd return to your hometown. Why didn't you keep in touch? Ma Xufei laughed and said, You are getting so popular now, so who'd try to contact you? Don't wander off topic. Are you blaming me indirectly? Zhong Yi rolled his eyes. Dong Shanshan pointed at Ma Xufei and said, I only managed to contact old Ma a few days ago. He's really difficult to find as his number has changed several times already. Ma Xufei laughed heartily at that. I was busy with work, really busy with work. At this moment, another person walked over and lightly punched Zhong Yi's chest. Then he said, Zhong Er, you're really popular now. I see your face on the news so much that I've gotten sick of it. Zhong Yi chuckled, old he. He Kue said, great, you still know me? Zhong Yi quipped, if you still didn't show your face, I'd really have forgotten about you. You're the one who hasn't shown his face in forever. He Kue laughed and added, during the year we graduated, Shan Shan, the others, and I organized a party. We were unable to contact you. And you were the only person who did not join us. Zhong Yi also lightly punched He Kue's chest and commented, you still look so fit. He Kue replied, well, I've been training every day. From across the room, Yu Yi came up to him. She gently tucked her hair behind her ears and asked in a sweet voice, Zhong Yi, do you know who am I? Can you still remember my name? Zhong Yi glanced at her with a smile and said, I can even write your name out backwards, classmate Yu Yi. Yu Yi blinked. Not bad, you really still remember my name. Zhong Yi said, Our class only had so many people. Do you think I have Alzheimer's? Also, how can I possibly forget a beautiful girl's name? Even if it's after 20 years, I will still remember your name, much less just two years. Yuingi said in satisfaction, you really know how to spin things. Have to. Zhong Yi smiled. Everyone sat together on the couch in the living room. Dong Shanshan announced, everyone is here today, but it's just the six of us, so we can just consider it a mini-class reunion. I've tried to contact all the others, but some of them were uncontactable, while most of the others are not in Beijing anymore and therefore could not make it. We will organize another large reunion some other day. As for today's reunion, it's nothing much except for us to catch up on our friendship together, while also having a who. So arming for my new home. Ma Xufei clapped and complimented, congratulations, school bell. Best wishes for your new home. We must celebrate this for sure. He Kue smiled and said, besides, 
I think we should organize such activities more often since we have a place to hold our reunions now. Dong Shanshan agreed without hesitation. Sure, just come to my house whenever we have a reunion. Zhong Yi looked around and said, the house looks quite nice. When did you buy it? I bought it a few days ago and moved in immediately. It's a resale, Dong Shanshan answered. Zhong Yi smirked. Weren't you asking me to help you look for a house? I've been waiting for your call about it, but I didn't know you already bought it. What a friend you are, classmate Shanshan. Dong Shanshan's mouth twitched and she laughed. Then she looked at him and said, Oh come on, have you even had a moment's free time in these past few days? You've been arguing with people on the internet every day for how many days now? When I saw the way things were going, I thought I should just forget it and look for a house by myself. Zhong Yi. Yu Yi laughed loudly. Zhong Yi is still that temperamental guy from before. Dong Shanshan shook her head and said, his temper is etched into his bones. I don't think he can ever change that in his entire lifetime. Stop ridiculing me. I still haven't asked you how much this house costs. Zhong Yi quickly changed the subject. He Kuei guessed, it looks like it's at least 10 million. Less than that. Dong Shanshan replied, it's cheaper out here in the suburbs and it only costs several million. He Kuei tutted, that's still very expensive. Dong Shanshan smiled and explained, I got a loan since I could only afford the down payment. Zhong Yi said enviously, you sure are rich. Yu Yi glanced at Zhong Yi and said, as a B-list superstar, you can still say that Shanshan is rich. Aren't you embarrassed? I really don't earn as much money as her, Zhong Yi denied, waving his hands as he admitted honestly. Ma Xufei said in disbelief, who are you trying to bluff? Among all of us, you are supposed to be the richest. Dong Shanshan said, I think Zhong Yi is not lying, but it's not that he's poor, it's just that, that he doesn't have any intentions to make money. From the time since he debuted until now, he has never accepted any commercial events and he's the only such person in the entertainment industry. His income mainly comes from his endorsement fees and the fixed salary and bonuses as a host. It would be a wonder if he were rich, but me? My contract with Beijing Television is more flexible since I can accept a commercial event every other day. With each event, I can earn about 100 to 200,000 renminbi. That's how I managed to pay off the down payment. He Kuei said, wasn't Zhong Yi like this in university too? The way he thinks and does things are always very different from others. Wang He said, anyway, both of you are really popular now. How much viewership did a bite of China get? The viewership rating for the latest episode is not out yet, Zhong Yi responded. Yu Yi said, we were watching it just now. It's a really good show. A Bite of China was currently playing on the television in the living room. It was the rerun of the latest episode. Zhong Yi's deep and magnetic voice was emitting from the TV. He Kuei said, I feel hungry just from watching this. What are we having for lunch? Dong Shanshan pointed to the kitchen and said, I've already bought the ingredients, so why don't we all whip something up ourselves? Yu Yi suggested, sure, I'll be the main chef then. Okay, we'll help you out. As long as you guys don't cause trouble. Damn, are you looking down on us? Among us, I think only old Ma and I know how to cook. As for the rest, it's still a question mark right now. Everyone was very excited and could not stop talking since the long-awaited class reunion had begun. Actually, while they were still at university, even though they met and attended classes together every day, they did not talk as much as they were talking now. Instead, it was after graduation that their relationship became much closer. It was bustling in the kitchen. Yu Yi seemingly took it all on and chased the others out of the kitchen. With some free time, Dong Shanshan called Zhong Yi over to the side and said, where's the contract? It's here. Zhong Yi took out the contract from his bag and handed it to her. Dong Shanshan sat down and started flipping through the pages one by one. This was the contract signed by Zhong Yi with Central TV back then. As the contractual terms were quite complicated, she had to carefully look through it bit by bit. About 20 minutes later. Dong Shanshan flicked her finger on the contract in satisfaction and said, all right, I've understood it quite clearly. The contractual terms are more or less the same as what our station thinks. 
your contract is more flexible and it definitely won't be a problem for you to appear on Beijing Television Spring Festival Gala. Zhong Yi grinned. Great. Dong Shanshan stated, it looks like we finally have a chance to perform together on the same stage for once. Huh? Zhong Yi asked, you're the host. Dong Shanshan nodded and said, the station informed me about it two months ago. They reserved a host spot for me in this year's Spring Festival Gala, so it's considered a very good opportunity. Zhong Yi exclaimed, the station seems to be rather supportive of you. You're doing really well then. Dong Shanshan gave him a haughty, teasing look and replied, if your temper were better and you didn't offend so many people, you could also do whatever you wanted in any television station. Who wouldn't support you then? Zhong Yi threw up hands in resignation and said, that's the problem. This has always been my character. Suddenly, Dong Shanshan recalled something and was tickled by it. Actually, that temperament of yours is also quite a good thing. A few days ago, I attended a commercial event for a big company's anniversary celebrations. After that, there were some issues with the agreed payment and they insisted on paying me 50,000 yuan less. Everyone ended up being unhappy after arguing over the matter for a long time. Later on, I don't know where they got the news that you were my classmate from university, but by the next day, they immediately paid up the rest of the money. From this, you should know just how bad your reputation is in the industry. There aren't many who could stay calm upon mention of your name. At this moment, the rest of their classmates who came over heard this as well and started teasing Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi's name is this useful? Ha 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 ha. Alrighty then, I'll make good use your name someday. Right, the next time I go to a restaurant, I will mention your name and maybe I'll get a discount. Zhong Yi said, if you don't mention my name, you would be charged 500 yuan, but if you do mention my name, you would be charged 1000 yuan. Dong Shanshan was amused by that. Why do you have so little confidence in yourself? Zhong Yi rolled his eyes. How can I still have any confidence when you're all talking about me this way? All right, all right, hurry up and deal with the proper matters first. Dong Shanshan said, go and confirm with teacher Yao the proposal. After both of your schedules are confirmed, I will inform the station. Okay. Zhong Yi walked away from the others and gave Yao Jintsai a call. The call connected. Old Yao, where are you? I'm at home, what's the matter? Are we going to have a drink together? Maybe some other day, let's discuss the serious matters first. Are you free this spring festival? We've already wrapped up filming for the previous movie, so I'm free during spring festival. That's good then. Beijing Television Spring Festival Gala has sent us an invitation, do you want to go? What act will we perform? It's definitely going to be a crawstalk performance. I'll go if you're going. It's been some time since we have worked together. All right, so it's settled then? It's no problem for me. It's a good thing to appear on a Spring Festival Gala. And besides, Beijing Television Spring Festival Gala has one of the better viewership ratings among the provincial channels, so why wouldn't I go, right? As long as you have a good piece to perform, I'll definitely do it. You don't have to worry about the performance, I'll handle that. It's settled then. To a celebrity like Yao Jintsai, there was no chance at all for him to appear on Central TV's Spring Festival Gala because he was not popular enough. Old Yao's current popularity was more or less at the level of Dong Shanshan's, but he would surely be overtaken by Dong Shanshan soon. As for the other provincial channel's Spring Festival Galas, they also celebrated it in very grand ways every year. Those celebrities who did well on those Spring Festival Galas could sometimes even attract a similar level of attention to those cast on Central TV's Spring Festival Gala. But Yao Jintsai's key problem was that his main profession was actor, not idol. In addition, he was also quite old and there were hardly any acts he could perform for the gala, so how would he get cast on a spring festival gala? By displaying his acting skills on stage? No one would watch that. Then how about singing? He couldn't sing either. Therefore, there wasn't an invitation for Yao Jintsai to appear in any of the spring festival galas. It was the same for Zhong Yi. Singing? His singing was not good, but what about his main profession as host? 
he was still mainly a variety show host and not the type of host who could do hosting for a spring festival gala. Even if he hadn't fell out with Central TV, they were also unlikely to get him to be the host of the spring festival gala, much less get him to do a personal performance. What could he perform? A poem recitation? However, with Yao Jiantsai and Zhong Yi grouped together, the situation has become entirely different. The crosstalk of this young and old pairing was just too famous. Chapter 852, Too Much to Drink. In the afternoon. Lunch was ready and the few of them were already starting to drink. Inni's culinary skill is rather good. I'm just average. Come and have a taste. Come, I suggest we toast first. Right, it's rare for us classmates to gather together, so we must definitely finish this first toast. There mustn't be a drop left. You guys drink the white wine, while we girls will have the red. Okay, cheers. Cheers. Let's have parties more often in the future. I really miss all of you a lot. After a bite of the food, Ma Xufei lamented, back then, our class were full of talent. In the entire school, we had people who were able to do all sorts of things. He Kue had already entered the student council by the second year, while Yu Yi's talent stood out since freshman year. She was able to come up against anyone and surely had a performance lined up for her during the school's New Year Gala. Then, there were also Wang He and Dong Shanshan, both top of the class straight A students who always either got first or second every year in school. They had already been shortlisted by television stations before they went on to finish their final year of school. Meanwhile, Zhong Yi was already a legendary figure in the school itself. He would always maintain a low profile and didn't mix much with others, but at crunch time, he was someone who would challenge the teacher's decisions. He was constantly criticized by the school authorities and had only managed to stumble towards graduation in the end. That Zhong Yi could successfully graduate with his certificate was in my opinion a real miracle. Zhong Yi didn't like what he heard. Was I as bad as how you described me? It can only be worse, not better, Ma Xufei replied with a laugh. He Kuei also said, I wouldn't have believed it if you told me that after our graduation, Zhong Yi would be the one who is doing the best among us. I thought that this guy would even find it hard to secure a job. Zhong Yi didn't know how to react. It was indeed difficult to find a job back then. Ma Xufei commented, but you've still made it somehow. Wang He observed, of the students from our class, I suppose it's Zhong Yi who has gone the furthest in his career? Yu Yi said, rather than just talking about our class, even if we include the three classes before us at Media College, it's still just Zhong Yi alone who has gone that far. He's even gone back to our alma mater and gotten appointed as an associate professor there. Zhong Yi shook his head. I'm just walking ahead of everyone by a little. It'll be harder to go further in the future. If there are no significant changes, I believe I'll have reached my potential as a top B-list celebrity. With my looks, how can I ever match you guys? I'm too limited by that. He Kue remarked, being the top of the B-list celebrities is already a very high position. Dong Shanshan asked, I've only really been in contact with Zhong Yi for the past two years, so what have the rest of you been up to? Yu Yi suddenly giggled and blinked a few times. Then she glanced at Zhong Yi and said, well, I'll likely become Zhong Yi's colleague in a few more days. Ah? Zhong Yi was a little surprised. Dong Shanshan smiled and inquired, you're joining Central TV? Everyone looked at Yu Yi. Yu Yi smiled and answered, yes. I've been working at an online video hosting site and doing commentary work for sports. I cover mainly basketball, both the NBA and CBA, while I also did some coverage on soccer a few times. I think I can be considered to have a little fame within the industry and have also gained quite a lot of experience, so I contacted someone over at the Central TV Sports Channel and was given an interview chance last month which I did quite well at. When my contract with the online video hosting site ends next week, I'll be reporting to Central TV Department 1 for my new job, so you guys must tune into Central TV Department 5 more often in the future. I might just be doing the coverage at that time. Zhong Yi congratulated, that's great. Ma Xufei also quickly offered his congratulations. That's a good thing. The sports channel is a good place, Wang He also said with a smile. Yu Yi shrugged and said with a smile, this job of mine has its pros and cons. 
the pros are that the competition is not so fierce since I'm a female commentator. In the field of sports commentary, there aren't too many women around. You can count them on your fingers and you would find only a few in the entire country who are considerably more well-known. Therefore, it wasn't difficult for me to find this job as almost every place would want me if I applied. But the cons are equally as much as the pros too. A woman in the sports commentary field has limitations since I am not a professional athlete, so it takes more work for me to learn and research the professional terms used. You guys wouldn't be able to guess how many matches I watch every day. I can't get the names of any of the players and coaches wrong, including the rules as well. If I were to say something wrong, there would be netizens criticizing me the very next day saying things like, see, I told you that a female commentator wouldn't do. They don't understand sports at all. So there's a lot of pressure on me. Just like how Zhong Yi mentioned just now, it's very difficult for me to advance any further even if I want to. Wang He looked at her. Why did you choose to go into this profession? I guess it's cause I like it. Yu Yi threw up her hands. Dong Shan Shan smiled and said, Yi has always liked watching ball games since university. She's always watching the overnight games and drinking beer with the boys, so to have chosen a sports commentary job is in my opinion not strange at all. Yu Yi said happily, I would have liked to be doing television hosting like you guys too, but the competition there is really too intense and I'm also not as beautiful as Shan Shan, so I thought I'd just forget it. Saying that, she raised her glass and said to Zhong Yi, come, I will separately give a toast to Zhong'er. Since we'll be working in the same organization soon, let's keep in touch often. Sure. Zhong Yi clinked glasses with her and drank up. Dong Shan Shan sarcastically remarked, Ingi, I suggest you steer clear of him at work. Almost no one at Central TV has not been offended by Zhong Yi before. Be careful that you get dragged in by him as well. Yu Yi also quipped, oh yes, then I better pretend to not know him. Zhong Yi. Everyone was laughing along at that. The lunch party lasted until past four in the afternoon, so they just continued on with dinner after that. As there wasn't enough food, Yu Yi and Dong Shan Shan went about to cook a few more dishes. They were finally done making dinner too. Wang Yi had a little much to drink and was speaking with a slur. Los Ave Ma. We won't go home till we're drunk. Yes, if everyone gets drunk, just stay over at my place tonight. Dong Shan Shan had also had quite a lot of red wine and her face was extremely flushed. I have a lot of rooms at my place here anyway, so feel free to stay over. Those who drove here won't have to drive back home then. Yu Yi suggested, why don't we go sing karaoke? Zhong Yi agreed without hesitation. I'm fine with anything. Dong Shan Shan snapped her fingers. We can sing at my place. My TV has a karaoke function included. He Kuei and Ma Xufei shouted, sing. Zhong Yi volunteered himself. I'll take the first song. They drank more alcohol as they sang, this time downing beer instead. At 9 p.m. Everyone at the villa was moving around unsteadily from drinking too much. Wang Yi had gotten drunk early on and had gone to the bathroom to throw up. He Kuei was a little better as he went to pat Wang Yi on the back as he threw up. But witnessing what Wang Yi had thrown up grossed him out and He Kuei couldn't control himself as he also threw up after Wang Yi was done. Ma Xufei was still on the MIC, though it was better to describe him as howling rather than singing. Zhong Yi could no longer stand properly. I'm tired from the singing. Dong Shan Shan said with a breath laden with the smell of alcohol, all of you stay over tonight. Sure. Even if you want us to leave, we won't be able to leave, Yu Yi replied in a drunken state with many bottles of beer in front of her. She probably had more to drink than any of the men today. Dong Shan Shan divided up the rooms by saying, we'll all stay in the rooms upstairs. Where's he Kuei and Wang, he? Yu Yi answered, in the bathroom throwing up. They'll both share a room. Dong Shan Shan said, Zhong Yi and Ma Xufei will share another, room. Yi, you sleep together with me. My bed is bigger so we can sleep on it even if we lie down horizontally. Ma Xufei said, let's sing a little while longer. Yu Yi grabbed a microphone and said, All right, I'll sing with you. Zhong Yi couldn't hold it any longer and hiccuped from drinking too much. He clutched Dong Shan Shan and said, I can't drink any further. I have to sleep now. 
Is there anywhere I can bathe? I need a bath. Is upstairs, Dong Shan Shan slurred. It's in the bath, room upstairs. There isn't one, in the one downstairs. All right. You guys keep going. Zhong Yi stumbled upstairs. Dong Shan Shan told him from behind, rest early after you shower. We still have to go to Beijing Television for the Spring Festival Gala dress rehearsal tomorrow. It's tomorrow? Yes. Okay, I understand. Upstairs. In the bathroom. Zhong Yi had just taken off his clothes when Yao Jintsai called. The dress rehearsals tomorrow? Yao Jintsai proposed, then why don't we do some short practice? Zhong Yi exclaimed, ah? Now? Yao Jintsai said, are we going to wait till the last minute then? Zhong Yi said, I haven't even prepared what to say yet. I drank a little too much today. That's good timing. Alcohol will give you inspiration. Yao Jintsai laughed. We still have to come up with a routine by tomorrow no matter what anyway, or else we would seem too unprofessional if we were to go for the rehearsal without any preparation, wouldn't we? Zhong Yi said helplessly, all right then, let me think for a bit. After talking for more than 10 minutes, they hadn't actually come up with anything at all. Zhong Yi was feeling too dizzy at the moment and sometimes didn't even know what he was talking about. After hanging up, Zhong Yi stepped into the bathtub and soaked in it. He applied some body wash and closed his eyes, feeling extremely relaxed. Outside, Ma Xufei's singing had stopped. Zhong Yi stood up unsteadily from the bathtub and washed himself clean before drying his hair and body. Then he put on his underwear and stepped out of the bathroom. It was all dark, but he only roughly remembered that he had left the lights on before he went in to bathe, so he didn't care much about this. His eyes were already closing and even the moonlight shining through the windows was spinning around. He slowly made his way to the bed and then flipped open the blanket and snuggled right into bed. The bed was very soft. The blanket was also very warm. Was this a battery-operated electric mattress? When Zhong Yi's head hit the pillow, he fell almost immediately asleep. After a while, he felt as though the bed was really crowded like there was something on both sides of him. He turned around and put his hand over to the left side and smelled a light fragrance with his nose. It was like somebody was there. A shoulder jerked and moved around a little. Cut it out. Hearing that, Zhong Yi impatiently turned and faced the other way. He placed his legs in a position that he found to be most comfortable and laid down. But there was yet another hint of fragrance that he could smell, a fragrance that was quite different from the left side. The smell of alcohol was heavily mixed into this light scent. Then he also a voice over on this side. Don't push me. I can't drink any more, I said I can't drink any, more, go find someone, else to drink with you. This voice kept murmuring over and over again without stopping. In the end, the sound kept buzzing in Zhong Yi's ears and it irritated him so much that he turned around again, annoyed, preferring to face the left side and sleep instead. Chapter 853, What a Mess! The next morning. Daylight broke. No one knew what time it was. A cell phone had been ringing noisily somewhere, either on a bed or table, for some amount of time. Ring, ring, ring. Ring, ring, ring. Suddenly, a sleepy female voice started mumbling. Whose phone is that? Shan Shan, Shan Shan. Your cell phone is ringing. On the other side of the bed, another female voice replied sleepily, that's not my cell phone's ringtone. It should be yours. Quickly turn it off. Who, I want to sleep a bit more. It isn't mine either. Then whose is it? Just turn it off first. Where is the phone? The two of them were talking. Suddenly, another voice sounded from the bed, huh? That sounds like my cell phone. Who the hell is calling so early in the morning? Zhong Yi lifted up the blanket that was covering his face as he ranted impatiently. Dong Shan Shan shouted beside him, hurry up and turn it off. I need to sleep. Okay, Zhong Yi replied subconsciously. Suddenly, the entire room went quiet. Yuini was immediately jolted awake at the other side of the bed. 
She felt shocked as she sat up straight from the bed and looked dumbfounded at Zhong Yi who slept together with her and Dong Shanshan in the same bed. Dong Shanshan also finally realized what was going on as she looked at Zhong Yi, then rubbed her eyes as though to confirm again. Zhong Yi? Zhong Yi? Zhong Yi was the last person to react. He looked shocked at Dong Shanshan to his left and glanced at Yuing Yi to his right. He was the most startled one among them and nearly fell off the bed in shock. He exclaimed in panic, Ayo, my god. Why are the two of you are sleeping in my bed? Yuing Yi nearly fainted. That's what I should be asking. Dong Shanshan looked at Zhong Yi and said, This is my bed. Didn't you tell me to sleep in this room? Zhong Yi stared. Dong Shanshan said in a speechless manner, Who said you could sleep in this room? Inyi and I were to sleep in my room. I arranged for you and Ma Xufei to sleep in another room. Didn't you come up first and bathe? Zhong Yi said very assured, Yeah, I crawled into bed right after bathing. How would I know which room was for Ma Xufei and me? I thought this was our room. Dong Shanshan rubbed her forehead. You mean you couldn't even feel that there were two human beings in the bed? And you still had the cheek to crawl into the bed? Zhong Yi defended. But neither of you said anything when I crawled into the bed too, right? Dong Shanshan returned, Inyi and I had too much to drink, so how would we know that someone had crawled into the bed after us? I drank a lot too and didn't know that there were people in the bed either. Zhong Yi countered, I fell asleep as soon as I hit the bed. Yu Yi smacked Zhong Yi in annoyance and stated, Ayo, you're really great, huh? I really have to give it to you. Then she told Dong Shanshan, Shanshan, let's stop reasoning with him already. Hurry up and put on our clothes. The two of them were not wearing many clothes. But Zhong Yi had even less on. Only when Yu Yi mentioned it did Zhong Yi start to feel embarrassed. But he still gave a quick glance at the both of them and that set his heart racing, though he quickly curbed it by thinking other thoughts by looking in the direction of the foot of the bed. But there were also some rather inappropriate things that he saw lying over there, like a pair of stockings that were thrown there by someone, as well as red and purple underwear. Some were lying on top of the blanket, some were on the floor, and there was also a piece hanging off the ledge of the foot of the bed. The other clothes were entangled within the blanket where Zhong Yi's feet were. He could feel the clothes there when he wiggled his toes. Zhong Yi withdrew his legs quickly and sat up to put on his clothes in a hurry. Where are my clothes? However, Dong Shanshan pushed him back down and said, Stay under the blanket for now and let us get dressed first. Yuing Yi was putting her clothes on. However, with Zhong Yi still beside them, she could not stand up straight and wear her clothes in the open. She was grabbing hold of the blanket to cover herself while putting on her clothes with the other hand. Noticing this situation, Zhong Yi simply covered himself with the blanket and said, You two go ahead and put on your clothes first. Initially, he thought that it would be total darkness under the blanket and he would not be able to see anything. This action was also to tell Dong Shanshan and Yuing Yi, You can put on your clothes without worry of me watching. But when he covered himself with the blanket, he found out that he could still see through it judging by the light rays coming in. Dong Shanshan was sitting at the other side of the bed while Yuing Yi was in a half-sitting and half-bending position at the other end of the bed. She was still holding onto the blanket but Zhong Yi could still see everything from where he was. It even looked like he could see everything more clearly than before. Fine, he decided to close his eyes instead. Zhong Yi had a rather good sense of consciousness this time. Thinking about it, last night's matter was really too coincidental. Zhong Yi had talked on the phone groggily with Yao Jintsai for a long time before he went to bathe. Dong Shanshan and Yuing Yi who he reckoned to be drunk as well did not know there was someone else in the bathroom, so they fell asleep after getting into bed. When Zhong Yi came out of the bathroom, he just lifted up the blanket and crawled in without even thinking. At that time, he thought that the warm feeling he had was because it was an electric mattress. Hi, this was all fated. Next to him, he heard the two women gossiping about him. Yuini remarked, This rascal is terrible. Dong Shanshan replied, I think he did it on purpose. Yuini agreed, HMPH, I think the same as you. Zhong Yi could no longer bear to listen. Hey, can you two not be like that? Suddenly, the thud of approaching footsteps came from outside the room. Then someone knocked on the door. Dong, dong, dong. 
Shan Shan? Ying Yi? It was Ma Xufei's voice. Wang Yi also said, Are you too awake yet? Yu Yi was stunned. Then she said to the door, I just woke up, what's the matter? Behind the door, Wang Yi said, There's a cell phone downstairs, which I think is Shan Shan's. It was ringing for a long time, so I had a look at it and saw more than a dozen unanswered calls. I brought it up for Shan Shan. Dong Shan Shan immediately said, Place it outside first. We haven't put on our clothes yet. Wang He said, Ah, uh, all right then. Another set of footsteps could be heard coming upstairs. Then, from outside the door, someone asked, Where's Zhong Yi? It was He Kuei's voice. Ma Xufei answered, I don't know. I don't remember seeing him since last night. I went to bed after singing and didn't see him beside me when I woke up in the morning. He Kuei inquired curiously, then where did he go? His car is still parked outside. Ma Xufei asked, Shan Shan, Yi, did the two of you see Zhong Yi? Yu Yi thought to herself, of course we saw him. This guy was sleeping in the same bed as us for the entire night. We didn't see him. Dong Shan Shan laughed. I think he took a taxi back home by himself last night. Ma Xufei acknowledged, I see. All right then, what are the two of you going to do then? Shan Shan, don't you have something today? I recall that you told Zhong that you have a rehearsal today for the Spring Festival Gala. Hearing that, Dong Shan Shan was startled. Ayo, what time is it now? Wang He said from the hallway, it's already 9.30 a.m. Oh no. Oh no. I'm running late. Dong Shan Shan could no longer be bothered with Zhong Yi's presence as she leaped off the bed. She jogged to the front of the wardrobe and pulled open it. Taking out a random skirt, she immediately slid it over her legs. When the people outside heard that, they said, then you should hurry up. Attending your job is more important. Us guys will just leave first. Let's have another reunion some other day if there's time. We're all in Beijing anyway. We're leaving, Shan Shan. Ingi, we'll see you again at the next reunion. The three of them went downstairs and left. Yu Ingi knew that Dong Shan Shan was impressed for time as the Spring Festival Gala was the biggest annual event of a television station. It was also the first time that Dong Shan Shan got to be the host for a Spring Festival Gala, so no matter what, she must not be delayed any longer. After she put on her pants, she hastily handed some clothes to Dong Shan Shan. Is this okay? Anything is fine, anything is fine. Don't worry about your hair, I'll help you to comb it. Thanks, Ingi. Don't worry about it. Hurry. I hope you can still make it on time. I definitely won't make it in time. The rehearsal was scheduled to start at 9 a.m. While Dong Shan Shan was putting on her clothes, she remembered something. She looked at the direction of Zhong Yi who was still covered by the blanket. Don't just sit there, get up quickly. Don't you have to go to the dress rehearsal too? Zhong Yi could only uncover his head as he coughed and quickly started looking for his clothes. In the end, he remembered that he'd left his clothes in the bathroom last night, so quickly went to the bathroom to change. After he put on his clothes and came out, Dong Shan Shan and Yuingyi were also ready. When the three of them faced each other, Yuingyi felt the most embarrassed, followed by Zhong Yi, then Dong Shan Shan. As Zhong Yi had slept in the same bed with Dong Shan Shan before, even though he had a girlfriend now, it was not that embarrassing between them. However, Yuingyi was different. Having spent the night with their faces so close to each other, how could she not feel awkward? As Yuingyi was an easygoing person, after the awkward moment, she said, All right, we'll settle the score with Zhong Yi in the future. Both of you hurry up and leave first. Dong Shan Shan quickly picked up her bag and said, All right, let's go. Hurry. Yuini urged. Dong Shan Shan's cell phone rang. She rapidly dragged Zhong Yi downstairs while she answered the call. Hello, Brother Hu. Hu Fei questioned in a slightly angry manner, Where are you? Dong Shan Shan said, I'm about to arrive. I'm stuck in a traffic jam now because of an accident ahead. The cars aren't even moving. The dress rehearsal has started already. Everyone is waiting for you. I'm sorry, Brother Hu, I'll be right there. Hurry up, the XX are getting impatient. 
Dong Shanshan really could lie without blinking an eye. Then, Zhong Yi's cell phone started ringing as well. The moment he answered the call, the angry voice of Yao Jintsai surged out at him. Little Zhong, you must have overslept, right? What time is it already? How many times have I called you? Why are you not here yet? Zhong Yi used the same excuse as Dong Shanshan and said, It's a traffic jam, a traffic jam. I'm about to arrive. Yao Jintsai shouted, What do you mean about to arrive? I can hear the sound of your footsteps going down the stairs. Zhong Yi said embarrassed, help me delay a little bit. I'll be there very soon. All the other celebrities and actors have already arrived. It's just you left now. Some of the Beijing television's XX have already come over to ask me, but I don't even know how to explain to them. Ari, you are making us seem too unprofessional. Besides, we haven't even practiced our lines together, so how are we going to perform later? Let's do it spontaneously. Anyway, just hurry up. Sure. As they had too much to drink last night, they could not possibly drive in their current condition. As a result, Zhong Yi and Dong Shanshan decided to get a taxi and frantically rushed to the television station. Dong Shanshan was holding up a compact to touch up her makeup in the taxi. She said, I'm in deep trouble because of you. Ah? Why are you blaming me? Zhong Yi didn't know whether to laugh or cry. I will be getting chewed out by them later. Dong Shanshan said worried, if anything goes wrong, I might just get excluded from hosting the Spring Gala Festival this time. Zhong Yi also knew that Dong Shanshan's transgression this time was not exactly light. As she was still a newcomer and not a veteran host yet, how could she be late by almost an hour for such a major gala rehearsal? This was really unacceptable. Zhong Yi was fine with it since it wouldn't make a difference to him. He didn't have much of a reputation anyway, so what was the big deal even if he got there late? Furthermore, with his current status and diverse abilities in the industry, Beijing television would definitely not take it up with him over such a trivial matter. However, it was different for Dong Shanshan. They wouldn't dare reprimand Zhong Yi, but why wouldn't they reprimand her? Zhong Yi said, don't worry about it. I'll help you explain later. Dong Shanshan looked at him. And how do you propose to do that? I'll let you know when we get there, Zhong Yi simply said. Chapter 854, Crawstalk Routine, I want to get on the Spring Festival Gala. Later that morning. News regarding the Spring Festival Gala continued to get published. The latest rumor online regarding the Central TV Spring Festival Gala show list was leaked. From the looks of the show list, it was rather authentic and unlikely to be made up by netizens. This was most probably the actual show list for this year's Spring Festival Gala. Songs, Sun Hang, E Homeland. Zhong Xia, Li Chishi, E A Taste of Home. Zhong Yuanqi, In the Sunlight. Language Acts, Gongqing, Ci Xiaofang, Xiao Hai is Sketch, Why Is It You Again? Tang Da Zhang, Li Yang, Guo Binzi, Feet 60 Participants, Crawstalk Routine, A Family Reunion. The netizens were ridiculing them in the comments section down below. Why is it always these familiar names? That's right, the majority of them are the same people. Sister Zhong is doing a solo this time? She's not partnering with Grandma Zhong? A 60-person crawlstalk routine? I've nothing I can say to that. Foot, has Tang Da Zhang brought his entire crawlstalk society along to participate in the gala? Is he moving his entire family over? What are they trying to do? 60 people doing a crawlstalk together? Are there crawlstalks done by so many people at once? Ayo, why is it so comical? Was Tang Da Zhang driven mad by Zhong Yi last year? I'm not surprised that Tang Da Zhang will be appearing on the gala since he is a regular performer there, but how are they going to perform a crawlstalk with 60 people? Are they forcefully trying to come up with something innovative? Is this even innovation? Wouldn't it get messy with so many people performing on stage? Moreover, isn't it meaningless to have so many participants? It's not like we're competing on who has more people. Who knows what Tang Da Zhang and his people are thinking? Why did the Spring Festival Gala program team even allow this to pass? The Spring Festival Gala is getting weirder and weirder by the year. Where's Zhong Yi's name? Why didn't they include my favorite Zhong Yi? 
Haha, <laughs> our teacher Zhong Yi did not even make it to the list. Central TV Spring Festival Gala simply must have not approached him. It's too bad that Zhong Yi offended so many people, otherwise he might have really had the chance to appear on the Spring Festival Gala this year. A 60-person crosstalk routine will simply be unbearable to watch. Tang Dazhang's crosstalk routines are really not enjoyable to listen to at all. Every year, his opening line is always, we meet again, my friends and that totally annoys me. They should have just invited Zhong Yi and Yao Jintsai instead. Their crosstalk routines are so fucking fun to watch. I've already listened to, I will reject the three vulgarities ten times. If Zhong Yi is not involved in the Spring Festival Gala, there'll be nothing interesting to look forward to. That's right, there won't be any fights to see anymore. Foot, above posters, you're really amazing. Beijing Television. At the rehearsal venue, the hall was packed with people. It was quite chaotic. There were lion dancers, people practicing acrobatics such as somersaulting, while some were facing away from the others and doing their vocal warm-ups. There were many familiar faces among them. A lot of them were celebrities who were frequently featured on television, although they were not very popular. The dressing and waiting rooms were all fully occupied. When Zhong Yi and Dong Shan Shan arrived, it was already 10 a.m. Hu Fei and Yao Jinsai anxiously came over to them. Little Zhong, little Dong. Ayo, hey you two have finally arrived. Hurry up, this way. They went to a standalone waiting room. Beijing Television Spring Festival Gala had invited quite a number of big names this time. Zhong Yi might not the most popular celebrity among them, but he was definitely one of the more popular ones in this group of guests. With his current status, the television station would definitely not force him and Yao Jintsai to wait in the hall. Instead, they prepared a place for them to practice separately from the others. Hu Fei was the assistant overall planner for Beijing Television Spring Festival Gala this year. As a result, he had a lot of work to handle at the location and was kept busy the entire morning. Beads of sweat ran down his forehead as he said, you two are really something to drop the ball at such an important time. Don't bother explaining, the dress rehearsal is starting soon. Hurry up and get prepared. Dong Shan Shan heaved a sigh of relief. It hasn't started yet. Hu Fei replied, the equipment needed some additional tuning, so the rehearsal was delayed by an hour. If the two of you came another 15 minutes later, it would really have started and you wouldn't be able to explain your way out of it. Zhong Yi laughed. See, our timing was perfect. Hu Fei stared daggers at Zhong Yi. Don't make me angry. Oh right, I informed teacher Yao a while ago. Considering that we only invited the two of you to appear on the show at the last minute, we understand that time might be a little tight. Therefore, the execs have instructed that you may perform anything for today's rehearsal and say whatever you like. As long as you use up the 11 to 12 minutes allocated to the two of you for the actual Spring Festival Gala performance, there won't be a problem. We still have to confirm the actual duration allocated for it after we calculate the overall time during this rehearsal. Therefore, it's still not too late to go back and fine-tune the crosstalk routine that you two have planned for the actual day. They are so trusting of us? Zhong Yi asked in surprise. Hu Fei returned, you're a former employee of our Beijing TV, so how could the station not know what you're capable of? The XX are very assured of your creativity and spontaneity. When the final performance has been worked out, it won't make a difference regardless of whether the station approves it today or on the actual day. Furthermore, we have to consider that a lot of people from the station are present today and there are also invited guests as well. The crosstalk routine by you and teacher Yao is the main highlight of our Spring Festival Gala this year, so the station head wishes to keep it under wraps and doesn't want reveal it in advance. All right, I understand. Zhong Yi knew what to do. Just say whatever we want. Then today would be an easy day. At this moment, the back door opened. Director Chang. Director Chang. A middle-aged man led a group of people in from outside. Zhong Yi knew that this person was the executive director of Beijing Television Spring Festival Gala this year, Chang Xiaoyong. Chang Xiaoyong nodded at Hu Fei first. Old Hu, have you already informed teacher Zhong and teacher Yao? I've told them already, Hu Fei replied. Chang Xiaoyong greeted Zhong Yi. 
Hello, Teacher Zhong. Zhong Yi smiled and shook hands with him. Hello, Director Chang. I've heard a lot about you. Same here, same here. Chang Xiaoyong explained, We gave you such late notice this time because we only managed to get an approval from the station at the last minute. It's fine. Old Yao and I are only the icing on the cake for this event. You two have provided us with timely assistance. Please don't put it that way. The two of them exchanged some pleasantries. In actuality, Chang Xiaoyun was not speaking without facts. Based on Zhong Yi's present popularity and status, appearing on Central TV's Spring Festival Gala might still be a little difficult, since that would depend on work relationships, censorship rules, and other factors. Like at last year's Spring Festival Gala, even Heavenly Queen Zhong Yuanqi and veteran songstress Zhong Xia had nearly missed out from appearing on it. However, it was not an issue for Zhong Yi to get onto a provincial station Spring Festival Gala. He could basically choose between any television station's gala to appear on if he wanted. This time, the fact that he had chosen to appear on Beijing Television's Spring Festival Gala was naturally helping them out. If you looked at the other provincial station's Spring Festival Gala, they had to spend a lot of money just to invite some A or B list celebrities to join their shows. To show their sincerity, an executive director of a gala had even personally flown to Hong Kong to invite a big name celebrity who was based there. But what about Zhong Yi? He did not even ask about the appearance fee and just agreed after getting a call. He was basically giving face to Beijing television station. So Chang Xiaoyong also treated Zhong Yi and Yao Jinsai with great respect. Likewise, Zhong Yi needed this opportunity. Though he was well qualified to appear on a provincial station Spring Festival Gala, the key was that no one dared to invite him. They feared that he would stir up trouble or that it would affect their interpersonal relationships in the industry. No matter how popular Zhong Yi was, he still couldn't appear on a provincial station Spring Festival Gala. Beijing Television had only dared to invite him because they were an old employer of his. Having spent much time working with him before, they had both fought and helped each other along the way. Therefore, the station was willing to put more trust in him than the other television stations since they had a deeper bond so to speak. As such, this was a win-win situation, with both sides taking what they needed. In the back, two assistant directors were criticizing Dong Shanshan as they looked at her in anger. One of them said, Little Dawn, what's the matter with you? How could you drop the ball on such a big occasion? We plan for the rehearsal to open at 9 a.m., but look at what time it is now. Do you still have any discipline? Dong Shanshan was just about to speak. However, Zhong Yi, who wasn't too far away from them, interjected, It was my fault. The two assistant directors looked at him in a rather stunned manner. Zhong Yi said in embarrassment, I went to look for Shan Shan this morning to ask her for some updates about the Spring Festival Gala and then had a discussion with her about the shows, so we got delayed as I had forgotten about the time. Actually, we could still make it on time, but because of a car accident that happened, we got stuck in traffic and came late. Discussing the shows, one of them questioned. Zhong Yi bluffed, well, we weren't discussing the crawlstalk routine, but just got engrossed in the discussion when we exchanged some views about skits. I thought that Shan Shan should be able to perform well in a skit. Don't they always have hosts these days who make guest appearances in a skit? Oh right, Shan Shan and I were classmates in university. During our school days, we always liked to discuss such things and couldn't stop once we started talking about it. Chang Xiaoyong wondered, Teacher Zhong can write skits too? Zhong Yi said light-heartedly, just a little. We were just randomly talking about it. Chang Xiaoyong said excitedly, I would really look forward to a sketch from you. Ha, huh, the show lineup has already been fixed, so we'd have to wait for next year, Zhong Yi said. Chang Xiaoyong nodded. Sure, there's still plenty of opportunities to work together in the future. The two assistant directors looked at Dong Shanshan and couldn't say anything more. Zhong Yi had already volunteered to take all the blame, so what else could they say? Surely they couldn't start reprimanding Zhong Yi, right? He was an associate professor at Beijing University and Media College, had won the highest honor in hosting, and was a popular B-list celebrity. Moreover, Zhong Yi's status as a TV show director would not be any lower than Chang Xiaoyong, a renowned gala director of the industry. 
Zhong Yi was also the director of the current number one viewership rated show in the television industry. He was even someone who could speak directly to the station head of Beijing Television, so how were they qualified to reprimand him? As a result, Dong Shanshan was let off lightly from the big trouble that she had gotten into. Zhong Yi and Dong Shanshan glanced at each other with a tacit understanding. Someone came in from outside again. Director Chang, we're starting the countdown. Is everything ready? Everything's ready. Good, the dress rehearsal will officially begin in 10 minutes. Then Chang Xiaoyong led his team quickly over to the stage area. Hu Fei turned around and said, Teacher Yao, Little Zhong, your show will be scheduled at the beginning, roughly at the 7th or 8th spot. Someone will lead you to the stage later. Everyone dispersed. Only Zhong Yi and Yao Jintsai were left in the waiting room. Zhong Yi asked, Shall we practice our lines? Yao Jintsai replied, Didn't they say we can just say whatever? Damn, are you really going to just say whatever? Zhong Yi chuckled. No matter what, we should still try to put on a good show. Looking at his watch, Yao Jintsai said, It will be our turn to go on stage soon. Do you think we can still make it in time? Zhong Yi said, then let's just practice briefly. Yao Jintsai was suddenly amused by something he thought of. Oh, have you seen Central TV's Spring Festival Gala show list yet? Tang Dazhang is bringing his people from the Crawstalk Society to perform at the Spring Festival Gala. What about that? What about that? It's a 60-person Crawstalk routine. Have you even heard of something like that before? Pfft. Are you serious? Have a look yourself. They claim that they're being innovative. After browsing through the news for a while, Zhong Yi was amused by it for a long time. Zhong Yi suddenly remembered a segment from a classic crosstalk routine from his previous world by Guidi Gang. Zhong Yi looked at Yao Jintsai. They said that we can say whatever we want for today's rehearsal. Yao Jintsai blinked several times. They said they would be fine with it even if we said whatever we wanted. Zhong Yi grinned. I understand then. You've thought of a bit? Yes. Oh, what is it called? I want to get on the Spring Festival Gala. Chapter 855, Dress Rehearsal in Progress. Backstage, Zhong Yi told Yao Jintsai that he wanted to rest his eyes momentarily to sort out his thoughts. Instead, he was quietly opening up his game ring to access the merchant shop where he bought two memory search capsules. After eating them, he closed his eyes and began sorting out some of Guidi Gang's crosstalk segments in his memory. Front stage, the dress rehearsal began. The music drifted all the way to the backstage and the gala host's voices followed soon after. Happy New Year, everyone. I am Wu Sha. I am D.A. Meng. And I am Dong Shan Shan. Here's us wishing you a prosperous New Year. Online. Other than Central TV's Spring Festival Gala, the other provincial channels' Spring Festival Galas were also garnering much attention. Some provincial channels' Spring Festival Galas were more topical than Central TV's Spring Festival Gala, and had an even more luxurious lineup too. For example, Mango TV. Wow, Mango TV managed to invite Hua Dongfang. Sect leader Hua is almighty. I heard they spent quite a sum of money on that. How generous. I heard that Central TV's Spring Festival Gala originally wanted to invite him, but who could have expected that sect leader Hua would go over to Mango TV instead? Look at the show list, they even managed to get teacher Big River to come out of his mountain seclusion too. Doing a count, there are three A-list and seven B-list celebrities so far. For example, Lianning Television. Ayo, it's so dazzling that I'm going blind. Is Lianning TV going all out this year as well? They even invited a heavenly king? Hasn't this heavenly king already stopped attending galas since a long time ago? Right, he has been developing his career in Hong Kong all this time. This is going to be the first time that he'll appear on a spring festival gala in the mainland. Holy shit, the Heavenly King's fans are already getting very excited. For example, Beijing Television. Beijing TV's spring festival gala has begun their rehearsals. Damn, why are Zhong Yi's and Yao Jintsai's names on the show list? What? Are you serious? Why would I lie to you? 
Go and see for yourself. Ah, it's really true. This pair of seasoned partners were invited to appear on Beijing TV's Spring Festival Gala? Ha 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 ha, I knew that Zhongyi wouldn't sit idle this year. Even though Central TV's Spring Festival Gala did not invite him, there are still other television stations who will invite him. Isn't Zhongyi a staff member of Central TV? His contract is flexible, so it shouldn't be an issue. Since Zhong Yi and Yao Jiansai are teaming up, they will be definitely be doing a crosstalk routine. I'm really anticipating it. Fuck, I'm definitely going to watch Beijing TV's Spring Festival Gala this year. Beijing TV is really awesome for bringing out a weapon of mass destruction like Zhong Yi. It will definitely be very lively at the provincial station Spring Festival Galas this year. What an intense and close battle for views. That not necessarily going to be the case. Zhong Yi might be a top B-list celebrity but his popularity is still not comparable to an A-lister. Although his popularity cannot be compared to theirs, but the awesome thing about Zhong Yi is his shows. No matter how popular a heavenly king or queen and some A-list celebrities are, the most they can do when they're on a spring festival gala is just sing some songs or dance. There's nothing special about those performances since they only depend on their popularity to attract the audience's attention. However, it's different for Zhong Yi since he performs in the most popular segment of the language shows. Who wouldn't want to listen to crosstalks or watch a skit during Chinese New Year? Therefore, on such a special occasion like the Spring Festival Gala, Zhong Yi and Yao Jiansai could definitely beat out three or four A list celebrities. Even the heavenly kings and queens are not their match. This was determined by the environment and atmosphere of the event. The stage of a spring festival gala will forever be ruled by the language shows. Beijing TV has beautiful execution. It's been such a long time since we've heard old Zhong and old Yao's crosstalk routines. I'm definitely going to watch it. I wonder what kind of crosstalk the two of them will perform for this year's rehearsal. Is there any great person who is at the rehearsal venue? Can someone do an audio recording of it for us? Begging for a recording. Ditto. It'll be great if we can listen to it early. At this moment, a Weibo user suddenly posted, Sure, I'm at the venue now and the dress rehearsal has already started. The third show is being rehearsed now and it's not too long until Zhong Yi and Yao Jinsai's crosstalk. If there's an opportunity, I'll secretly record a part of it and post it. Keep it a secret and don't go spreading this around yet. Wow. Thank you so much. My hero, please accept my worship. Be careful not to get found out. Meanwhile, when the news of Zhong Yi and Yao Jiansai performing a crosstalk for Beijing Television's Spring Festival Gala was exposed, voices of doubt from the crosstalk world were growing. Then, some of the disciples of the crosstalk world's leading figure, Tang Dazhang, and members of the crosstalk society started calling for a boycott. After last year's crosstalk and skit competition organized by Central TV, the denouncements and criticism by the crosstalk world against Zhong Yi had never stopped. It seemed like they were never going to give up doing so. One of Tang Dazhang's disciples, Beijing TV has stooped to a new low. Tang Dazhang's junior brother, it's definitely foolish to invite Zhong Yi to perform crosstalk. An old artist of the crosstalk world, Zhong Yi's crosstalk is not innovative at all. It's a degeneration of the art of crosstalk. Why would anyone actually invite him? This year's Spring Festival Gala will surely have to depend on Old Tang's crosstalk routine. Old Tang consulted with me on his routine. I've briefly seen it as well. It's really quite good, so everyone can look forward to it. The netizens immediately started criticizing in response. No matter what Zhong Yi does, you'll always sing a different tune anyway. A 60-person crosstalk routine? Forgive me if I'm not looking forward to it. One of Tang Dazhang's disciples who was slated to perform in the 60-person crosstalk routine for this year's Spring Festival Gala posted, Teacher's crosstalk this year will be a really boisterous one. It's also a subversive creation of his. There will even be a collaboration with Jinyun Dagu actresses during the performance. Good or bad, you will know after watching it. 1. Beijing Television. It was almost time. A staffer pushed open the door and said, Teacher Yao, Teacher Zhong, it's almost your turn. Okay. Yao Jinsai stood up and walked out of the waiting room with Zhong Yi. 
On the way to the stage, Old Yao handed his cell phone to Zhong Yi to show him the criticism on Weibo. There's really no end to it between the crosstalk world and you. Zhong Yi said in a speechless manner, there's even a Jin Yundagu performance in Tang Dazhang's crosstalk. Yao Jintsai said, it's even going to with female actresses. All right then. Zhong Yi laughed helplessly. I guess they've won. While waiting for their turn behind the stage, the two of them continued practicing their lines. Actually, they were just doing simple practice as Zhong Yi would rarely follow his lines during a crosstalk routine. Sometimes, when he thought of a joke, he would just directly throw it out to Yao Jintsai. As Yao Jintsai was very experienced and had a strong foundation, he would always manage to follow through each time. The two of them matched very well with each other and were truly the seasoned partners they were. Up front. On the main stage, it was busy as a large-scale acrobatics performance went on. Zhong Yi and Yao Jintsai were going to perform on a different stage that was smaller. As the next act was theirs, two microphone stands were already set up on stage. Dong Shanshan was also standing by to announce the next act. Nowadays, many of the Spring Festival Gala events employed two performance stages, a main stage and a secondary stage. As they were all broadcast live, many of the performances required larger props in greater quantities, and with just the brief moment of small talk by the hosts, there wasn't enough time to change the stage setup for the next performance. Therefore, using two stages was definitely more suitable in such cases. There were quite a few people seated in the audience. Compared with those empty seats, the number of people seated here was definitely not as much. But there were still over a hundred people who came, like those from the approval board, the executives and staff of Beijing Television, and some of the more popular celebrities who had finished their dress rehearsals. They were all seated in the audience to watch the next dress rehearsals. In the audience, Zhong Yi could see his ex-colleagues like Hu Fei, Xiao Lu, Da Fei, Hu Ji Yi, and Hu Di. He also noticed some familiar faces like executive director Chang Xiaoyong and a friendly and kind old lady the current station head of Beijing Television who Zhong Yi had crossed paths with when they worked on the Quit Smoking PSA from back then. Suddenly, the music stopped. The acrobatics performance on the main stage ended. The cameras focused over on Dong Shanshan as she started chatting with the male host beside her. The male host said, the acrobatics performance just now was really exciting. Dong Shanshan replied, that's right, I was shuddering in fear as I watched them. I was really worried for them as they performed their stunts. The male host remarked, ha ha, they're all professionals, so they definitely won't have any trouble. Dong Shanshan smiled. However, our next two performers always seem to get into trouble. The male host paused for a moment, then said, if you have to put it that way, I won't refute it. The station head and staff in the audience were all laughing. The station head smiled and said, who wrote that into the script? A deputy station head smiled as he shook his head. Chang Xiaoyong answered, they decided on the script themselves. I only scanned through it once. Xiao Lu whispered to the person beside her, it's teacher Zhong's turn. Da Fei said excitedly, I've been waiting for this all morning. Hu Ji was waving his cell phone around as he laughed and commented, look, those crosstalk world people are scolding teacher Zhong again. Hu Di said, I wonder what kind of segment teacher Zhong will perform this year. Today's just a rehearsal to work out the show's lineup duration. To keep the actual performance a secret, we've told them that they can say whatever they want when they go on stage. What they'll be joking about will just be a fake performance, Hu Fei explained. Xiao Lu said in surprise, then wouldn't it be boring to watch? Da Fei also lost his excitement and said, damn, why is it not the real performance used for the Spring Festival Gala? Hu Fei laughed. If you want something interesting to watch, you have to wait until the actual day of the Spring Festival Gala. No one had noticed that someone in the audience had secretly placed their hand into their pocket, pressing some buttons blindly to activate the audio recorder. The person did not care whether it was going to be a real or fake performance. As long as it was Zhong Yi's crosstalk, it would definitely be a mistake to not record it. Chapter 856, You're really saying whatever just because we said you could say whatever? On stage. The spotlights shone. Everyone had their attention on the two who were about to come on stage. Although it was only a dress rehearsal today, all of the cameras, lights, stage effects, 
and staff were exactly as they would be for the actual Spring Festival Gala event to be held on the first day of the Spring Festival. Other than the audience being different, everything else was kept as it would be for the event. For Zhong Yi, this was his first time performing crosstalk at such a large-scale gala, so he felt rather awed. It was the same for Yao Jintsai since this would be his first time appearing on a spring festival gala and his first time rehearsing for it. Old Yao even appeared to be rather nervous at all of this. Applause rang out. Xiao Lu, Dafei, and the others also made a lot of effort to clap as loud as they could. Even the station head was smiling as she clapped. The atmosphere at the venue was almost similar to that of the actual day of the Spring Festival Gala. Only then did Zhong Yi and Yao Jintsai step up on stage, walking past Dong Shanshan and the male host. Dong Shanshan even gave him a smile as they passed each other. The earlier delivery of the host's lines was not made known to Zhong Yi prior, as they made a subtle jab at Zhong Yi between the two performances. However, how would someone like Zhong Yi take this line down just like that? No one had expected it, but he began his counterattack the moment he got on stage. Yao Jintsai had just positioned himself in front of the microphone and delivered his lines with a wide smile, as per his discussion with Zhong Yi earlier. Happy New Year, everyone! But Zhong Yi's first sentence had already deviated from the script. He looked angrily to the left and the right and said, Don't be so anxious to do your New Year greetings. Where is the security team? Where's the security team? Yao Jintsai was stunned. Why are you calling security? Zhong Yi turned around and faced Dong Shanshan and the other host. Take them away. Everyone watching immediately laughed when they heard this. Dong Shanshan adorably winked at him several times. The male host was taken aback a little as he threw his hands up to plead innocence. Yao Jintsai asked, What have they done that you want them to be taken away? Zhong Yi returned, what did they mean by saying that, those two always seem to get into trouble? Who were they referring to? Yao Jintsai laughed. That's right. We never get in trouble. Zhong Yi spoke in a serious tone, when we get introduced in the future, please remove the words seem to. Ah? That means we always get into trouble. Yao Jintsai sighed. Dong Shanshan giggled. The male host couldn't hold in his laughter either. Everyone in the audience also laughed. Chang Xiaoyong knew that this couldn't have been prearranged and was definitely a spontaneous reaction from the two crosstalk comedians. He couldn't refrain from offering his praise. His reaction was too quick, dropping those jokes on the spot on stage. The assistant director added, Teacher Yao also took the joke well. They're indeed seasoned partners, so understanding of each other. Xiao Lu clapped excitedly. After such an opening, Yao Jintsai finally became more relaxed and was no longer as tense. He had been brought into performance mode by Zhong Yi's joke, which made him feel a little ashamed of himself. He might be much older than Zhong Yi, but when they were on stage, he still had to depend on Zhong Yi to dictate their rhythm. Off stage. Someone from the approval board said, look at Weibo, there are people criticizing Zhong Yi right now. Another staff member said, yeah, even our Beijing TV was dragged in and criticized as well. It's that group of people who are siding with Tang Dazhang again. Some people from the Central TV Spring Festival Gala program team have also joined in. Those people really don't know when to stop, do they? What does all this have to do with them? Does it affect them so much who we invite onto our show? Why do they care so much? A lot of people knew in advance that today was just going to be a dress rehearsal, so Zhong Yi and Yao Jintsai were just going to put on a fake performance and just randomly say anything they wanted. Even if they stood on stage and said nothing to just pass the time, or if they performed an old crosstalk they'd done before, all of it would be fine. The intention of the rehearsal was just to let them get a feel of the venue and duration of their performance, so there was no need to get all serious about it. As such, most of the people did not take this seriously either, with some of them checking their cell phones and others whispering to discuss Zhong Yi's denouncement by the people from Central TV and the crosstalk world. But very quickly, everyone's attention was pulled back to the stage. This was due to them realizing that Zhong Yi and Yao Jintsai were actually doing a new crosstalk performance in all seriousness. Yao Jintsai reminded, don't get distracted by other things and let's give the audience our New Year greetings first. But Zhong Yi wore a listless look. 
Okay. Yao Jinsai looked at him and said, Your greetings? Zhong Yi mulled over it for a bit. Um. Are you still sleeping or what? So many people have already performed already and they were so exciting to watch too. Why do you still look so listless? Zhong Yi smirked and then nudged his chin toward backstage. You're referring to the acrobatics from earlier? Yes, it was a really good performance. What's so good about that acrobatics performance? It's only child's play. I saw an acrobatics performance on Central TV's Spring Festival Gala before. That's what you call a performance. Central TV's Spring Festival Gala? Why are you bringing up Central TV's Spring Festival Gala? Everyone was stunned. Yao Jinsai asked, what did they perform? Zhong Yi gestured wildly. There was a girl who led a tiger around on stage. Then she held a piece of candy between her lips and the tiger came over with its mouth wide open to peck the candy away from her. Yao Jinsai was shocked. Ah? A tiger? Peck a piece of candy away? Yes. Isn't that really exciting to watch then? Zhong Yi snorted. What's so exciting about it? But it should be really exciting to watch. Zhong Yi cut him off. What's so exciting about that? I can do it too. Yao Jinsai was taken aback by this claim. You can do it too. Yes, I can do it too. Then why don't you do it and show us? I'll do it if you insist. Zhong Yi raised his hand and beckoned for someone to come over. Someone, please lead that tiger away. The crowd was stunned. Yao Jinsai finally reacted and said, Nonsense. I can also perform with that girl. Zhong Yi quickly said, I called dibs, so I get to do it first. Yao Jinsai said, Who's arguing with you? Everyone in the audience all burst out laughing at this moment. Ha 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 ha. So you were actually referring to yourself pecking the candy away. Hu Ji and Hu Di were slapping their thighs as they laughed. Executive Director Chang Xiaolion was also keeled over in laughter. The station head and several station executives also laughed so hard that they couldn't open their eyes. Yao Jinsai declared, I think I get it. Have you been in a bad mood recently? Zhong Yi chuckled. It would be a wonder if my mood was good. Things have always been rough for me since I was young. I've never succeeded in anything I did. Yao Jinsai said, it takes time to become successful. Zhong Yi gestured. I've always been learning since I was young, always reading books. That's a good thing. The ancients said it well. A book holds a face as smooth as jade. Yao Jinsai exclaimed, ah? What about the houses of gold? Zhong Yi gave him a look. What are the houses of gold? A book holds a house of gold. Zhong Yi nodded. Oh, what you're saying makes sense too. Without a house of gold, where would the ladies stay? Yao Jinsai blurted, were you only aiming to get the ladies when you were reading your books? Zhong Yi looked at him as if he were a fool. Of course, why else would anyone read? Yao Jinsai was almost speechless by now. Hey yo, oh, so you were only reading because of that? Just what sort of books have you been reading? I'll return them to you later. When did I lend you any books? Quite a number of people in the audience were having a great time. Foot, ha 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 ha. Don't talk to me, let me laugh it off for the next 10 minutes. Hey yo, how amusing. Weren't they just supposed to be saying whatever? Wasn't it supposed to be a fake performance? Why did these two churn out a new crosstalk performance then? Dafei was furiously whistling in the audience, ignoring whoever was giving him looks. Zhong Yi sighed. I wasn't successful when I was young, but even after growing up, I still wasn't successful. What happened after you grew up? I'm not as capable and can't compete with others. Just look at that one crosstalk comedian who managed to get onto Central TV's Spring Festival Gala. Zhong Yi then became more careful with his words. But let's not mention any names or say who he is. Yao Jiantsai nodded. Right, there's no need to mention names. Zhong Yi stated, it's that Tang Dade who is about one. Eight meters tall and can fill up a box and a half with his ashes, 47 years old, male, and born on June 2nd. 
His citizen ID card number is 330. Yao Jintsai jumped in shock. Whoa. Didn't you say not to mention any names? But you've even read out his citizen ID card number. Hey yo. Everyone was cramping up with laughter. Tang Dade? Tang Dajang? Pfft. It's starting again. Zhong Yi the trickster was at it again. Zhong Yi said, just look at how famous that person is. He has fame and can earn money so easily. When he goes to the countryside to perform, he only needs to say a few words. A few words? Yes, just a few words. For example, if he goes to Taiwan, he only needs to sing, Taiwan, oh, Taiwan, my hometown, then bow before getting off the stage and that's it. But he's actually not a Taiwan native at all. So when he goes to Jinan, it's the same thing as well. He sings Jinan, oh, Jinan, my hometown, then bows before getting off the stage again. He only needs to do that and he receives his payment. How easy can it get? Yao Jintsai blinked and asked, then what if he goes to Jiamusi? It will be the same. Jiamusi, oh, Jiamusi, my hometown. If he goes to Uremi? Zhongyi sang, Uremi, oh, Uremi, my hometown. Yao Jintsai pondered for a moment before trying to trick him. What if he goes to Buenos Aires? There were already some audience members starting to laugh. Johnny was a little startled before he began to sing, Bueno, Bu, Ahem. Then, with a wave of his hands, he smirked and said, Don't worry, a comedian like him won't be able to go international. Yao Jintsai laughed. That's true. It's not possible with a crawlstalk routine like that. Don't you look down on him. With that crawlstalk routine of his, if he were to say it over and over for all of his life, do you know how many people would have already heard of it? Do you know how many prostate disease sufferers he has already cured? Ah? Prostate disease sufferers? When he's performing crawlstalk, he's actually healing the sick. With that mouth of his, all prostate disease sufferers immediately piss their pants from laughing. Ah? That's why I don't go and listen to Tang Dade's live crawlstalk routines. Why not? Zhong Yi spelled out, because I can't swim. I would definitely drown on the spot. At this moment, everyone in the audience realized that Zhong Yi and Yao Jintsai must have seen those Weibo posts before they got up on stage. Xiao Lu laughed, wah ha 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 ha. Several of the cameramen were also laughing so hard that they nearly cried. Hu Fei didn't know whether to laugh or cry. When I told you and Yao Jintsai to say whatever you wanted, that wasn't what I meant. It was just a figure of speech. But you're really taking it seriously now. You're really fucking saying whatever you want. Zhong Yi was really letting himself loose this time. Since it was going to be a fake performance, then it wouldn't matter what he said. As a result, he didn't have to hold back. And frankly, he was just here to have fun today. He only needed to satisfy himself by saying whatever he wanted. On the day of Beijing Television Spring Festival Gala, he would surely not be allowed to perform such a crawlstalk. But if it were a private affair like now, who would care? However, unknown to everyone else at the venue, there was someone who was recording the whole thing. That person was trembling with excitement as he stood in the corner. He could never have expected that a fake performance during a dress rehearsal would actually be so full of content. He could no longer hold back and immediately posted the audio recording secretly onto the internet. Chapter 857, Splendid. On Weibo. A lot of people from the crawlstalk world were still criticizing Zhong Yi and Yao Jintsai. The ones who were doing most of the criticizing were a few of the veteran comedians from the crawlstalk world, and the people from Tang Dajang's crawlstalk society. An old crawlstalk actor, the crawlstalk world will never acknowledge him. The people who supported Zhong Yi and Yao Jintsai came out to return the criticism. Suddenly, someone exclaimed, Ah, an audio recording. What audio recording? What's happening? Someone has posted an audio recording. It's from Beijing TV's Spring Festival Gala rehearsal. Oh, it really is. Damn, this is an audio recording of Teacher Zhong and Teacher Yao's crawlstalk. Ayo, which hero posted it? Well done. I'll go and listen to it now. Link please. Where did you guys get it? 
Ha ha ha, I found it too. I'm listening to it right now. Those who were at the dress rehearsal hall did not know about the leak. The crawlstalk routine was still going on. John Yi calmly continued, that's why people say that crawlstalk is a cure for all diseases. It was especially effective for those prostate disease sufferers. Yao Jintsai sighed, hi. But for those who are interested in going and watching his crawlstalk live, please take caution. As long as it is a venue hosting teacher Tang's crawlstalk performance, there will usually be a sign at the entrance written in bold red letters, none members of the swimming association, please be extremely careful. Yao Jintsai chuckled. This is the first time I'm hearing that you'd need to learn swimming first if you want to listen to a crawlstalk routine. Zhong Yi nodded his head seriously and replied, right, just like the high entry barriers to get into this industry, the entry barriers to listen to it are also very high. Crawlstalk is an art that carries a high risk of danger. Some of the jokes were directly retrieved from his memory using the memory search capsules, while some of them were adapted and changed for use on the spot. Everyone in the audience was cramping up with laughter. Ha 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 ha. Yao Jintsai shook his head and remarked, that mouth of yours is too wicked. Zhong Yi said, but his popularity is still very high. Yao Jintsai sighed. With this kind of standard, how popular can he be? But he is. Previously, there was a woman who recovered from her prostate disease after listening to his crawlstalk and presented a silk banner to teacher Tang. A woman? How can a woman suffer from such a disease? Why not? Women don't suffer from such a disease. Anyway, she still got teacher Tang a silk banner. What kind of a silk banner? There were two big words written on it, kinky hands. The entire audience laughed even louder. Yao Jintsai quickly corrected, you mean healing hands. Zhong Yi gave a long, oh, before saying, perhaps I remembered wrong then. I'm sorry that my knowledge is limited, but I just feel really envious of him. Is that so? Yeah, he can use crawlstalk to earn money. Really? Moreover, this industry is really good too since the people in it are very united. The crawlstalk world was united? When everyone in the audience heard that, they started howling. Yi! 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 Although it was only a dress rehearsal, the staff and people from the approval board for the Spring Festival Gala were all very supportive. They truly enjoyed it and couldn't help but shout out their feelings before bursting into laughter. In the outside world. Tang Dazhang's home. Tang Dazhang had been rehearsing for his performance for the past few days at home. His house had quite a lot of people streaming in and out every day, as they all made the final sprint for the Spring Festival Gala performance. At this moment, an industry peer from the crawlstalk world called. Old Tang. Ha ha, old Sunday. Get online quickly. I was just rehearsing with my disciple, what's the matter? Zhong Yi's crawlstalk routine on Beijing TV's Spring Festival Gala has been leaked. Ah? That bastard is scolding people again. What? After Tang Dazhang hung up, his disciple and some colleagues who were with him also heard about the news. They all had sunken expressions as they went online to search for the audio recording. They wanted to know what exactly Zhong Yi had said at Beijing TV's Spring Festival Gala dress rehearsal. Scolding? A Spring Festival Gala was a live broadcast event. How would he have the courage to scold people on it? How was that possible? At a different location. At the homes of several crawlstalk world veterans, their telephones were also ringing. M. Master Shu, John Yi is stirring up trouble. What did he do? Go online and take a look. At the venue of the performance. Yao Jintsai was laughing. He. John Yi stated, the industry's people are also kind-hearted, always outperforming good deeds. Performing what kinds of good deeds? For example, some years ago during that earthquake, the crawlstalk world went out together to make a donation. Several veteran crawlstalk comedians brought their disciples and grand disciples amounting to over a hundred people to the Red Cross. The leading veteran comedian said, even though we earn money very quickly and easily through our crawlstalk, we are also limited by our earnings that cannot be compared to the tycoons who are worth millions and billions. Yao Jintsai nodded. Indeed, that is very true. 
if we're expected to donate 300 to 500 million, we really don't have such money to speak of. Yao Jintai waved his hands. There's no need for that much. It's the thought that counts. Right, 3 to 5 yuan is also a thought. We can't compare to others. Yao Jintai nodded. That's right, and there's no need to compare others. Here, take this. This is the 3 yuan from me. Then another veteran comedian followed behind saying, and here is my 3 yuan as well. Everyone was rushing to donate. Yao Jintai was dumbfounded. They really donated 3 yuan? It was about the crawstalk world again. He was scolding the crawstalk world again. A lot of people below the stage suddenly jolted, especially Xiao Lu, Dafei, and the others who were most livened up, laughing the loudest. Zhang Yi pretended to grab something. After making their donations, these people grabbed a dozen or so candles to light up and hold in their hands. They would give a fist pump to whomever they came across and shout, stay strong, to them. Whoa, they donated three yuan and grabbed over a dozen candles. How can a person hold a dozen of those anyway? Zhang Yi gave Yao Jintai a strange look. Not all of them were lighted. They only lighted one. They stowed the rest in their pockets. Ah? They took them? Aren't they making a profit then? A flurry of laughs rang out. At this moment, a staff member came running to look for executive director Chang Xiaoyong to inform him about the preparations made for the next performance on the main stage. Director Chang, the preparations over there, before he could finish, Chang Xiaoyong cut him off without even looking at him. He raised a hand and said without looking at him, if there's anything you want to tell me, do it later. Let's finish watching this performance first. That person could only stand there and listen to the crosstalk performance as well. Zhang Yi said, after a short while, a group of laborists came along and donated a thousand yuan each. Whoa, that much? Those people from the crosstalk world gave a fist pump to them and shouted, stay strong. Yao Jintai sighed, hi. Following that, a form teacher brought a group of elementary school students over and each of them donated 5,000 yuan each. The elementary school students donated 5,000 yuan? The crosstalk world people raised their candles and stood on both sides of them saying, stay strong. Yao Jintai rolled his eyes. It wasn't necessary for them to say all that. Finally, a group of women came. They were special service staff from a cabaret and every one of them was dressed very beautifully. Which profession is that? Each of them donated 50,000 yuan to the cause. Yao Jintai exclaimed, they donated that much. However, the staff of the Red Cross showed them a disdainful look. They said right there, take it back, we don't want such dirty money. The people in the audience were listening earnestly, not sure what the gag was about. Zhang Yi followed up with, in the end, those veteran crosstalk comedians raged and shouted, what do you mean, dirty money? That's all our hard-earned money. When the punchline was delivered, everyone in the audience laughed madly. Pfft. Hard-earned money? Ha 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 ha. Hey yo. I can't breathe. Can't breathe. Ha 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 ha. Yao Jintai also supported the performance very well. Oh, so they donated the majority of their money over there instead. 30% teasing, 70% supporting. This golden rule of the crawstalk world was not to say that the fall guy was more important than the leading role, nor that the role of the fall guy was more difficult to perform than the lead. What it expressed was that whether a gag could achieve its maximum potential depended on the support given by the fall guy. It took up a greater proportion of the formula for success. The better it was supported, the greater the effect of the gag. When everyone heard that, they laughed even harder. Over on the side, a few Beijing television staff who were working and not watching the performance from the audience but could hear it were also clutching their stomachs, unable to control themselves from laughing. They dropped all the work they were doing and just looked over to the secondary stage area and listened to Zhong Yi's scolding. Dong Shanshan and the male host were both roaring with laughter. There were staff below the stage giving time cues to indicate that they still had five minutes to perform. Zhong Yi was actually constantly watching the clock and counting down. He would adjust his bits according to the time. Therefore, I also learned and took up crosstalk. Yao Jintai smiled. 
you also started doing crosstalk? John Yi said depressing, however, it was only when I started that I realized how difficult it was to perform crosstalk. The competition in this industry was too intense and if you were to just go on stage with two people to perform a down-to-earth crosstalk, you certainly couldn't outdo others. Yao Jintz I asked, why not? They're full of tricks and surprises. Some crosstalk comedian even invited a bunch of Jinyun Dagu actresses to go on stage with them and accompany them. Yao Jintsai, ah? There's even such a form of crosstalk? Jinyun Dagu? Actresses? Immediately, everyone was reminded of Tang Dajang's Spring Festival Gala crosstalk routine. All those actresses would be dressed in kipaos. Zhang Yi pointed to his own armpits. And they are surely going to be very airy with the side slits opening up all the way to the armpits. Yao Jintsai said in surprise, oh boy, then isn't that the same as draping curtains over yourself and coming out? Zhang Yi clicked his tongue and pointed out in wonder, I don't know why, but it seemed like the tickets to the side stand sold particularly well. Ha ha ha. Yi. Yi. The crowd once again howled with laughter. Yao Jintsai smacked his lips and replied, Heh, I wonder if they're there to see the Jinyun Dagu performance or see a show of thighs. Hey yo. Ha 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 ha. Some people even got tired from laughing too much, but could not stop at all. Zhang Yi sighed and spoke, Later, a friend of mine told me that I couldn't keep going on like this. If I wanted to become popular and famous, then I would have to at least get on Central TV's Spring Festival Gala. Once I get onto their Spring Festival Gala, I will shoot to fame overnight. Central TV's Spring Festival Gala? Hu Fei was stunned. Yao Jintsai agreed, indeed. He has a lot of connections and knew the director of Central TV's Spring Festival Gala, so he introduced me to the director. But when the director saw me, he said that the show list had already been fully scheduled and that there was no place for me anymore. So I was told to take on some work for the time being and do some cleaning or deliver box lunches. He even asked me to walk his dog. See, I even have to walk his dog now, how degrading. That is considered standard crew work. I had to walk his dog every day, but the lousy dog would always stop after a few steps before going again. I was then led to a watch shop where I asked a watchmaker to have a look at why it stopped every few steps. I asked why it was happening. But the watchmaker said that it would be fine and to just apply some grease on it. Hey! What does that have anything to do with applying grease? After I got it fixed, the director was so happy. Huh, no one could fix that dog all this while, yet I managed to get it fixed. I was now his trusted aide and was told to stay close to him. Yao Jintsai replied, that's great. So I waited and pondered over and over about which performance I could take. Heh, it seemed that there was a 400-person crosstalk routine I could take part in. What? 400 persons? This was clearly a swipe at Tang Dajang's Spring Festival Gala crosstalk routine. At once, everyone in the audience was getting more and more excited. Xiao Lu laughed loudly while slapping her thigh. Da Fei kept shouting, what a wonderful performance this is. It's splendid. Ha 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 ha. Zhong Yi answered, yes, 400 persons. Yao Jintsai shook his head. Impossible, there's no such crosstalk at all. Zhong Yi looked at him. Why not? What do you call a crosstalk performed by one person? Stand up. What about by two persons? Crosstalk. And three persons? Group crosstalk. Zhang Yi said, so then, what do you call a crosstalk between 400 persons? Yao Jintsai asked, what? Zhang Yi answered, it's called a Spring Festival Gala crosstalk. Is that so? Only Central TV's Spring Festival Gala would have such a performance. Yao Jintsai sighed, hi. A Spring Festival Gala crosstalk? Everyone's mouths were stiff from laughing. Ayo, he was even making fun of Central TV now. John Yi explained, a 400-person mass crosstalk performance will gather crosstalk comedians from all over the country in one location. The stage setup will consist of a mock-up of a mountain on this side, a stream over here, with a pool over there. Then a helicopter in the sky will scatter 100 of those crosstalk comedians, each of them wearing a parachute. When they land they will wave at the audience. 
while another 100 of them will emerge from the waters here. Finally, a rickshaw will pull in with the lead standing in it. The first thing he says will be, we meet again, my friends. Wasn't that Tang Dajong's catchphrase? Hu Fei was constantly smiling wryly. He did not know what he could say anymore. All he knew was that no matter what, he must never offend someone like Zhong Yi. This guy's mouth was simply too harsh. As the performance starts, everyone gets into their position. Then the lead of the crawlstalk says, please repeat this after me backwards. Ye new happier everyone wish to happy very are we. Everyone will say together after him, we are very happy to wish everyone a happy new year. And with a bow, the crawlstalk performance will finish. Yao Jintsai was stunned. That's it? Zhong Yi excitedly slapped his thigh. I believe that I could do a performance like that too because even those dimwits could handle it. Yao Jintsai replied, that's right. Ha ha ha. Even those dimwits could handle it. Pfft. This is cracking me up. Zhong Yi said excitedly, I'll do it, I'll join this performance. Then the director told me that I couldn't join the performance yet as all those 400 people had supporters. But if anyone quit, I could replace them. So I kept waiting and waiting, waiting for the opportunity that someone would quit so I could take their place. There were so many things going on at the venue and I had to deliver the boxed lunches every day. One day at a rehearsal, attended by several thousand people, a woman had to give birth and created such a big commotion. If you were about to give birth, you should have just stayed at home, why are you here attending the rehearsal with several thousand others? Right. So I called for an ambulance and brought her out to the ambulance after the baby was born. When it was done, I came back and handled everything, including clearing up the place. In the end, my chance came on that day. What chance? The 400-person crawlstalk routine of course. Didn't I mention that there were 100 crawlstalk comedians parachuting out of a plane? One of their parachutes failed to open. Yao Jintsai was startled. Hey yo! Snap! But luckily. He was fine. He died. Yao Jintsai reeled. Why would you say luckily if he died? Yet another wave of laughter roared through the hall. Zhong Yi hastily said, seeing that it was really happening, I turned around and went to look for the director. I told him, let me replace him, let me do it. But the director told me, you're too late, the person who pushed him out of the plane has already replaced him. Yao Jintsai exclaimed, that's too cruel. Aren't they really cruel? They totally didn't give me a chance, so I went to look for my friend to rant. I told him that this wasn't working out, that all I had been doing every day was toiling for them. I even had to take care of the woman giving birth, yet they didn't give me a chance at all. In the end, my friend told me, you're not thick-skinned enough. If you want to become famous and get on the Spring Festival Gala, then you ought to be more thick-skinned. You have to be shameless, you know? Yao Jintsai replied, ah? To get on the Spring Festival Gala? Have to be shameless? Ye. The reaction of the audience was sounding again. There was wild laughter coming from all directions. The station head had to facepalm as she laughed. That little Jong. A deputy station head was also cramping up from laughing beside her. It was full of references to the internal affairs behind Central TV's Spring Festival Gala that were already quite an open secret in the industry. Jong Yi's remarks had completely triggered their laughter. Only to hear Zhong Yi ponder aloud on stage, if I'm not shameless, how can I learn? When I think about it, it seems that I should learn from the woman who gave birth at the rehearsal hall. Hey, with thousands of people watching her give birth, I'm sure she has thick enough skin, right? Yao Jintsai was taken aback but then started laughing. Oh right, she's thick-skinned enough. Zhong Yi fist-pumped. Right, I'll go find her then. After asking around, I went straight to the hospital. When I got there, I found her sitting on her hospital bed crying. Aya, sob sob, there were thousands of people who saw me at the Spring Festival Gala rehearsal giving birth. Yao Jintsai laughed. A, so she knows to be embarrassed too? Zhong Yi chuckled. So I hurriedly tried to console her and tell her it wasn't a big deal. 
I told her that there was someone who gave birth to a child in front of 20,000 people in Tiananmen Square, during the celebration of the successful Olympic bid. Yao Jintsai was amused. Yeah. But in the end, when the woman heard that, she cried even harder and said, Aya, yeah, that was me too. Yao Jintsai was dumbfounded. Ah. It was also her. Ha 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 ha. Time's up. The ending came at just the right time. Zhong Yi and Yao Jintsai bowed to the audience while beaming. Suddenly, a flood of applause and laughter rang out and filled the entire hall. Great. Well said. Ha 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 ha. That's so awesome. Ayo, I nearly died from laughing. Well scolded. The station head shook her head, not knowing if she should clap for him. Chang Xiaoyong stood up applauding. Hu Ji, Hu Ji, Xiao Lu, and the others were even screaming as they clapped. This crosstalk did not let anyone who was listening to it have a lapse in concentration. The entire act was full of laughing points. Zhang Yi exited the stage. Music started playing over at the main stage area as the secondary stage for the language performances was temporarily emptied. As they walked past each other, the male host quickly asked, Teacher Zhong, Teacher Yao, what is the title of your crosstalk? Zhong Yi answered with a smile, I want to get on the Spring Festival Gala. The male host immediately gave him a thumbs up. I really have to give it to you. What a good title. Dong Shanshan also laughed when she heard it and gave Zhong Yi a thumbs up as well. If this crosstalk of yours were to be broadcast, you'd surely make quite a few people from the crosstalk world die from anger. Zhong Yi blinked at that. Then would that count as me ridding the world of evil? Yao Jintsai gave him a light push and laughed. Rid what evil, you? In the eyes of everyone, you're the truly evil one. The performance was complete. Everyone was left wanting more. Although the people of Beijing Television knew it was only a rehearsal that would definitely not pass for the live broadcast on the actual day of the Spring Festival Gala, they still gave their most enthusiastic applause. This applause was dedicated to the exquisite art of crosstalk and also a sign of respect to the two teachers Zhong Yi and Yao Jintsai. Splendid. It was really wonderful. This art form has totally been revived by Zhong Yi. Chapter 858, no one's ever been a match when it comes to scolding. On the way to the backstage. Yao Jintsai laughed and said, I got such a kick out of performing that segment. Zhong Yi was also tickled. Yeah, it was a rare opportunity for us to say whatever we we liked. It's been so long since we have scolded the Crawstalk Society. I got such a kick out of scolding them this time. It's a pity that it can't get broadcast, Yao Jintsai said regrettably. Zhong Yi replied, it's no big deal even if it gets broadcast. Yao Jintsai rolled his eyes. No big deal, my ass. If that got broadcast, our troubles would get even bigger. Remember what happened after we scolded the crosstalk world during the crosstalk and skit competition with our three performances? That group of people kept criticizing us for an entire year because of it. If our performance today gets broadcast, do you think the furor it would cause would be small? Besides, who would willingly broadcast a crosstalk like that for us? It's something that we could only say behind closed doors at today's venue. Zhong Yi seethed, even if we stopped performing crosstalk, do you think they would stop scolding us? Um, that's true. Yao Jintsai shook his head and laughed. I think the nickname of public enemy of the Chinese crosstalk world belongs to the both of us and we'll never be able to clear ourselves of it in this lifetime. Zhong Yi said indifferently, so what if we're their public enemy? It's just a small thing. Yao Jintsai laughed loudly. You don't feel it's a big deal because you're already used to all this. Suddenly, they overheard the voices of several staff members who were walking toward them. They sounded rather panicked, as if something had happened. Zhong Yi narrowed his eyes. What's the matter? Looks like something has happened? Yao Jintsai also wondered, curious. However, when the two of them listened carefully, they realized that those people were actually discussing about the two of them. Shit! It's blown up this time. Why would it be leaked and get uploaded onto the internet? Who the hell posted it? Isn't this stirring the pot? The netizens are already making a ruckus over it. 
I heard that they're going to start with the scolding soon. Nonsense, how could they possibly not be scolding? I watched Teacher Jong and Teacher Yao's crosstalk backstage on screen just now and they insulted both Central TV's Spring Festival Gala and the crosstalk world's people at once. The few of them rushed past without noticing that Zhong Yi and Yao Jintsai were there. Zhong Yi was surprised for a moment, what? It got posted online? Yao Jintsai exclaimed loudly, who posted it? The two of them and everyone at Beijing Television did not expect such a thing to occur. Over at the stage. Someone who had found out about the problem rushed to report it to the executives. Upon hearing that, an assistant director of Beijing Television Spring Festival Gala broke out in cold sweat. What? Hu Fei was also stunned. How did it get leaked? Chang Xiaoyong was furious. Who was the one who recorded the audio with their phone in here? Go and find out who it is. Everyone started looking around trying to find that person, but how was that possible? Xiao Lu hesitated for a moment. Dafei blinked several times as he became worried for Zhong Yi. A deputy director of the Spring Festival Gala said, if this crosstalk gets exposed to the public, even if people know that it won't be broadcast on our Spring Festival Gala, there will still be a feud formed between the program teams of our Spring Festival Gala and Central TV's Spring Festival Gala. Station Head Station Head What do we do now? Everyone looked at the station head for directions. The old lady appeared very calm as she looked at everyone. T we already expect that such a thing would happen? Wasn't that why we got Zhong Yi and Yao Jintsai to give a fake performance? Wasn't all of this done to prevent the real performance from being revealed beforehand? Since we were already prepared, what's there to panic about? It's not even the real performance. The rehearsals continued. The next performances gradually started. When the other station heads and staff heard that, they could only return to their seats while still feeling anxious. Some of them were watching the next performance, while some others were on their cell phones browsing Weibo to get immediate updates on the development of events. Online. Zhong Yi and Yao Jintsai's new crosstalk routine was already getting a lot of traffic. It was like many of the netizens were on stimulants. As they listened to the crosstalk, they were shouting out in excitement. And as they shouted out in excitement, they posted their comments online. Ha 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 ha. I can't take it anymore. I'm dying of laughter. Even the prostate disease sufferers peed their pants? That was all our hard-earned money? Hey yo. Please let me laugh a little longer. Ha 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 ha. How could it be so funny? Zhong Yi, Old Yao, I like the both of you so much. They're indeed the best match duo in the crosstalk world. Damn it, I've never heard such a comical crosstalk before. That's right. After listening to Zhong Yi and Yao Jintsai's crosstalk, I won't be able to laugh anymore when I listen to the other crosstalk comedians' jokes. The standard of their crosstalk is leading the art by years. Tang Dajang has been shot again. This isn't just a gunshot. He was hit by an intercontinental ballistic missile. Pfft. I suppose Tang Dajang has fainted at home by now. The scolding was too awesome. The scolding made me feel really good. Central TV's Spring Festival Gala has also suffered Zhong Yi's violent treachery. Zhong Yi's mouth is really the most sarcastic mouth in the entire country. Those who have offended him must have had all the bad luck from their past eight lifetimes befall on them all at once. They would be scolded until they vomit blood. Ayo, this is too funny. With just one of his works, he has already shown who is better. That group of people from the crosstalk world only know how to scold Zhong Yi online, and their scolding is not even that great. They are constantly using the same old lines in different ways to say that, we will not acknowledge you. But just look at how teacher Zhong effortlessly produced a routine to return the scolding straight at them. Not only did he use it to scold them, he even littered it with so many jokes that the audience was laughing throughout its delivery. This is what being high level is about. Ha ha, speaking of scolding people, Zhong Yi is the grandmaster of it. Yeah, are there any people in the country who could outscold him? This bunch of crosstalk world members keep choosing to forget their lessons. They were already scolded by Zhong Yi like they were dogs in the crosstalk competition previously, what about this time? 
You people still wish to provoke him? When have you ever seen Zhong Yi eat humble pie? Damn, is Zhong Yi really going to say this at Beijing Television Spring Festival Gala? Will they allow this to be broadcast? Surely not, right? They would definitely not because this is definitely the fucking fake performance. Right, it must be a fake performance. Teacher Zhong just randomly gave a fake performance and it was more than enough to savage the crawstalk world. Ha ha ha, I'll have to listen to it again. Me too. I can't get enough of listening to it. I've already heard it three times. This really fucking vents all my anger. Zhong Yi is right, there's hardly anyone who is a good person in the domestic crawstalk world. Scold. 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 Come on. This crawstalk routine had caused a very big stir on the internet. At Tang Da Zhang's home. The group of crawstalk actors who were rehearsing and studying for their Central TV's Spring Festival Gala performance all looked furious. Some of their faces had turned white, some had turned black, and there was even some that had turned green. A crawstalk comedian banged his hand on the table and shouted, This is too much. One of Tang Da Zhang's disciples said angrily, They have no regard for the rules. No regard for the rules. Tang Da Zhang muttered two names tersely. Zhong Yi. Yao Jiantsai. We can't just let this go. Someone said, they're standing over our heads and shitting on us. Someone echoed, right, we have yet to settle the score with them. It's definitely not settled yet. Everyone was exploding with anger. They were not afraid. This crawstalk has given them too much of a scolding. But as for how they were going to settle the score with Zhong Yi, no one could give a definite answer. In the past, it was not like there were no one who would challenge them by publicly questioning and criticizing the crawstalk world, but under the lead of a few highly qualified veteran comedians of the crawstalk world, those crawstalk organizations under them would just do as they were told. They would resort to boycotting, banning, or reporting a crawstalk comedian to ensure that they wouldn't survive in the art, because this world was basically dictated by just a few veteran comedians. Being one of the leaders in the current crawstalk world, Tang Da Zhang was now one of those who could call the shots. However, it was different for Zhong Yi and Yao Jintsai. Yao Jintsai was an actor and it was not possible to control him. Zhong Yi was also the same. He did not need to perform in a small theater and neither did he attend any large-scale commercial events. His main profession was host, director and producer of shows, author, song composer, and even teacher. Even if all the people in their crawstalk world were to jointly report and boycott him, there wouldn't be any significant impact. This outcome had already been proven at last year's crawstalk competition. They had no means whatsoever to deal with John Yi. A crawstalk comedian suggested, by saying, that was all our hard-earned money, it constitutes slander. If we really want to blow up the matter, we can sue him. That's right. Sue him. This is definitely slander. The group was whipped up into a frenzy. Then, an 18 year old disciple of Tang Da Zhang's nervously made a sudden and untimely remark. Isn't Zhong Yi a lawyer himself, too? The group of people looked at him at once. So, what if he's a lawyer? We can still sue him. This bastard is such a hooligan. But as they talked about it, everyone's confidence grew weaker. Finally, no one mentioned fighting a lawsuit with Zhong Yi anymore. Why? Because even Central TV had fucking lost a lawsuit against Zhong Yi. Even if they felt that they were superior to other people, they definitely did not think that they were more capable than Central TV's professional team of lawyers. The results of that fellow's national judicial examination had shocked the law world, by securing the first ever perfect score in the history of the examination. Tang Da Zhang banged his hand on the table angrily. How absurd. Is there no way we can deal with him? After everyone brooded over it, they suddenly felt very frustrated. They really could not think of any way to subdue Zhong Yi. There were no ideas whatsoever. That young disciple of Tang Da Zhang, the same 18-year-old who had just newly debuted as a crawstalk comedian, was feeling extremely anguished. He really wanted to give a suggestion at this moment. Can we not fight Zhong Yi anymore? Even Central TV was not able to do anything to him and the SARFT was also unable to subdue him. 
for such a hooligan and shit stirrer of the entertainment industry, why can't we just avoid him some and let everything be fine? Must we really fight it out with him? If we can't afford to mess with him, then we can just avoid him, right? The crucial point was that even if the entire crawlstalk world were to band together, they would still be unable to do anything about him. So what was the point of fighting? There's no way we can fight him. Very quickly, the news had spread everywhere. Zhong Yi invited to Beijing TV's Spring Festival Gala. Zhong Yi and Yao Jensai's crawlstalk causes a controversy again. Zhong Yi's new routine for the Spring Festival Gala, I want to get on the Spring Festival Gala? A complete denouncement by the crawlstalk world. Zhong Yi mocks Central TV's Spring Festival Gala and the Chinese crawlstalk world. Absolute comedy. Crawlstalk at Beijing TV's Spring Festival Gala dress rehearsal leaked. Zhong Yi's crawlstalk style shows up again. A massacre caused by a crawlstalk. Zhong Yi and Yao Jinsai declare war on the crawlstalk world again. The tabloids were collectively expressing and reporting about this massacre. The reports were also quite similar in content. Zhong Yi has once again proven with his actions that no one has ever been a match for him when it comes to scolding. Chapter 859, Voting for the Most Popular Celebrity Later that afternoon, the rehearsal ended successfully. The Spring Festival Gala's production team held a meeting and began to analyze some of the issues that cropped up in the rehearsal. Chang Xiaoyong also went to look for Zhong Yi and Yao Jinsai immediately. Yao Jinsai asked with concern, Director Chang, is everything going to be all right since our crawlstalk earlier was posted online by someone? The station head said it would be fine. Chang Xiaoyong smiled. Yao Jinsai laughed and said, then that's great. Little Zhong and I were afraid we would cause trouble for the TV station because of this problem. If we knew that someone would record our performance, then we wouldn't have said all that. Chang Xiaoyong asked, are you two prepared for the actual performance yet? Zhong Yi said, I'll have to go back and think over it, but I guarantee there won't be any problems. I hope the subject won't be as sensitive as today's performance. Chang Xiaoyong coughed and said, of course, the both of you are professionals, so I think you will know what to do without me telling you. Zhong Yi reassured him, don't worry, we definitely won't speak irresponsibly. Chang Xiaoyong nodded. All right then, I'll be looking forward to your actual routine. When the performance is ready, you can contact me so that our production team can go through it once. When Zhong Yi left the television station, there were already reporters blocking the entrance. Originally, there were quite a number of reporters interviewing some of the celebrities and performing groups who had just exited the venue, but when they saw Zhong Yi and Yao Jinsai, every one of them abandoned their current interviews and piled toward the two. Zhong Yi has come out. It's Yao Jinsai and Zhong Yi. Teacher Zhong, I'm from Huabei Entertainment Magazine. Teacher Zhong, can I ask a few questions? What's the actual routine that you will be performing at the Spring Festival Gala? What was the reason for your attack on the crawlstalk world again? Is your performance titled, I want to get on the Spring Festival Gala? Are you mocking Central TV's Spring Festival Gala because they did not invite you? This year's most popular celebrity poll organized by the official Weibo site is starting soon, how do you think you will be ranked? Teacher Zhong, please don't go. Teacher Yao. The reporters were hounding them like crazy. Zhong Yi dodged the questions. No comment, no comment for now. Yao Jinsai squeezed past the crowd as he said, we have an agreement and a lot details can't be revealed yet. If you want to know what the actual routine is, you can just tune into Beijing TV when the time comes. We definitely won't disappoint anyone. After a great struggle, the two of them finally got into a car. Yao Jinsai panted, where did you park? Zhong Yi sighed. I drank too much yesterday, so I didn't dare drive here this morning. After starting the car, Yao Jinsai laughed loudly. Since it's still early, let's go over to my house. It's been a long time since we've had a drink together. Shall we have a round then? Let's go. Zhong Yi gestured. At the Yao household. In a small bedroom. Yao Mi had invited some of her old high school classmates to her house for lunch. At this moment, the several of them were crying out in excitement as though they were injected with adrenaline. Zhong Yi is so cool. 
Mimi, your dad is awesome too. That crawlstalk was so funny. Let's listen to it again. But we've listened to it three times. Yao M I checked through the news online and let out a curse. Damn, my dad and Uncle Jong have really caused an outrage this time. There are so many industry peers criticizing them that it looks like it's getting out of hand. Little Ling interrupted, you make it sound like your dad and Zhong Yi have never caused an outrage before. Little Yu laughed and said, yeah, as long as it's a cross talk performed by Zhong Yi and your dad, when have they not angered the masses? There were people denouncing, scolding, and reporting it. Little Ching yelled, I like Zhong Yi a ton. Little Ling blinked. Mimi, are we friends? Nonsense, what do you think? Yao Mi laughed as she rolled her eyes. Little Ling immediately said, if we are friends, then you should arrange for us to meet Zhong Yi someday. Right, right. Ha ha, that's a good suggestion. Her old classmates all appeared to be anticipating it. Yao Mi equivocated, it's difficult for me to meet Uncle Zhong as he hasn't been coming to Peking University to teach lately. At this moment, they heard someone knocking on the door. Eh? Little Ling's ears perked up. My dad is back. Yao Mi stood up. The house door opened. Yao Jintsai's wife had opened the door. You're back? Eh? Zhong Yi who was standing beside old Yao smiled and said, Sister, I'm here to visit you. Yao Jintsai's wife beamed at once. Come in, come in. Heh, this old Yao sure doesn't know how to betreat his guests. He should have informed me that you were coming over so that I could have made dinner. Zhong Yi smiled and said, Sister, it's fine as long as there's alcohol. Yao Jintsai asked, where is Mimi? She is chatting with her old classmates in the bedroom, Yao Jintsai's wife replied. From there, the bedroom door of Yao Jintsai's daughter was suddenly opened by someone from inside. Then, a loud scream sounded. Followed by a second and third scream. Ah. Ah. Zhong Yi. It's him in person. Yao Mi's old classmates were so excited that their faces were flushed. Zhong Yi got scared from those ridiculously high decibel screams, thinking that someone's foot had been stepped on. Yao Mi felt a bit embarrassed and smiled sheepishly. Uncle Zhong. Zhong Yi smiled and said, Hi. Who are these friends of yours? Without waiting for Yao Mi to reply, Little Ling was the first to step forward. Teacher Zhong, we are Mimi's old high school classmates. Oh, Teacher Zhong. You're my idol. Little Ching also came over quickly. We've just listened to your and Uncle Yao's crawlstalk. It's really fantastic. Little Yu said loudly, Teacher Zhong, you're really awesome. Can you teach me how to scold and curse people? Little Ling said right away, I want to learn too. Teach me. Yao Jintsai was amused. Zhong Yi didn't whether to laugh or cry as he had mixed feelings about this request. Consider the requests other superstars would get when their fans saw them. There would be requests for hugs, taking pictures together, asking to be in a relationship, and so on. But when fans saw this bro, their request was to learn how to scold and curse people. What the hell? Yao Mi nearly fainted. Can you guys learn something proper instead? Little Yu giggled. What do you mean by calling it improper? Scolding and cursing is also a type of talent and ability. If the English and Japanese languages can be categorized into grades, then teacher Zhong will definitely be ranked at the highest grade of 10 if scolding and cursing also has a grading. Little Ling directly bestowed a title on Zhong Yi by saying, that's true. Teacher Zhong Yi is definitely the top reviler of China. He will scold whomever comes at him, whether it's one person or an entire group. Zhong Yi asked exasperated, just why would you guys have such a terrible impression of me? Yao Jintsai remarked, did you think otherwise? Everyone in the house laughed. At night, dinner was ready. Yao Mi's old classmates had originally come over for lunch at noon and were supposed to go home after that, but when they saw that Zhong Yi had come to visit, they decided to stay. Even though Yao Mi kept pressing them to leave for the longest time, her old classmates simply feigned ignorance and clowned about in a bid to stay. In the end, against this shamelessness of theirs, Yao Mi could do nothing. Yao Jintsai's wife served the dishes. 
Try some of these, try them. Zhong Yi quickly said, Sister, it's been hard on you. What are you standing on ceremony for? It's been some time since you have come over. Yao Jiantsai's wife smiled at him. Zhong Yi said, Hi, old Yao is always doing movie shoots outside of Beijing and there's only a few days when he's back at Beijing. Our timing always clashes, otherwise I would have come over sooner. Yao Jiantsai smirked. How can I be busier than you? Zhong Yi said, What can I be busy with? I've just been idle every day. You haven't been busy with the serious matters, Yao Jiantsai said, but you have been busy with scolding people every day. Didn't you just finish fighting with Central TV Department one a while ago? Yao Mi suddenly recalled something. She slapped her thigh and exclaimed, Oh right. This year's most popular celebrity poll on Weibo is starting soon. Yao Jiantsai wondered, Why is it so early this year? Yao Mi said, It has happened around the Spring Festival every year. Zhong Yi also knew about this poll. It was a rankings list that was organized by the official Weibo platform. In the many years of holding it, this rankings list had become a traditional affair for all Weibo users to satisfy their self-entertainment needs. During last year's poll, Zhong Yi also got onto the Weibo's most popular celebrity rankings, but his result was just average and he had barely broken into the top 100 of the poll. However, there was another poll for the most unpopular celebrity rankings in which Zhong Yi dominated the list. He scored an overwhelming victory with an unbelievable amount of votes and won the most unpopular celebrity award. At that time, this news had even caused quite a stir. This year's poll was going to begin again? Little Ling said immediately, Uncle Yao, will you be pulling for votes? Count me out. Yao Jiantsai smiled and said, this poll was meant for the celebrity idols. I'm just a middle-aged old man and can't possibly beat the others. Little Ling asked, how about you, teacher Zhong? Zhong Yi dismissed, I'd rather drink. Come, let's toast again. Yao Jiantsai clinked glasses with him. Little Ling laughed and said, I'll just give my votes to the two of you first. Little Yu said excitedly, I'll go and have a look too. It looks like it has already started? Little Ching replied, Yes, it started at 6 pm today and ends tomorrow at 6 pm too. Online. The annual polls on Weibo had been placed on the website's homepage for some time and had already been promoted for many days. At exactly 6 pm, the voting window officially opened. The Weibo users swarmed in. It has begun. I'm here. Holy shit. Wu Dongfang already has 1,000 votes. So awesome? Sect leader Hua has been canvassing for votes since long ago. Haha, ha, I will still vote for my big chi. Supporting Sister Zhong without hesitation. It's not necessary for Sister Zhong to compete in this, so I will give my vote to sect leader Hua. Rise to the dance was so terribly beaten by a bite of China and the viewership ratings has already dropped below 0.6%. A while ago, a Domestic Best Actor award was also won by someone else with sect leader Hua missing out. I should give him a vote because I think he's been really unlucky lately. The competition for the most popular celebrity rankings poll was too intense. One moment, Zhong Yuanqi was in the first place, then the next moment, Wu Dongfang's votes would increase explosively, then another moment later, two heavenly kings were occupying the top two positions, and yet another moment later. A famous Korean drama star who had come to mainland China to develop his career was dominating everyone else. With the rankings going up and down, the vote count was very close with no way to determine who was winning at the moment. Yao Jiantsai did not get into the top 100, while Dong Shanshan was currently ranked at 97th place. She had strong momentum in the poll, but was unsure if she could maintain her position. How nail-bitingly close! The fans are amazing! Quickly vote for the heavenly king. He's going to get overtaken. Who dares to fight with my opera for the top spot? Damn you, we will definitely fight for it. Give all our votes to Sister Jong. Bring it on, who's afraid of who? Fuck. Ha ha, Sister Jong has 500,000 votes now. Awesome. Ah, the Korean has 510,000 votes. Did they manipulate the votes? How could it increase by 10,000 votes in the blink of an eye? That fast? Even the heavenly king and queen have been overtaken by him. 
he's at 520,000 votes already. The fans were also starting to fight and neither could get the upper hand. However, when they clicked on the most unpopular celebrity rankings poll, many netizens were stunned by what they saw. Then everyone burst out laughing. Ha 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 ha. What the hell? Foot, I already knew that would happen. As expected, there's no suspense in this poll at all. This guy's reputation is too terrible. John Yee's name appeared impressively at the top of the most unpopular celebrity rankings. With a current vote count of 2.75 million votes. As for second place? Second place only had 21,000 votes. John Yee's votes were over a hundred times more than the second place votes. And it was also five times more votes than that Korean celebrity who was currently at the top of the most popular celebrity rankings had. There was no suspense to the outcome at all. It was a completely overwhelming lead. When all the netizens saw the poll rankings, they were left kneeling to Jong Yi. Chapter 860 Winning Again. At Old Yao's house. When Yao Mi and her classmates saw that on Weibo, they couldn't help but clutch their stomachs and laugh non stop at it. Pfft. Ha 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 ha. I knew it. I just knew it. Yao Jintsai's wife asked curiously, What are you all laughing at? Yao Jintsai put down his glass and looked over. What's the matter? Dad, Mom, guess what our Uncle Jong's ranking is? Yao Mi giggled. Yao Jintsai's wife laughed and said, For which poll? Yao Mi said, For the most unpopular celebrity rankings poll, of course. Yao Jintsai's wife glanced at Zhong Yi and replied with a laugh, He must be in the first place, am I right? Zhong Yi. Yao Mi slapped her thigh and laughed loudly. Mom, you are so smart. Yao Jintsai couldn't help but laugh. How is your mom smart? For the most unpopular person in the domestic entertainment industry, who else could it be if it's not Zhong Yi? Who else can be compared to him? Little Yu said, moreover, the vote numbers don't just differ by a small margin, he has steamrolled his way to the top spot. 2.75 million, no, it's already at 2. 9 million votes. And it's still increasing. Zhong Yi was speechless. Then he seethed, is there any meaning to this lousy poll? There's totally no purpose to it. Yao Jintsai disagreed, ha ha, how is there no purpose? This is the voice of the people. I for one think that this annual rankings poll organized by Weibo is a very authoritative one. Suddenly, little Ling shouted, wow, Uncle Yao, your vote count is also increasing in the most unpopular celebrity rankings poll. It's even increasing so rapidly that you, you are already at third place. Yao Jintsai was stunned and immediately let out a curse. What lousy poll is this? There's totally no purpose to it. Yao Jintsai's wife quipped, Old Yao, that's not what you claimed just now. Yao Jintsai said depressed, I was only dragged into this mess because of little Zhong today. Everyone was amused. Actually, Yao Jintsai should not have appeared on this rankings poll. Be it the most popular rankings or the most unpopular rankings, it all depended on the number of followers and the popularity of the celebrity's Weibo account. Yao Jintsai's popularity on Weibo was just average and in normal circumstances, this would be none of his business. However, when that performance of I Want to Get on the Spring Festival Gala was leaked by someone in the morning, Zhong Yi and Yao Jintsai were suddenly pushed to the heart of many discussions. They were criticized by many people as well as the mainstream Crawlstalk world members. With that, Yao Jintsai's also appeared on this dishonorable rankings poll. Online. As the competition for the polls got more intense, a lot of celebrities also posted onto Weibo. Dong Shanshan, pulling for votes, pulling for votes, friends who are online, please give me your votes. Let's see if I am able to enter the top 100 of Weibo's annual most popular celebrity rankings. As for the most unpopular rankings poll, you may ignore it for my case. That's teacher Zhong Yi's territory, so I won't be fighting with him for it, ha ha. Dong Shanshan's fans were also delighted to see that post. Teacher Shanshan, is it alright for you to say that? Ha ha, you have conveniently made fun of your old classmate at the same time. This is what classmates' friendship is about. I'm cramping up from laughing. 
the leader of China's most famous idol trio, Dongzi, pulling for votes in the most popular celebrity poll. Everyone, please vote for me, as well as for teacher Zhong Yi. I asked for a favor from teacher Zhong in the past, and to repay him, I hope that everyone can give your votes to teacher Zhong, so don't waste your most unpopular celebrity polling votes. Dongzi's fans were also very active. Ha ha ha, Dong Dong is so bad. Dong Dong also came to add insult to injury. LOL. A, I just realized for the first time that teacher Dong Dong knows Zhong Yi as well. Teacher Zhong Yi has helped teacher Dong Dong before? So it turns out that Zhong Yi is loyal to his friends. I must definitely vote for him then. Man, I always thought that Zhong Yi did not have any friends in the entertainment industry, but he actually knows teacher Dong Dong. Dongzi was one of the members in the celebrity goof group chat that Zhong Yi had joined. Her relative wanted to apply to enter Peking University this year and she had asked Zhong Yi for a favor, which was how they got to know each other. Chen Guang, man, is Zhong Yi going to be first again this year? Amazing! Chen Guang's wife, Fan Wenli, the annual most unpopular celebrity rankings poll on Weibo has already been reserved for teacher Little Zhong. From now onward, I don't think there will be anyone else who can get first place in this rankings poll. Congratulations! Congratulations! Zhong Yi's celebrity friends from everywhere also joined in the fun. When the netizens saw Zhong Yi's friends behaving so comically, they also laughed madly at it. Just look at Zhong Yi's relationships. Foot, even his friends are making fun of him. Ha ha ha. He has gotten first place again. Teacher Zhong, just how terrible can your reputation get? Teacher Fan Wenli is right. This rankings poll will be occupied by teacher Zhong Yi for a long time to come. And if there are no surprises this year, Zhong Yi should be the first person in Weibo history to retain the crown of the annual Most Unpopular Celebrity Award. Teacher Zhong has broken yet another record. This is so fun. I'll also go and vote for Zhong Yi. Ha ha, count me in. I'd like to see how many votes teacher Zhong can get in total. Foot, it's already 3 million votes. How awesome. This is too amazing. The universe can no longer hold Zhong Yi back. Everyone, let's vote together. So be it if it's the most unpopular award. Our teacher Zhong has always walked off the beaten path anyway. If he wants to be a celebrity, then he'll be the most unique celebrity in the entertainment industry. Even if he were to walk the antagonist's path, he would be the most brilliant of antagonists. Who gives a fuck who your mother is? Well said. Ha ha, let's start voting. It wouldn't affect me to just watch the commotion, I'm joining in too. Many of those who disliked Zhong Yi nearly vomited blood when they saw this. Most of the people who voted for Zhong Yi really disliked him and had really wanted to criticize him. But with the antics of these celebrities and Zhong Yi's fans, the entire atmosphere of the situation had somehow changed. It was obviously for the most unpopular poll, but Zhong Yi's fans made it seem like it was a very honorable achievement instead. Everyone was proud of it, instead of being ashamed. No wonder. How the fans turned out depended on which celebrity they followed. These bunch of fans were the same as that Zhong guy. They just wanted to see the world burn. The votes reached 3.5 million. The votes reached 4 million. The votes reached 5 million. Towards the end, the vote count was getting totally lopsided. At midnight, the latest official celebrity rankings index was updated too. The latest rankings showed that there were no changes on the S and A list rankings, but there was a fluctuation on the B list rankings. Zhong Yi had moved up another spot in the B list rankings again. He was already fourth place on the B list rankings. All the accumulated popularity was from the recent episodes of A Bite of China and the leaked crosstalk performance from today. I want to get on the Spring Festival Gala. Furthermore, the annual celebrity polls on Weibo helped him gain all sorts of popularity. With the recent large increase in his popularity, coupled with today's jump, he had advanced a spot again and was getting closer and closer to the A list celebrity rankings. The fans cheered. Quickly go and take a look. Teacher Zhong is so impressive. Damn, he's about to enter the top three of the B-list rankings. Awesome. Zhong Yi's popularity has risen again. When a bite of China has finished broadcasting, he really won't be far off from the A-list rankings anymore. 
The people of Beijing send their congratulations. The people of Guangxi send their congratulations. Who would have thought this would happen? The popularity that Zhang Yi gained was basically earned from all his scolding. Can support us completed novel house in link below clip. Thank you for coming and love the sharing story.